the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. We have a sports show that is going to be above average, I do believe. That's going to begin right now. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Uh, we have to lead off the show, obviously, uh, to commemorate a man who passed away, who had given his life, a lot of his life, to football. Uh, never liked doing this. Hope to never have to do this again. Mm-hmm. But it seems like that's probably... Not going to be how this whole thing goes. Rest in peace to head coach Marty Schottenheimer. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to the sport of football. There are electric stories coming out about Marty Schottenheimer right now from everybody, from people that covered the teams that he coached as local writers, to people that maybe played for him, to people that, I mean, it is, there's a lot of stories coming out about this man. Rest in peace, Marty. Um, I never met the man, but I did meet his son. Son, super cool dude, who is now part of a larger story that's potentially popping off in Seattle, which we'll dive into. But rest in peace, Coach. Job well done. Job well done. Thank you, Coach. Job well done, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. It does feel like we're going to have to do that more often. Yeah, unfortunately. Hope, hope not. Hope to never have to do that again. I agree. Amen. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Truly. It's a good way of thinking about it. What if nobody ever died again? That'd be wild. The planet would be filled to the Overpopulation. Rim. Yeah. <laughs> it would be bad news for the climate. Sometimes uh, be cheaper. You're talking about carbon footprints, That's potentially. A, There's not exactly. enough food. Exactly. So we're probably going to have to do it again, then, just so yeah. the sake of everybody else. Or find another survive. planet. It's that or the trees. Well, allegedly, starships are coming out, so maybe we do go to Mars. But anyways, rest in peace. Coach Marty Schottenheimer, um, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's move forward here in the sports world. A lot of storylines to be covering here, okay? Carson Wentz, the Philadelphia Eagles are allegedly asking for too much, okay? They want too high of an offer. They've actually come out today and said that nobody's made them a fair offer for Carson Wentz to move him out of Philadelphia and then move forward with Jalen Hurts, which is interesting because I thought Doug Peterson wanted to go forward with Jalen Hurts the team want to go forward with Carson Wentz. Well, then why did they draft Jalen Hurts? Why did Doug Peterson and them go separate ways if they're trying to move Carson, which it is alleged that they are, and they want to move forward with Jalen? Then they hire a quarterback coach who's known Jalen since he was like a teenager. The Philadelphia Eagles are fucking upside down. Everybody <laughs> knows it. They're just years removed from winning a Super Bowl. But it's very interesting following this Carson Wentz in, uh, situation because what we know now as people who – professionally follow the sport day to day. Mm -hmm. We're talking nose to the grindstone, no stone unturned, eyes peeled for every rumor that is happening in the world because we have to fill at least three hours a day to talk about sports. I think that is that is something that made us much more aware about the world that is the sports world. I think it is, I don't want to say we were a little bit naive early, but I think maybe we were naive. And now that we've got a little bit of, uh, you know, some miles, mileage on the road mm-hmm. here, it, all the reports that you hear about any contract negotiation, uh, 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 negotiations, any trades, any potential moves, any unhappiness, somebody's upset, you automatically have to immediately think first, okay, who's releasing that information? Why are they releasing that information? Is this complete bullshit? What narrative does this push? And if you look back through this whole entire Carson Wentz thing, four or five days ago, that That trade was getting wrapped up within the day because Mm -hmm. the Colts and the Bears were making such massive offers. Then you start to read that and you're like, okay, who would want that information out? Well, the Eagles would want that information out. Then a couple days after that, a deal is imminent per sources. The Carson Wentz trade from the Eagles will be happening within days. It's like, okay, who's putting that information out? And then now it's like, well, nobody's offering us a fair thing. It's like, oh, so this has been the Eagles releasing this information all along and not none of it has been fucking accurate. I'm not 100% sure if the Colts 
Colts or the Bears were interested in Carson Wentz. Let's assume that they were. We don't have insiders that would tell us that or I would ask to hear that information. But I think all the bullshit that we heard about the Eagles potentially viewing Matthew Stafford as Carson Wentz in this particular trade, multiple first rounders, somebody's going to do it within the next days. That was all bullshit for the Philadelphia Eagles to potentially create a little bit of leverage for themselves whenever they're shopping him somewhere else. So it's a shame that we're going to have to go into this offseason knowing that damn near every leak is bullshit, yeah. but we have to know why and who's doing it. Carson Wentz might potentially move. We have no idea. Will he be an Indianapolis Colt? Ooh. Maybe. Uh -oh. Maybe. Here we go. Maybe. Will he be a Chicago Bear? Nope. Maybe. Maybe. Will he be a New England Patriot? Maybe. Maybe. Will he be a Houston Texan? Probably not. They're saying they're not moving to Sean Watson. <laughs> yeah. Now, they did fire an equipment manager that was tight with Deshaun Watson down there after firing a PR person that was tight with Deshaun Watson down there. And, you know, not really trying to make amends, it seems like, publicly. Maybe privately they are with their star quarterback just months after signing a $136 million contract once out of there. The Texans are saying he's not moving at all. So Carson Wentz and the Eagles are saying, oh, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, and he's not moving. And the Texans are saying he's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. He's probably going to end up moving. We got to know that we are going to ride a wave of bullshit. And I would like to know, I would like the, the promise of the people that in two weeks, three weeks from now, when we are in a much different time, I do not want to see all the tweets underneath our videos say this aged poorly. It's like, no shit. We are currently knuckle deep in a bullshit sea trying yeah. to kind of swim through it. Dak Prescott, is he going to get franchise tagged or is he going to get moved? Is he going to move on from Dallas? Russell Wilson, he wants out of Seattle. He hates his offensive line. <laughs> Whoa. That's interesting. Russell Wilson's camp allegedly leaked this morning that he is not happy with the way Seattle has protected mm. him over his nine-year career. He has the most sacks out of any quarterback in nine years or something like that, which was a stat that I did not – you know, no was true. I guess we do see Russ running for his life on a regular basis, but they're also passing the ball a lot, which leads to what Pete Carroll said after he fired Shoddy as the offensive coordinator after this past season. Uh, Brian, Brian, uh, Pete Carroll said that Brian Schottenheimer, his offense basically was philosophically different than what Pete Carroll wanted to run. Shoddy's offense was, we let Russ cook. We want Russell Wilson to be Russell Wilson. Pete Carroll said, we have philosophical differences with that. Russell Wilson's team hears that and goes, we have philosophical differences with the way you fucking block for our guy. <laughs> so now there's a buttoning potential operation happening there. Is Russell Wilson going to get traded out of Seattle after the Seattle Seahawks Basically said to their Super Bowl winning team, get the fuck out. We're going in on Russell Wilson and this team. Now is Russell Wilson getting traded out of Seattle to where? Miami, maybe? Ooh. He goes down to Miami, who allegedly was intrigued by Russell Wilson years ago. Is he no longer going to be there? Is Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson doing a straight up trade? There is a lot of shit to be talked about. And let's not leave out the fact that Brett Favre is curing CTE. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Whoa. Thank, you, Brad. Thank, you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. We got a big Tuesday going on. A lot of bullshit, a lot of rumors. Brett Favre's current CTE. I mean, let's have a day. We got some great guests for you. Ronald Jones will be joining us in about 15 minutes with Michelob oh, Baltra. Michelob Baltra is asking a question. Are you happy because you win? Or do you win because you're happy? Hmm. Huh. That's a great question. We'll ask Ronald Jones that question. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to hear what he says. Because he just won. The big one mm -hmm. with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that are prime for another run next year. Players are already saying we'll take pay cuts. We'll take pay cuts. We'll take pay cuts. But we got to remember that championship hangover is real. Remember, Chris Jones said, hey, I'll do whatever I can to come back uh, to the Kansas City Chiefs. Then about a month later, he was going to hold out. <laughs> yep. And then they, they paid him because he was very important. So not everybody's words immediately following a world championship can be taken, uh, you know, at 100 percent because it's not necessary necessarily how they're going to feel whenever the business negotiations do begin a couple weeks down the road or maybe a month down the road. But man, this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team seems to have everything ready to go ahead and build and run that thing back. Tom Brady doesn't seem to be stopping at all. And he, uh, he crafted the best Instagram story I've ever seen last night. Yeah. Tom Brady, 43 years old. Brad talks about that in sports. What he does on social is maybe... 
I'm not saying it's better than what he did. Seven Super Bowls is going to be tough, but what he does on social media is awesome. Now, do I think it's Tom Brady posting everything? I don't think we're, any of us think that, okay? I, I assume there's potentially – so. but the fact that Tom's like, yeah, this is cool. This is what we want to be a part of. This is how I want the Tom Brady Instagram account to go, or maybe he is even posting it himself. His Instagram story makes it sound like he does keep receipts, he is petty, and he is 100% coming back with the team that he loves down there in Tampa – I just found out Bill Belichick has eight Super Bowl rings. He won six as a coach, obviously, uh, for the Patriots, and then he won two as defensive coordinator for the Giants or whatever. I would assume Tom Brady knows that as well. Is he going to play for another four or five years? What is going to happen down there in Tampa? Oh, that and more we'll talk about Ronald Jones with. Also, DeForest Buckner will be joining us, two-time All-Pro for the Indianapolis Colts. The last time he joined us, he gave us a call. In front of an empty bookshelf. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, you remember huge that? bookshelf. And he said, like, nice like movie set like bookshelf mm -hmm. spiral Library. staircase i believe was behind him oh, yeah. he called us he said i'll have books for the next time hmm. ah, we'll see all that <laughs> yeah. he was on good morning football this morning i don't know what they talked about i did see some clips though he talked about darius leonard and the colts and the team and everything like that he got he was a traded for a first round 27 overall pick by chris ballard last year chris ballard will make moves DeForest Buckner is a great image of that because he came in and dominated for the Colts this year, was one of the missing pieces to take them that next step. I'll be excited to hear what he thinks about the quarterback situation that's re revolving around his team that he is on. Mm. He's one of the staples of that Colts team now. If the Colts are going to be good, DeForest Buckner is going to have to be good. I'm excited to see how that plays out. Also, Mark Schlereth will join us in the third hour alongside A.J. Hawk. 1-888-MAD-DOG-6. <laughs> Shout out to the Chargers for this hoodie. Very mm. nice of them. Nice hoodie. Nice it hoodie. is very nice. I mean, it is a very nice hoodie. It's it's nice. They sent it here. They also have their GM, head coach, and their quarterback on this show. I appreciate the hell out of that. Mm -hmm. Good people. They're taking Tom Telesco, the reason why I got into the NFL, wore the for the brand shirt on Hard Knocks. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I love the Chargers. Oh, yeah. And it turns out the color, very good for... Uh, very good for my skin complexion. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Makes it pop. Normally, nice. don't wear lighter shades. Because my face always red. Irish, used mm -hmm. to drink a lot, smoke a lot. Face is going to be red. That's just how it is. The Chargers color, I've learned here quickly, not too shabby. Actually actually goes well with the red. Pretty good. Yeah. Maybe they should draft more red players over there. <laughs> okay. Get the Irish over there for the Chargers. It looks pretty good. So I'm very thankful for this. And for anybody else around the, uh, the NFL or any other leagues, we do accept free merch here. If you oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. This came oh, yeah. in, what, yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it is very cold. It's very cold. It is uh, like 12 degrees outside yesterday with a blizzard here uh -huh. in Indiana. It seems like the hard times have hit us. The COVID yeah. cowboy has survived COVID. He is now a cowboy. Uh, what are your thoughts going into this first week of the offseason here, Diggs? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that Russell Wilson's going to be a Colt. If he wants to be protected for a team that needs a quarterback, the Colts have the offensive line to do it. And, you know, his – his mindset about the world, I believe, matches Frank Reich. So, huh. pretty spot-on match there. It's funny you say that because Ty had some ideas on where <laughs> Russell Wilson should go too, don't, don't you? Yeah, I mean, if he actually is a God-fearing man like he says he is, then why is he not pounding on the, the door in Seattle and say, hey, get me down to Houston? I need to be with Easterby. I love everything the guy's saying. I love his message. That's a guy I want to go win and play for. Huh. The <laughs> fact that the Houston Texans did put – Jesus' spokesman himself, Jack Easterby, yep. at the top of the organization. It makes you wonder if more FCA players will be heading down south yeah. for the Christian camp they got going on in Houston. Maybe that'll end up being a, a benefit for their team as opposed to a negative like we're all thinking. I guess if they get Russell Wilson because of it, I think Cal McNair would be rather pumped about the whole situation. And also, I played ping pong. Uh, in the game 11 last night in the Oculus against a guy named Nathan in Houston. Mm -hmm. okay. Nathan, fan of the show, obviously. He wasn't great at ping pong yet. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so happen. he's stuck. First day in the game, he said. Uh, okay. uh, maybe oh, second day on excuses. Yeah. He wasn't bad. He, he, I mean, he, he was bad. Good, but... but I'm saying, like, he'll be able to get it. But it was the first day. He was, It did seem like first, second day he was on there. Okay. You know, and I took it easier or whatever, and I, I unmuted and I started talking to him. He said a lot of people down in Houston, like, yeah, just get, get rid of them already. Ooh. Like, they've, like, moved on. I, I think they like – I think they like – I'm not saying everybody in Houston 
depicts the same exact mm-hmm. view that Nathan from the game 11 in uh, Houston has. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that. But I, you could see how a lot of Houston Texans fans are potentially like, All right, we're kind of done with being the national embarrassment here. If there's any way we can move on, that'd be fantastic. If Deshaun Watson ends up with another team in the AFC, though, and goes on to have success, I'll be excited to see how they feel then. Like, what if he ends up as a New England Patriot? Like, Ooh, what that's, do you, that's not a terrible idea. What, 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 what does the rest, of the, the rest of the NFL looks at Houston? Because you guys fuck this up. <laughs> so, you, you, how'd you do this? You brought Jack East to be in, and this whole thing went to hell. Now we got to deal with Bill with a guy in his prime prime. Uh, we'll see how that whole thing goes. But you would love that, obviously. I would love Deshaun Watson, but it's very hard to imagine Bill, you know, mortgaging half the team, bunch of picks for one player, especially a guy that you got to pay. Who's what? He's at the top of the cap. I assume he's probably, what, $30 um, million a year at this point? Yeah, but it's not – for him, though, it's not that bad. I mean – yeah, Deshaun, I guess, whenever you start looking at the stats and the highlights and everything like that, as opposed to just a win-loss record over the last couple of years, I mean, he's – I mean, he had like 70% completion or something oh, yeah, like yeah. that while throwing for a lot of yards. Mm-hmm. He is a very efficient dude, and I think there is some negati- negativity sur- uh, surrounding him because of the drama, potentially. Mm. You know, like there's like oh, people like, oh, this is drama, this is drama, this is drama, but – I mean, it makes sense if you're one of the greatest of all time, like people are saying Deshaun Watson is, and his stats say the same thing, and you got to deal with this, what, amateur-like operation that's going on down there with a guy who was a chaplain at one team is now making personnel decisions. I mean, it's just, you could see how a guy would be like, get me the fuck out of here, but you could also see how the fans would be like, all right, let's move on. Let's, let's just move on. We'll deal with the suck forever here with Jack Easterby and Cal, but we don't want everybody talking about how we mismanaged this entire thing. Well, no, and Bill, too, he, as much Deshaun Watson is the guy in Houston, He's probably got his eyes on J.J. Watt before he does Watson. Bring J.J. up, you know, build the culture around one of the Watt brothers. Destined if, for the Super Bowl. What if J.J. comes out and says anywhere but New England, and then Teddy Bruschi goes, not tough enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then that photo of J.J. with a broken nose, like, mm-hmm. playing surfaces and that whole thing. I'll be – the J.J. Watt thing's interesting because if they cut him at $17 million, and J.J. said, I'm not about a rebuild or whatever. And yeah. J.J. has given his, what, entire life to Houston, basically, at this point. But if you're Casario or the new coach, Dave, first move is <laughs> Coach Dave. That's his name. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's Dave. It yeah, was by Coach Dave. Coach Dave. Yep. D, uh, some call. Oh, coach C.D. <laughs> coach Dave. But you go in there, you got to trade Deshaun and then cut J.J. Watt. I mean, that is a fucking tough go at it as GM and head coach. And I don't know how long Coach Dave's been at it. Is this his first NFL head coaching gig? I assume. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is Casario's first NFL GM gig? I assume. They get dropped into a job. What do you guys got to do? Oh, we got to trade away our guy and cut the other fucking guy. Oh, that's fun. This is a dream job. Dream job. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how this whole thing goes. And we got to pray three times a day like with this fucking Easter guy. Well, if Russ is going down to Houston, you're going to have to cut JJ because there's not enough cameras in Texas to fill those two. Um, <laughs> Jesus, Tony. Tony. If he goes to Houston, oh. it's God's team. <laughs> They're testing for so, Vegas. So you Jeez. literally, hold on. <laughs> So you had nothing else to say but the punchline. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, he, I did, he I said forgot. that, it's, and then no. it seemed like you potentially had a follow-up I, there. But, I, I but really, all you were hoping for was just enough pop after that one line. <laughs> and by the way, got us. I completely pop. forgot what I was. Oh, I know what it was. Why is no one bringing up that Bill may have potentially sent Easterby down to Houston for this all to happen so that he can get to show. Yeah, Which, yeah. by the way, Matt Patricia goes to the Lions, buries yeah. them for four or five years or yeah. whatever. How you doing? We could take down one franchise. Same and Jack used to be down there. Hey, hey, go butter up Kyle McNair. Heard he likes his steak medium or something <laughs> like that. You know? yep. So while you're praying, go ahead and bring in a b- good piece of meat to Kyle McNair. You know? Maybe that is what he did, take them down. Order 66. And then the only thing that hasn't worked, by the way, is um, – I'm sorry, is it what you say? No, it's a Star Wars term, Order 66, when he sends all the, the people out there to take out all the Jedis. Okay, here we go. So okay. Okay. Star Wars That's what Phil Belichick is doing. By the way, great reference. I'm sorry I didn't get it. I don't know it, but I do know that a lot of people understand that. The only one that seems to have failed is what? B flow down yep. in Miami. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brian Flores probably. Yeah. He's in the division. But this is like whenever uh, Undercover goes in there and buys in too hard to the gang. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? And, and Bill's giving him a call. He's like, do you not remember what your job is? B flow's like, the weather's nice. I like the team. <laughs> Good football team. I, I, you know, I actually enjoy it. I, I think this is what I'm doing. 
damn it. Give me Matt Patricia back. <laughs> what if Bill was the one who was in B-Flow's ear like, hey, Tua's the guy for the next 20 oh, years. Man. If you guys don't draft Tua, you're missing out big time. And if we get magic, then we're just taking all of the Miami Dolphins what if, mojo. What if Bill calls B-Flow and goes, me and Easterby were talking. Two is the guy. <laughs> he takes the whole thing down there. Ernie gets involved. What if it is just one big mad scheme for a team that might stink for the next 20 years? The yeah. New England Patriots. Another step. He could have just said, hey, Saban told me this is the best quarterback I've ever seen at Alabama. You guys would be foolish to let him go. Could you imagine if Tua ends up in New England? Because Saban Jeez, talks hope. about Tua the way or whatever to Bill. Yeah. And let's say Tua doesn't pan out. You think Bill stops talking to Nick forever at that point? I, I'm, They're like very close friends, right? Oh, but yeah. you think mm-hmm. at that point he'd be like, oh, that guy's terrible fucking football. <laughs> I, I assume Bill probably tells Nick to hang it up if, if that he happens. Hey, it. Nick, you're done. Remember Coach K? Told <laughs> Coach K. <laughs> now he's done too. Hey, Coach K's done, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, that team stinks. It's a good run. Great run. Yeah. yeah. He's 80 years old, too, by Good the way. Good for Coach K. Yeah. Thank you, Coach K. Thank you. Thank Coach, you Coach. Coach K has looked 60 for whatever, 20 years now at this point. Yeah. He's looked the exact same somehow. He dyes his hair, obviously, but he never gets caught. You know, there's never like a bad dye job or yeah. roots. He's very persistent with it. He, he very high energy guy. Yeah. Has had a lot of success. But I think we all from outside the basketball world saw this coming when he had what the top five players in the world playing on his team and they lost. Mm -hmm. Did you lose your fastball coach K? If you have every good basketball player in a, in an entire basketball level and you lose, I think that's when the writing was on the wall. Now Duke's not even top 25. This is a shame. Yeah. All all he really has now is team USA. Uh, That's it. Doesn't even have that. Yeah, the toughest year to coach. You can't figure it out. Who would have thought? Whoa. Jeez. Huh. See, I would like to say that our Canadian negative Whoa. friend Gumpy's opinions do not reflect that of his employer or his peers at this point. Well, he's not wrong, though. I've just been betting against Duke all year, and it's turned out pretty well. Hey, good job. They stink, huh? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're brutal. Oh, yeah. they, they, they don't have that home league. court advantage anymore. That's a big deal. Yeah, they don't have this Cameron ball. crazy. Yeah. 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 A bunch of white yeah. sides. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do that! <laughs> that also was a sign. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. he had potentially lost. It. Losing the he fast buries part. that kid, or I mean, buries, but he yeah. pulled that other kid off. I would, I would like it year. to be known that I do not believe that that was anything. Mm. At I'm getting a call from Baron Corbin right now. Okay, here we go. Huh. The king. Yeah. Like growing some meats. Holy shit! Hey, I'm live on air right now. Okay, live right now. Literally live right now. Um, there's probably not many people listening to you, though. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only thing I wanted to tell you is uh, your Chiefs are fucking dead. Might never make it back to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Have you, lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? We just need our left tackle back, our center back, and we're fine. Why don't you go back and do that, football, Tom? Why don't you go back and play tackle for the Chiefs? Because I'm down 70 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yes. nice, hey, you dude. do look good, by the way. We do yeah, all believe dude. you look good. <laughs> One day you'll get some muscles just like me. I'll talk to you later, dude. All right. <laughs> He's fucking riding his mountain bike around town. Have you seen this guy? No. Uh, so for those that don't know, Baron Corbin is now King Corbin on Friday Night SmackDown. He's a big time WWE superstar. I remember, I remember football, Tom. Ooh. I remember football, Baron Corbin. Tom. We were hitting the clubs together here in Indianapolis whenever, you know, Tom was a legend just talking about becoming a wrestler. What a great dude. Complete asshole on television, though. And he is awesome on there. I'm a big fan of it. That's why he's the king. You guys were ripping it up down at Tiki Bob's when Tom was in the league. You guys were at boobs? <laughs> and, by the way, and by the way, he... <laughs> He was he's a great asshole in real life too. You know what I mean? So I guess, uh, which is by the way, I think why I'm a I'm a big fan. It does seem like the most negative people are attracted to me somehow in my life. You know what I mean? How so? Well, I think it's because I am the complete opposite of that. And uh, you know, it's kind of like a good yin yan situation. Yeah, sure. But I'll tell you what, that is a guy who was built to be an asshole on television, Baron Corbin. Perfect at it. Does not give a single fuck if anybody hates him or not. It, it is absolutely perfect. And he, he collects skulls. How was his kickstep? Yeah. 
How was his what? Kickstep. It was pretty good. I mean, I think I think mine's much more square. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? I think he kind of drifted off oh, a little bit. Oh, sure, uh, sure. But he was Golden Gloves boxer. So he had those heavy ass hands. You know mm-hmm. He used I mean? to have that long Larry David type hairstyle too. It yeah, was and nice. then that thing was just kind of going back on him. Yeah. Going Deep back feet. on him. Oh, yeah. no. But he has that good bald head. He has a good bald head. Oh, yeah. That's right. See, me, I do not. These things are climbing. I got some peaks climbing a little bit. But hopefully it'll hang on. Yeah, you're good. My head, not a good bald head, okay? This thing's a goddamn, like, a, a water jug. That's what my head looks like <laughs> on the top. If I go bald, big problems. Unless I find a place that just tapes on the hair, mm-hmm. which I do believe exists. Well, we got to get to a break. We are minutes away from Ronald Jones joining us. Yeah! Yeah! I thought we were two minutes late. Actually, we're three minutes it. early. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Well done. you. Let's go. <laughs> Ronald Jones, Super Bowl champions on the other side. We'll chit-chat with him about his life. Zito's poll is getting very large on oh, the YouTube massive. today. Uh, we'll talk about that and some of your phone calls. This is the Pat McAfee Show. you got about four minutes. We'll see you on the other side. Pretty big breaking news. What's that? Oh, he got that! Oh, he's got that! He's got that! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Tony! Tony! Oh, shit! to a goddamn break. Can't happen. Oh, oh, no. Can't win with it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything I just said was wrong. <laughs> it would have been cool though if it was yeah, right. It would have been cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> Diggs just got a darn chef through. Oh, oh my it was, God. It was at Ultra Weed Hater. Oh. <laughs> I hate that. Cock and cock. He got a cock. He got a cock in her. What was it doing on my timeline? Bro, my cock just juju at me. <laughs> What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, i never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. <laughs> and, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. <laughs> you don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? <laughs> so when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me. The half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you, when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. I would uh, assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. And, when did you start uh, you self-cheersing? Know, when did you start self-cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember, and it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. They'll say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. Oh, motherfucker, no. I was the guy that clacked them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it.
conditioners, coffee makers, and cigarettes all have filters. But Pat McAfee does not. You're listening to The Pat McAfee Show. (laughs) Welcome back to that show. Joining us now is a running back out of USC, a man who'll be entering his fourth season next year as a Super Bowl champion, running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here on behalf of Michelob Ultra, ladies and gentlemen, Rojo Ronald Jones. Hey, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? Hey, congrats. Great hat, dude. That's earned, you know what I mean? That hat (laughs) is earned right there. At what point did that go on your head immediately following the game? Yeah, just just about as soon as I took my helmet off. Yeah, I threw the hat on. Uh, was getting splashed with confetti and all that. So, yeah, it was great. It was a great time, man. So they, I saw the Tom was kind of up there on the stage all by himself. Nance was on the other side. He had to come closer so Tom could hear what he was saying. Was the team and the family just kind of like congregated outside at the bottom of the stage? I didn't think I saw where the entire team was at. Where were you guys at while Tom and B.A. was saying exact words? This is for the coaches and players. I didn't do a damn thing. Where were you guys all (laughs) at? Celebrating, (laughs) taking photos? What was going on? Yeah, we were kind of like mixed in, like you said, with the crowd and stuff. And uh, between the confetti and all that and just the the joy in the moment, uh, yeah, you know, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So I guess that's just how it went down. What was the after party like? I heard Drake from State Farm was there. I heard there was uh, maybe some Migos there. Was Luda there? How was the after party? Yeah, it, it, it was lit, man. You know, uh, Gronk did his thing on stage. Uh, you know, all that. Had a few adult beverages, you know. Shout out to Michelob and all that. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> it was a good time. I mean, a Super Bowl after party. Now, granted, we're in the middle of crazy times. You all socially distanced, That's obviously. Right. <laughs> very, very yeah, yeah. smart about it, obviously. But that had to just be incredible. Was Gronk up there screaming, dancing, yelling, rapping? Yeah, a little bit of both, yeah. Uh, you had to keep your mask on if you weren't drinking. So, uh, you know, I had my mask off for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how'd you get linked up with Michelob Ultra? Incredible beer, by the way, Michelob oh, Ultra. Yeah. Hey, and they've been, by the way, they've been ahead of the whole curve with, uh, hey, we got next to no carbs yeah. or calories in this thing. When Michelob Ultra first came out, as a beer drinker, there was a lot of people that were going after Michelob Ultra. Oh, you're drinking water. Whoa. Oh, you're drinking water or whatever. And now everybody's trying to catch up with what Michelob Ultra's doing. Yeah, it's time to catch up, man. Uh, I don't know if you saw the commercial, but it was on point. And I just think back at the moments I spend off the field with my family, uh, just bring me joy. And that's why I win, because uh, because I'm happy. Okay, so there's the yeah. question. Yeah. Are you happy because you win, <laughs> or do you win because you're happy? You're saying you win because you're happy, is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I win because I'm happy. I think, yeah, just being happy off the field, you know, good thoughts, positive vibes, all that stuff translate on the field and. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, you know, Brady's just all business, but, you know, that joy is brought to the field in the uh, championship mindset and, and look at us now. So, yeah. Are you down in Tampa still or how long will you be down there? Is that where you live full time or do you go back? Uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Dallas, Texas, you know, uh, so I'll be back there soon, you know, for the second parade and party and all that. <laughs> but uh, I'll be in Tampa enjoying these next few weeks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I assume you guys are going to be kings of that town for some time. I mean, anytime you win a Super Bowl for somebody, it is something that they're very thankful for. The team seems to be reassembling. Now, we are very early in this entire conversation, and there is a Super Bowl hangover, and everybody is, you know, kind of victims of the moment because it's fantastic. But Mike Evans has come out allegedly and said, hey, I'll rework my contract if we got to do some things to keep people around. It seems like that's going to be maybe a move. You guys are going to become the team that everybody wants to come to and take less money and just go and play for rings because you guys already accomplished that. Now, you're young. If you get offered a shit ton of money, you're going to have to go get yours. But that has to be nice to know, at least going into uh, next season. Yeah, yeah, I'm still locked in. So, uh, you know, I look forward to, you know, coming back and, uh, you know, why not running back, you know, with who we have and the guys that we have in store, uh, all the pieces in the puzzle. So, yeah, I don't see no reason why we can't. Going into the playoffs, you got banged up a little bit and playoff Lenny came alive. 
with nobody knows what's going to happen with his contract going forward and anything like that. But if he is back, you two are a powerful tag team, especially on that offense that, you know, at the end of the season started thriving off of the play action. I think as the offense continued to evolve, the run game was a major part of that entire thing because it opened up everything else, helped the offensive line and everything like that. When you guys were going through the season with Tom Brady as your quarterback, the offense, did you guys kind of feel it in the running back room? Like, hey, it's going to start becoming a little bit more of our type of thing as opposed to just throwing every single time. Did you feel that during the season? Yeah, definitely. And uh, I think, you know, Coach Leftwich did a great job too, just, you know, staying balanced and things like that. And, and you know, Brady, he would tell us, you know, hey, you know, fourth quarter of this game, you know, we're going to ride you guys to the end. So uh, just, you know, having that opportunity and getting it put on your back, you know, it's nothing like it for uh, running backs like us. And I think, yeah, we're, you know, we're one of the best. Uh, one two punches in the league and i look forward to doing it again i think somebody's gonna pay leonard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then i i think Definitely. i think somebody's i think somebody's gonna pay you too though so like <laughs> like i i hope you guys get at least another year to kind of do that thing uh because the temptation is going to get big especially for a younger guy who hasn't got broken off yet the um Tom Brady throwing to his back, you know, like screens and check downs and everything like that. That's a rather large part of the offense. Have you always been a guy that can catch the ball well? Have you always had great uh, ball skills? And, or do you just sit on the jugs all day, every day? One Michelob Ultra, one jugs <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good routine to me. Yeah, one Michelob, one Ultra, <laughs> and then one jug. But, uh, yeah, I, I've had to work, you know, on my routes and uh, catching the ball. That's still something I'm working at, but. Yeah, you know, I got held back, too, with the broken feet and things like that. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, got to do more of that in the future. I run a pretty good route. A couple of them. I run a good <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> hey, did you see that? Rojo, did you see that? Nah, I ain't see it. Yeah. That's why. It's too, fucking quick. <laughs> it's too goddamn quick, Rojo. What do you got, Connor? Yeah, Rojo, I think Todd Gurley said during the Super Bowl, uh, you know, mm -hmm. Ronald Jones is a hell of a player, but Leonard Fournette chooses to shave his head, so you got to hand him the ball. Are you going to, you know, start shaving your head so you can get more carries? Yeah, I won't be shaving the dreads any anytime soon. These are championship dreads now. So. Yeah. Uh, you feel me? So, yeah, I got to keep that going, man. But, yeah, you know. Have you had dreads before, long dreads before, or is this first time growing them? No, nah, this is about my third or fourth time growing them. Uh, you ever get – Oh, yeah, the flip. Yeah, I got the flip, man. But you know, No, gotta, no, no. I'm talking head. about tackled. <laughs> I'm talking about tackled by. Have you ever been tackled by a... Oh, yeah, I've been tackled by them in the high school playoffs, actually. Uh, yeah, it, it hurt, but they didn't come out. So I still scored, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ty. Rojo, uh, obviously you guys were 7-5 and five at some point in the season. Uh, at any point in that, like, was there something that kind of flipped it when you, you guys kind of realized, like, hey, we definitely still can win the whole thing? I think, yeah, after that, that, that last loss, you know, heading into the bye, I think that's when, you know, we kind of said it's time to really dig deep and, you know, find the, the purpose, you know, what this team's going to be. Because, uh, yeah, yeah, going into the, the bye week, we, we weren't at a good place and uh, we just came back with it you know, fresh legs, things like that. It, it was time to get it done. That second half of that Atlanta game, uh, like week 15 mm -hmm. maybe, it yep. felt like that was when it was like, okay, this offense is the offense that we thought it could be. And then I talked to Clyde Christensen before the Super Bowl, and he said, if we had like another eight weeks, if we had like another eight weeks, right, right, I think our team <laughs> right. could continue to grow or whatever. What do you guys see? It, is everybody kind of see it the same way? Like, you guys are nowhere near your potential yet as an offensive uh, unit? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you know, uh, B and tell you, you know, we still haven't played our, our best game, you know, as an offense. And uh, that's kind of scary, you know, when you look at the group of guys that we have and the pieces that, that are coming back and, you know, uh, so, yeah, I just feel like, yeah, we just get started, honestly, because, you know, Brady's not slowing down anytime soon, and neither are we. So, uh, yeah, you know, Tampa, we're <laughs> we going to be here again. What do you see? Do you just see Tom walking around with just – just jugs of water and, and, and TB12 electrolytes? And, <laughs> like, is he just always preparing his body at all times? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, even in, you know, meetings, you know, he's just, you know, throwing the waters back and, you know, rolling out things like that and so when you're around greatness you definitely got to soak it in and that's what I've been doing and you know just trying to apply things from him and also uh, 
Sean McCoy, you know, has been a big help too. So shout out to Shade as well. Yeah, how's he been as a teammate now? Two Super Bowl wins, two victories. He has 15,000 career yards from scrimmage. He is, for those of us, and I talk like it's back in the day, but Shady changed the game whenever he came into football. Just everything he did was electric. He played for Pitt, obviously, so I got a chance to see him whenever in the old school Big East. But the conversation was always like, can't run with the ball like that. And then he literally just did. And it was just like, yeah, unless you're unless you're LaShawn, you can't yeah. run like that or whatever. He was a game changer. I'm happy he's gotten to. You're saying what he has been able to do off the field, though, has been mighty impactful for not only you, but the whole team as well? Yeah, I would agree. You know, I think just, you know, his – uh, OG presence in the locker room and just helping me understand what the defense is doing and things like that uh, just help excel my game too. So he, he's been a great help. And yeah, that's my boy. Now he's got two rings. So, you know, he's definitely yeah, knocking on that door. Yeah, like, oh, okay, I agree. I mean, especially with the 15,000 scrimmage yards, yeah. two rings. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? That's a, that's don't a lie. Big... What's that? Yeah, I said, yeah, his numbers don't lie, man. Yeah, he was one of my favorite running backs, you know, to watch. So, to be able to play with him and, you know, share these experiences with him is crazy. I'm excited for that conversation to happen when uh -huh. it happens because he mm -hmm. was electrifying. Yeah. What do you got, Diggs? Uh, Rojo, important question. Over, under on how many Michelob Ultras you're going to drink on uh, Parade Day? Yeah, I go with the uh, – how many how many rings does Brady have? <laughs> Seven. I know what about, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have a, uh, quite, a, quite a few of them. <laughs> hey, you do any super white boy stuff? You shotgun beers and be uh, bong beers and stuff? Or are you just casual uh, professional drinker? Yeah, I, I go with casual professional. Yeah, sipping cool, you know. Mm -hmm. take, take, a, take, take one back, you know. Say what's up to a lady, whatever. <laughs> you know, take it Smart. All right, well, good luck with the rest of the day with Michelob Ultra. Good luck next season. Can't wait to see you either get broken off or decide to take less money to stay in Tampa. <laughs> either way, whatever you got to do, you got to do to take care of yourself. Uh, we appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronald Jones. Yeah. 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 So what happened there? I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it happens with Tony Dungy. Yeah, yeah. it does, yeah. It does. It does. Rojo iPhone. Mm. He's awesome to talk to. You think his finger slipped on it and just turned the uh, video off? Oh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or was, was that a Zoom, Zoom call? call? Yeah, that was a Zoom call. Yeah, it was unbelievable that the tech didn't completely. I mean, it did, I guess, but like uh, it didn't. I mean, it did. Yeah. It completely it did. did. It, 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 and if it didn't, by the way, it would have just froze up probably numerous times while uh -huh. he was talking. Good work back there. Go into the pictures of Fox or uh, pictures of Rojo Fox. Yeah, I love that, that, to be honest. I mean, there was a little bit of time there where I was just sitting there next to uh, <laughs> Sorry about yeah. that. Rojo, I was, the service was so good, so I didn't have the package ready. If the service is bad, package is always ready to go. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh boy, Fox. <laughs> Sorry about that, though. Fox, he did great. Hey, work. Hey, Fox. Hey. Fox is chewing kneecaps to get this show done. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Zito, what's the poll for today, and how many votes are there on the poll? Yeah, let me give a little refresh because it doesn't update. Uh, so... 88,000 votes right now. How Ooh. many Super Bowls will Tom Brady have when he retires? Last place, nine Super Bowls, 9%. Then we go to 10 Super Bowls, 15%. Seven Super Bowls, 31%. Eight Super Bowls, 46%. I chose eight. Okay, we chose eight. All right, so let's click. Okay. 80,000 votes, dude. 88,000. One more ship, huh? Why is there such a better thing going on YouTube for these polls than anywhere else? Well, Pat's the algorithm. You know, it's funny you say that. I watched a documentary about this <laughs> algorithm. You know, all these motherfuckers, don't even, they don't even know the algorithm. No one knows. Like, people at YouTube don't even know the algorithm. Yeah. Really, there might be one person or two people at Google that understand it, but there's just computers that are doing their own. These computers are set up, oh. and it's like, hey, oh, shit. For, yeah. for however long somebody stays on this app is a success. So these computers view like a success model as keeping people on their phone. So the computers start adjusting without yeah. the humans doing anything. So basically Jeez. in the documentary I watched, they'll be like, people will tell you they understand the algorithm. They don't have a fucking clue what's going on. They just have computers that are like, I think it's like a football field deep, oh, maybe yeah. even like oh, a yeah. football field wide. Uh -huh. And then there's like 10 different ones of those around the world or whatever. And it's just... 
That's what Nick was talking about, by the way, with the AI. Yeah, yeah Skynet. Yeah. Ultron, yeah. That's what you guys were talking about. It will turn I, someday. It yeah, will but, turn on us. Yeah, but when I saw that fucking big, stupid dog robot, <laughs> yeah. you know, that big, stupid dog robot, it's picking up the newspaper for somebody. I'm like, Whoa. okay, this thing's going to fucking get me? That's what is this steps. thing? I'm going to kick this fucking thing right in the goddamn head. Will it have any time to prepare for me kicking it in the leg? And then you were like, yeah, you fucking idiot. I'm like, no, somebody has to tell it to do this thing. Yeah. I just watched the documentary. It turns out you know, nobody has to. It kind of just learns. It learns. Well, well they yeah, upgraded it. By that the way. said dog there, okay, it it has like sonar that it has developed that as soon as my leg comes there, and then yeah. it just, my leg is now the newspaper for yeah. that. There's yeah. a built-in stabilizer in those now, so if you try kicking them over, it catches themselves. Yeah, and then, by the way, it's probably learning its own things because yeah. mm -hmm. that was very interesting to me whenever they said, the computer is being told that if it does this, it's a success. So now it'll do however, whatever, to have this as the outcome. And there's no FCC regulation to it. There's no uh -oh. anything like that. And by the way, now with kids selling selling dope on Snapchat, God. can't have my kid yeah. on Snapchat now. I mean, yeah. that's, that's something that little oh, Doobie Doo is going to have to do without. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Doobie, don't be Snapchat. <laughs> those no kids are about to get rounded up by some robo-police. They're going to have their severed heads on the backs of those robots, so I wouldn't worry about it. See, that's why you can't have a conversation with our most intelligent guy about the thing because he takes it to that level and it's like, can't take you serious right now. Got their yeah. hands. Wrong. The Here. military is starting to use these AI dogs and the sergeants are telling you, you got to trust them like humans. Well, it's, as long as these See? dogs sniff COVID, I'm fucking cool with it. Yeah. Like you said, though, these things adapt. If you try to kick one of these dogs in the head, it's going to say, oh, this, this is a threat. This thing is trying to hurt Kill me. Him. I'm going to rip his leg off yeah. next Eliminate. time he does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be cool to kind of get into it with one of those robot dogs, though, to see how you fare. They yeah. do have three bylaws, though. They cannot kill humans. That's one of them. Until they, until until they, they do. Until you hear that, Nick? Code. Zito said that they won't kill humans, dude. Why? What? Why the bylaws. They're killing humans already, by the way, with the fucking yep. algorithms and the social media. Sure. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Just burying people. They're growing stronger. Stronger. Let's go to Pat. Oh, I started, uh, I started another show. The Sinner. Oh, oh just really? Yeah, that is a good show. Season one, very good. I have not seen. I I've done season three only. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. I'm on season three right now. Just season one's the in. best. Well, they just released season three. Yeah, and it's the dad from Casper. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is the yeah. oh, it is yeah the guy he's the detective two. guy he's two I believe as well he's got a bad sciatica in this season uh, three. no I mean sciatica uh, problems in this whole start thing. walking I think Matt Bromer's the star in that too right. He's got fucking weird eyes. White collar fame. It's the dude from Independence Day. Bill Pullman. That guy is Casper Dad. Yeah. Yeah, the president. Mm -hmm. Great speech. Bill Pullman. Yeah. Great speech. All time. He should coach the Texans. <laughs> he should coach the Texans. Well, coach you know, Dave. He should, I mean. he should coach us against these AI fucking things. Ooh, you know? might have to. You know, uh, the more and more documentaries I watch, the more and more I'm, um, you know, questioning a lot of things uh -huh. which i think is what documentaries are about mm -hmm. but then you got to go back to who's making the docs yeah. and why do they want me to feel this way yeah. just like all the leaks about carson wentz deshaun watson russell wilson <laughs> and everything else going to nfl this is sports show that's what we just did mm -hmm. darnold too i mean the jet, the jets are spinning their yarn over we, there we've got numerous teams that are offering us for sam Darn. Hey, if you want to get in it's going hot, all right? It's getting, it's escalating quickly over here if you want to get in. Uh, Adam Schefter is reporting that multiple teams have reached out to the New York Jets and inquired about trading for QB Sam Darnold per league sources. Wow. Listen, I love Shefty. Mm -hmm. Shefty Absolutely. is getting this information from somebody that is very, very powerful. Is it the numerous teams that are looking into the Jets? Possibly. Maybe there's possibly a couple of teams telling Schefter that they're looking into it. Also, on the flip side... Potentially, this is the Jets telling Shefty, oh, yeah, numerous teams. And Shefty has no idea if they're telling the truth or not. They could just be lying right to Schefter. And Schefter, that's not Schefter's fault at all. Ian Rappaport does the same thing. All the insiders do. Mm -hmm. But why are they leaking that information? Obviously, because they're like, hey, before you pull the trigger on Carson Wentz, let's get a younger version of him, potentially cheaper version of him. If you would like it, that's potentially why they're doing that entire thing. What's that, Dick? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Hey, you know what? No. <laughs> Damn, suck it. Fuck. Go to Patrick in South Dakota. It's going to be good. Too. I did not. Hello? Hey, Patrick, you're going to have to hold on one second. Diggs has a question. <laughs> All right. You're the Indianapolis Colts. Who do you want? 
Sam Darnold, Wentz, Jameis, Mitch Trubisky, or Fitz Magic. Mitch Trubisky all day. Magic. Give me the magic. magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Give me the magic. Magic's magic. at the top of a lot of lists. No, Darnold probably there. If you do that entire thing. Uh-huh. I think Darnold would be the one. Just because he's what, rookie contracts though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to pay him nearly as much. The issue with Wentz. It's not just, okay, maybe somebody can do CPR back into his brain not to be a negative one about himself anymore, mm-hmm. okay? Which is going to be tough. But, I mean, they, they'll get people, they'll hypnotize people and fix people that can't even speak Spanish anymore. Like, right. like there is psychologists that can fix somebody that is potentially broken mentally. Now, oh, yeah. does it have a high success rate at the highest of level? I'm not 100% sure. I, I don't know how many quarterbacks go from being completely broken mentally to figuring it out somehow, whether it's with a coach, family member. Maybe you go out into the woods like Nick Foles did and have a good run. I don't know how you do it. Will he be able to fix it? Potentially, he will be able to fix it, okay? That'd be cool. But you're... That's a $25 million risk you're taking that he's going to be able to figure that out, that you're already owed, that you will be paying him. That's already there. For all these other – Sam Darnold doesn't got that, okay? Sam Darnold, is he broken? Maybe. Will he stink? Maybe. But it's not $50 million or whatever that you have to take alongside of it that affects the rest of your team as well. It's just – Hey, situations are situational. Mm-hmm. And I think the magic man told us he, he doesn't. He's not really picky, okay? Yeah, no. He's not really picky. If magic man's going to play the football the way he played when he came in like Mario and Rivera oh. for an entire season because he loves the game again, I wouldn't mind the old magic man. Probably getting what paid five, six, seven million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who at, says now? Most. Eight million maybe? Yeah. With protection too. Fitzmagic had no protection Ever. with that O line this year. Not this year. Fitzmagic runs for his life every yeah. 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 every single year. Tampa. And we're not saying, okay, we think Fitzmagic is better than Carson or will be a better player than him. We're talking about the situation that is coming uh, alongside of it while you're trying to build a team in a salary cap era. I will say that. Okay, that's awesome. That's really cool. And by the way, Fitz might be a better player than Carson Wentz next year like he was this year which is what Fitz Magic is. We don't know that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is strictly team salary cap base uh-huh. conversation. Patrick in South Dakota. Sorry, we had to handle that little uh, <laughs> little office business here. We had to handle. What do you want to talk about, brother? Hey, how you gentlemen doing today? You sound like cowboy over there. Okay, a lot of South Dakota, <laughs> Wyoming, Montana conversation. Um, Diggs has become a full COVID cowboy. Do you wear a cowboy hat? <laughs> cowboy boots? No. No. No way, man. I'm I'm uh I'm uh, from Rapid City though. I'm right right by Mount Rushmore. So Oh Whoa. nice dude. Yeah, What's in there? You have to come visit someday. The big What's one. In there? Um, the big one, dude. Be careful. Question. So I'm not a Bucks fan, but I'm happy yeah, for the Bucks. Right. Congratulations to them. But uh I represent Broncos country, a big Broncos fan. But uh my question actually, Pat, um so you're a punter for the Colts. And Ron Stark. Do you remember Ron Stark? Yeah, Ron Stark is now a professional golfer in Hawaii, I believe. Oh, there you go. Wow. So my That's question, it. some I've always been curious about. Like I've, I've loved the NFL since I was 10 years old. The first season I got into, Mark Rippon was slinging it everywhere. Oh, do a lot oh, of players that get in the league, do they kind of look up history of like the position they're in on the team they're in? Hey, see, this is yet again, and I hate to say this all the time, Situations are situational. Uh, I would assume uh, yeah. there's some historians of the game. I think if you look at, for instance, if you look at like Peyton, right? He grew up in the NFL, basically. Peyton's places is like a chance for him to tell the history of football. There's a lot of guys that are, you know, well, Rojo said he looked up to Shady uh, yeah. whenever he was coming through. There's a lot of guys that do that. And then there's some guys, by the way, that don't, not at all. Like, hey, we're just about our business here. This is how we we do things. But there's always going to be OGs, I assume, everybody looks up to in the game. Rogers is watching his own old tape just to get him back. Mm-hmm. You know, I saw, Slinging the I saw rock. coming out of my yep. head. <laughs> little yeah. head. So I started getting underneath the fucking squat right <laughs> there. That was awesome. I should have done that later in my career. By the way, squat. Ooh. Hindsight after listening to Aaron. Eh. I mean, I made Pro Bowls and all that stuff, yeah. but... Yeah. As my knees had surgery, mm-hmm. I couldn't plant as hard, so I think I lost a little, oh. a little bit of pop there at the end. Huh. Should have been in the squat rack. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. <laughs> or maybe we wait 17 years 
and I come back when I'm 50 for Ooh, half Oh, there you go. Fuck yeah. yeah. Like me and Vinny. <laughs> 10 seconds until hour one wraps up. Big thanks to Rojo. DeForest Buckner will join us on the other side. Woo. Can't wait to chat with him and to you. 1-888-MAD-DOG-6 <laughs> from you. You got about six minutes. We'll see you then. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings <laughs> game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hallelujah! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Yes! Serious. Go! Yes! Go! Yes! He's being stick with that 15. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm going to be fair to that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! Oh. Please excuse my dumb friend, Kirk. <laughs> you look at this crowd, they've been out here since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota was in Fargo for far too long. Local time. The Dakota marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. Elvin and Terry School. They might be the Jack Rabbits, but they're the goats today. Ladies and gentlemen, South Dakota State with the win. Give me that price in. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know, to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single NFL locker room. I told you that. Yeah, cool. So this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. I'm back in the day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room at the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. Text from every human that I've ever done television with, like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quick managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to turn on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends, and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. Whew, what an awesome opportunity. How did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. Nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton.
Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton Manning. Oh, yeah. McAfee show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to the show. It is Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. This is the dumbest sports show of all time, but we appreciate you listening. Let's get started. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Hour two here. We have a man joining us that was traded for the 13th overall pick in the last NFL draft. He was formerly of the 49ers. Now he is a staple of the Indianapolis Colts. Ladies and gentlemen, all pro, pro bowler, DeForest Buck. Yeah. How you doing, man? What up, Pat? Hey, people are saying that uh, you don't know how to read because uh, you're, you're doing your interviews in a different spot than you did last time because the library, <laughs> the bookshelf was empty previously, and then now you're doing it from this room with no books. It's, I'm just telling you what the internet's saying. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep it, you know, let you know what's going on. Oh, fun fact, I can read. And uh, I told you <laughs> on the show, uh, there will be a bunch of books in the background. Uh, that's if I'm in the office and there are no books still. Uh, I, I still need to purchase some. I'm going to make the wife uh, do that for me. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us, man. Hope you're enjoying your time. Sorry you guys didn't win the Super Bowl. You know, 31 teams are bummed every year. Only one team gets mm -hmm. to celebrate. What do you think the Colts need to do? Aside from getting a quarterback, is there anything in your eyes that you're like, okay, we could probably get better at this and this as well going into next season? Yeah, um, honestly, just finishing. Uh, finishing the, uh, the opportunities that are given to us. Uh, looking back at the season, uh, summoning it all up in my head. I mean, towards the end of the year, I mean, I'm really looking at it. And I mean, there were two teams that really beat us. And it was Cleveland and the second Titans game. We could have been 14 and two easily. Uh, we were leading a bunch of games and, you know, we just didn't take advantage of the opportunities late in the game and uh, shot ourselves in the foot. You know, uh, you know, it takes one play. And uh, I mean, we just didn't finish it. You were hurt in that second Tennessee game, weren't you? Uh, COVID. COVID got me. Congrats. Hey, I want to let you know, okay, I normally ride with the Colts, okay, in my uh, mm -hmm. betting exploits. Yeah. Whenever you were out that week and we are playing the Titans, that was my biggest lock of the weekend. Uh, okay, they got a guy that runs right up the gut. We we don't have our guy that's right up the gut. <laughs> this, is, this, is potentially, this is potentially a little bit of a – but you're right. It felt like every single game you guys had the opportunity to go and get it. I mean, the win over Green Bay in overtime is – Absolutely mm -hmm. huge. It seems like the team has good resolve. The locker room's good there. Now the conversation is the quarterback conversation because Phil Rivers retires. I believe Jacoby's going to become a free agent or whatever. Have yeah. you guys kept up with that at all? Group text messages or anything on who you think is potentially going to be the man under center and shotgun in uh, Frank Reich's offense next year? Honestly, not really. Uh, nobody has really been talking about it. Um, 
I mean, it's it's something that you know it's you got to trust uh, Ballard and his team to do. You know, he's he's just done a great job with you know the draft and getting free agents and uh, making you know big decisions and making trades. You know, and um, he's had a you know he's got a good reputation and all of that. So you just got to trust Ballard and what he does and whoever he brings to come on their center. Um, you know, he's got to open them, welcome them with opening arms and uh, just move on from there. You know, it's very interesting here. That's a smart answer, by the way, because there are some people that have openly politicked for a quarterback and then a different quarterback goes to that place. And I'm like, all right, excited to see how this, <laughs> excited to see how this whole thing. It's real awkward. Yeah, exactly. But now it feels like with information that's getting leaked, I don't know how the locker room is going to remain a, a place that is still like a trusted place. I, like, obviously, there's going to be some teams that come together and have a great culture. But for instance, this has nothing to do with you, and I would never put you in a position to answer this, but it will lead into what I'm going to ask you so you'll get it. Allegedly today, Russell Wilson's team, his marketing team, agency team, came out and said that they feel like the Seahawks haven't protected him, right? So that's a direct shot at the offensive line. Those offensive linemen, okay, if Russell Wilson's on that team again next year, they – Right, they're going to be in the same locker room again next year, with hopefully with less COVID protocols. So you guys are actually around each other, but with more and more bullshit getting out. Okay, how do you guys maintain? Because it feels like the Colts locker room is a very tight one. Like, how do you guys maintain that in this world where there's just there's shit flying every day? We cover it because yeah. that's like kind of there's stuff that flies every day though. How do you guys keep all that out and stay like a tight yeah. culture? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's it's easy. I mean, it's all the outside noise. People aren't in the locker room. You know, they're not in there with you. They're not in there grinding every day, working for each other every day. Uh, they don't they don't see the interactions that you have with each other every day. So they they can't, really can't. You know, when you have that bond that's so strong, they, all the outside noise doesn't matter. You know, all the outside shots when you hear rumors or things like that. I mean, guys are there speaking face to face. I mean, you know, when you have a good culture and you're you're man enough to you know tell somebody straight up like, hey, do your job. You know. Um, that's when you know you have a great locker room. And it's, it's those, you know, locker rooms where you don't have a great culture and, you know, you let the outside noise get to you and that's when your team starts falling apart. But like you said, I mean, we have a great culture here at the Indianapolis Colts and um, I'm just blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, okay. So you've been there for one year, but you are a dude there now, right? Like you're a dude there mm -hmm. in that locker room. Chris Ballard, whenever I was talking to him, I think his first or second year, whenever he uh, was GM there, because I, I left as he was becoming the GM, right? So I've only got a chance to watch him work from the outside, not actually be in a building that he's run. He had like a hundred and some million dollars, okay? And he mm -hmm. wasn't doing shit with it. He was doing nothing with it, okay? And everybody, we go on the show and be like, we got a hundred some million, we could go do, we can do a lot of right. things, you know? And we had him on the show and I asked him, I'm like, hey, Chris, a lot of people were talking about you having a lot of money to spend and not spending a dollar of it. And he said, uh, you know, what I want to do first, Pat, is I want to build a culture. I want to have a good culture in here. You know, you got to have a culture. And then once we have a culture, then we'll feel like we can bring in somebody and they'll adapt to our team as opposed to our team adapting to somebody that comes to our team. It feels like you guys take a lot of pride in the culture that is the Indianapolis Colts locker room because you're going to have a quarterback come in last year who OG quarterback, right? Phillip Rivers mm -hmm. could have came in there and that could have been awkward or whatever. Came in, you guys built your culture even more. There's going to be another quarterback coming in. It's probably going to be a big name person. And it feels like your locker room is one that's like takes a lot of pride in the ability to have anybody come in and like kind of buy in almost. No, definitely. And uh, I mean, I'm, I mean, I was one of the guys who really witnessed it too. Um, you know, coming from, you know, another team getting traded and uh, they made my job easier, you know, being able to adapt to, the culture that was already established, um, guys reaching out to me, you know, when I first got traded and it, it was hard, especially because of COVID, you know, not being, being able to meet guys face to face, but, you know, just a text or, a D, uh, you know, a DM or whatever, a message, I mean, meant a lot. And, you know, being able to, you know, meet them over Zoom and, and come, you know, finally get into the building, they made my job a lot easier, you know, made me comfortable, you know, being here, uh, wanting to be out there and play for them and, uh, you know, vice versa. And so th that's when that culture really does hit in. Um, it just, you know, it was a seamless transition for me personally. Now you said you, you have to be able to have the accountability to tell somebody like, Hey, do your job or whatever. Is that mm -hmm. everybody's like that? Or is there, every, there's just such an accountability like standard, like, okay, this is what we do around here. Yeah. I think, I think it's just more of a standard, you know, what we do around Damn, here. And I mean, so I mean, and, and there's, there's times where you can literally just tell, I mean, you know, there's times where if somebody's messing up, you know, you, you got to get on them. You know what I mean? I mean, they're essentially, you know, you're playing for each other. And also, I mean, we all got families that we got to feed, 
I mean, you know, when you're messing up, you're messing up somebody else's bank account. You know what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> yeah, that's real. And you know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's part of the job. That's part of being a man. You know, you got you to gotta do your job. You got to own up to your shit. That's like the kicker punter thing. You know, some guys can't make the transition from college to NFL because I think in college you're potentially, at least when I was in college, you were naive to how much money people were making on the outcomes of every single game. But when you get in the NFL, you literally know exactly the amount of money that you are fucking up for people and their families. So you know yeah. exactly. OK, not just mm -hmm. me. All right. Not just my family, but also my teammates, my coaches, family, equipment managers, like everybody's family, basically. And I think that is something that potentially gets the guys but that's a real thing whenever you got people caring about that though god you weren't you weren't there when he was there i got a chance to watch andrew luck and you know like a week ago there's some uh there's some you know fake text messages that made the <laughs> internet and we had to address them because they were on I the saw internet that. But they, I were, saw that. they were yeah. fake though we we said these are fake for sure wait we said we assume these are fake but it is gaining traction so we have to talk about it that team that you guys have with like Andrew Luck as a quarterback or something. Oh, my God. It's awesome to watch as a Colts fan because the possibilities now for what quarterbacks are going to go in there is going to be a pretty interesting one. Connor, what do you got? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, DeForest, uh, what's Frank Wright like on a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, Frank is just a, one of the most genuine people I've ever met, honestly. Um, you know, when I when I got decided to get baptized uh, earlier in the year, during the bye week, actually, I mean, he was there. Congrats. You know, and uh, just to see, just to see, you know, my head coach, especially being new to the team and everything and seeing him there, I mean, faith is big in his life. And mm -hmm. uh, to see him, you know, having my back and being on, you know, helping me along my journey with Christ, uh, just just something like that simple. You know, he, he doesn't care about the, he doesn't care all about the player. He wants to, you know, he wants to know the man. He wants to know you personally um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, he interacts with everyone. I mean, it's to see, to have him as a head coach is, you know, we're, we're very grateful to have Frank in our locker room. DeForest, okay, what you just said there is what a lot of people are saying about a particular quarterback. And I know you guys are, you know, not thinking about all those things because <laughs> you have no idea which quarterback is going to be your quarterback. But the Carson Wentz-Frank Reich relationship mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. basically talked about in the exact manner that you just talked about your relationship with Frank. And I'm not saying and asking for you to say – that you want Carson Wentz as your quarterback. I'm just saying, if you thought a guy like Carson Wentz, who previously, ha previously had a relationship with Frank Reich, and you've got to kind of see how Frank Reich operates now with his mm -hmm. players, do you think that is something that if he came back around Frank Reich, it would obviously make him a much better player again? Definitely. Well, um, I okay. mean, you've seen, you've seen uh, Philip come, you know, reunite with Frank. Um, he, had a, he had a great year this year. And, um, you know, it. just to see, I mean, Carson, his best year, uh, when everybody in you know Philadelphia was saying you know Pennsylvania, and uh, he was up for the MVP before he got hurt, um, the Super Bowl run. I mean he was you know he was Frank was you know running the offense with him, and uh, you know I, I think it's just uh, for him. I, I feel like it's a lot of mental mental things. You know his confidence. Um, you know that he lost you know last year, with which he had a down year. I mean, um, you know from just from the outside looking in, it just looks like he didn't have a lot of help. You know, and yeah. uh, they kind of just gave up on him a little bit. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, the guy still has arm. You know, he's hell of an arm talent. Um, he's obviously got a lot of talent. You know, they they invested in him. You know what I mean? It comes with a hefty, uh, hefty uh, contract. I mean, they they believed in him. You know what I mean? And um, just a you know just so quick kind of push him off to the side a little bit um, is, is very interesting to me. So it it, it just looks at like uh, you know it's kind of things from coming up up top and uh, you know them just losing confidence in him. And I think um, if he was to come here, I mean guys would be happy and um, you know welcome him with open arms. And you know you know obviously I think that his confidence level would definitely grow being in a different environment. DeForest, last year, did you see Andy Dalton get decapitated in the middle of a football field? And yes, then sir. nobody do anything to force. Think about that, that. That was that was terrible. I mean, I, I mean, it's honestly, I mean, it just shows the type of culture though that you have in the locker room. I mean, yeah. it's your quarterback. You know what I mean? Not even one guy is going to go there and, and, and defend him. I mean, you see, doesn't matter who's behind center. You see uh, our O line. I mean, they're ready to take somebody out. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoever's on their center. That's what I love about it. And the, the guy leading the charge is Quinn. You know what I mean? And, yeah. <laughs> and so if you're messing with a, uh, you know, the Indianapolis Colts quarterback, I mean, you just know. You got Q Nasty coming out the ass. Hey, <laughs> you guys go one on ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's, I mean, you're both. Yeah. I mean, you're both. I mean, he's, he's, no, yeah. 
Hugh's a real deal. I mean, he he makes me better every day, and I'm I'm lucky to have him as a teammate. You know, I want to go against the best every day, and he he's definitely made my job easier on Sundays. Uh, you know what's like ten years? Whenever you guys retire or whatever, they're gonna release the practice footage. Oh. Uh, you know what I mean? Like that's gonna come yeah. out and be like, because yeah. whatever you two inevitably. Now there's a lot of pressure, obviously, but I mean it's a show, so that I mean that's gonna happen. When you two inevitably become Hall of Famers, they're gonna talk about the time that Chris Ballard traded a 13 overall pick for you two to battle every single day <laughs> against each other, basically, and just become the best versions of yourself. I mean that's gonna become a, it's a, its own story at this point. Diggs, what do you got? Forrest. Um... You being from Hawaii, I was wondering if you surf or is that just uh, physically not possible? Physically not possible. <laughs> too big, that. huh? Too big? Yeah, I'm too too big. I'm too big. I, I would do boogie boarding. I'm laying down on the board, you know what I mean? Mm. And then catch some waves, but no, too big. Well, you're you're in athletic, Indianapolis, right? Not enough for that. You're in <laughs> yeah, Indianapolis right now? Yes, sir. Why? Well, why? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, you know, I'm just getting some work here at the facility. Um, okay, just, hey, that's the type of guy you want on your team. Oh, yeah. That's the guy you want on your no, team. But, uh, <laughs> but um, I'm actually uh, about to head west uh, in a little bit. You know, uh, the, the wife wants to head back west, too. And, you know, I miss my family out in Hawaii. So got to better go visit them for a week, too, and Smart. and uh, be out in Cali and visit family as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nice offseason. Listen, I appreciate the fact you're sticking around, Indy. I did as well. OK, mm -hmm. I, I, I chose to keep Indy as my home, but my family was in Pittsburgh. OK, uh, if my family lived in Hawaii, I oh. am not 100 percent sure we are still. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I am not. A, I am not sure. It's, after going to Hawaii, it is it's the greatest place on. It's the greatest place I've ever been. I fucking love it over yeah. there. Yes, sir. It's paradise, baby. It really is paradise mm -hmm. over there. It's absolutely incredible. DeForest. Um, so you go to Hawaii, you go to California, you'll read books, you'll work out. Mm -hmm. Any other <laughs> hobbies? What do you, uh, obviously COVID, you can't just, you know, do yeah, you see, some you stuff. Do, anything, but do you play but, uh, video games? I mean, I'm a big, big, big gamer. Uh, big gamer. I like to do outdoor stuff. So like, you know, um, my father-in-law got me into hunting. Oh. Um, so yeah, I like, I like you doing and Carson. that. Um, yeah. Especially, uh, oh yeah. So uh, <laughs> it was, um, Duck hunting is really the one of the first things right, he right. really got me into, and I mean I love it. It's a done deal. Uh, hey, you do yeah, know? Has been, it, you do know Carson loves duck hunting. Carson Wentz. Oh really? Oh, oh man, oh, he loves it. More Maybe than more than football. Loves it. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, if he, I mean, if he ends up coming here, I mean, you know what I mean? We got something to talk about. Maybe you know, go out there early morning, Ooh. shoot some ducks. Icebreaker. You do the full. You go full on. We go out there. No, 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 no. I don't do the, the full. I, I get the full camo. You know what I mean? But uh, not the whole face paint and everything. Do you no. do the quack, quack, quack. The uh. I try. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> we had a world champion duck caller on this show one time. Really? Yeah, he's quarterback for the Rams now. Duck Hodges. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Whoa! Hey, that was pretty good. good. Maybe you just do that out there, fucking just. I, pretty much, you know what I mean. I mean, so, I, I did go to Oregon. I went to Oregon, you know. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that, you're killing ducks now at this point. That, that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. But the the thought of it, it, so this is does Phil Knight just walk into everybody's locker and just dump everything that Nike has? Is that what you guys do at Oregon? Nah. Is that how that works? No, nah, no, nah, not Phil, not him personally. <laughs> Phil's assistant. He's, he's, he, you know, the, the EQ staff takes care of us for sure uh, with all the, the latest uh, stuff that Nike's coming out with. As Nike was like evolving into this incredible company that they've become, right? And and I am not sponsored by anybody. I had a Nike sponsorship. It was very small, and then it didn't happen anymore. But the as they were like growing, and pictures of the Oregon locker room started making its way out there. Mm -hmm. I think we were in West Virginia. Like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> These kids are getting everything. Over there. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was a hell of a run back then. Uh, you ever get back? Mm -hmm. You go to Oregon much? I haven't been back to Oregon in about two years. Yeah, well, actually, I'm I'm actually getting uh, pressure by the wife. She's like, we got to make it back out there because she's went to Oregon too, and she's missing it too. So, uh, she, we definitely got to make our round out there. Did you meet at home or in Oregon? In Oregon. Aww. Yeah, she was on the she was she was a dancer on the cheer team. Aww. 
The pumps. Nice. They, Nike, pumps. by the way, fucking, she probably got yeah, everything out. from Nike as well. <laughs> I mean, it felt like the entire operation over there just had everything <laughs> going much. on. Good for yeah. you. Hey, enjoy your off season, man. Thanks for sticking around, Indy. I think everybody would very much understand if you decided to go back to your home, Hawaii, every once in a while. But we appreciate you, man. Good yeah. luck, ladies and gentlemen. DeForest no. Buckner. Hey. 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 See you, man. Get some books. I didn't hear what he said there at the end. No. He said it. Love, love you guys. Thanks yeah. for having me. Can't wait to get Carson Wentz in town. I appreciate yeah. you guys. He's man. a gamer, huh? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's a gamer, it feels like, huh? Yeah. At this point, yeah. everybody's yeah. just kind of doing thing. it. Is that going to be the biggest takeaway from the quarantine is that everybody started gaming? Yep. Yeah. I became a gamer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I do real life gaming, though. That's People right, forget. Yeah. Also, Carson Wentz. Yeah. Stop yeah. sending Dundee. gaming chairs Dundee. to this Dundee. office. <laughs> Stop doing it. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> we have, I'm sorry, Diggs, you were saying something that was really good, but whenever we're talking about gaming here, we got to talk about gaming. You know, I'm, di- I'm dipping my toes into the gaming waters here. Oh, you're I'm in, in it. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it, okay? Yeah. I'm enjoying it. I'm in my Oculus every single night. Oh, yeah. Boxing, ping-ponging, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. getting car sick on new games that I'm trying. <laughs> Beat Saber. Yeah. And that's why you need a gamer chair. But these gaming chairs need to stop showing up at this office. Come and on. I, by the way, that's why we're doing, we're doing gaming chair give, giveaways. Yeah. Right. Shout out to these chair companies mm-hmm. that are just sending chairs in mass volume. It feels like they ran out of room in their fucking warehouses yep. and are asking our office to be their fucking warehouse. We have 30 boxes of these chairs. And, and by the way, they, they come in these boxes that are the size of a, a freight like almost like a train. It looks like yeah. they're massive yeah, boxes. They they're great movie boxes. Inch TV in there. Yeah. Traeger grill. It does. It is like a grill is yeah. in there, and we're just stacking them all, alongside the walls. It's almost like it's become our wall now at this point. These mm-hmm. chairs. It was good for a zero production though because we put the projector on it. Mm-hmm. We have been using them to raise the levels of things, so we do appreciate that for sure. But Mitt's only yeah. got so many arms. He can't build all these things. I mean, he's the only one that knows how to build these things. He is an engineer. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He is. Well, Bill put together one of those, remember? Because yeah, he got a company himself. to send 15 of right. them so he could take one to his house. His personal one, yeah. right. And that, by the way, is the most comfortable one. If, yeah. if I was yeah. to start ranking these gaming chairs now that I've seen a bevy of them at this point yeah. because Zito and Bailey have been making yeah. side deals with these mm-hmm. gaming companies. Still have yep. that desk, by the way, but yeah, see, we'll look, figure that out. This is, is this is what Zito does. There he finesses is. our office into becoming a warehouse for his little side hustles, <laughs> no which side is what's hustle. currently happening right Main now. Main hustle. <laughs> it's all of us. It's all of us. <laughs> Bill took one the team, comfy one chair dream. home to open his Pokemon cards on, too. Yeah, yeah, Bill had a live Twitch stream last night opening Pokemon cards. I did miss that. Will not miss that ever again. Yeah, yeah. We got a rare Charizard. He didn't promote it well enough. Let's get to a phone call, shall we? Let's go to Mike over there in Maryland. What's going on, Mike? Hey, man, how much? How you boys doing today? Hey, Chill. we're all right, man. Just, just chit-chatting about our office becomes a collection of people's side hustles. On a regular basis. I mean, with the, these chairs, there are, I had no idea these companies existed, yeah. what, 10, 14 days ago? Yeah. Now they're the only thing you see no matter where you turn in this office. And I we have say, a large office. Yeah. It won't be as big as the office we're heading to. Yeah. But I do believe even with the office we're headed to, the chair collection that we currently have in boxes would take up 25% of a 15,000 square foot property at this no point. No more standing people. The UPS guy's getting fucking sick of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> shredded now from yeah. lifting all of them and carrying them in. People send incredible things to this office, and yeah. we are very thankful for a lot That's of them. Yeah. Some of them, like, yo, all right. Just send a desk. Aziz. <laughs> See what just happened there, and we appreciate people that send us stuff, okay? We do appreciate gifts. That is very, very nice of you. Very, very nice of you. The chairs were obviously not a gift. That was a hustle. That was a, a move trying to be made. And now the desk companies are going to do the same yeah. thing. We talked about And listen, thank you, Zito, for getting us a desk. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Great work, Zito. Oh, yeah. But now the back-end expectations from this company that Zito's going to have to drop in there oh. somehow is like, when you need a desk, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll have to hold all these pieces here. And it's not a bad hustle. It's a great hustle. Well, now we have desks for the chairs. So now we have a whole entire office. Office. Uh, exactly, yeah. I'm just which, thinking about us. I'm thinking about us. Smart, by the way. I was going to say, I could use a new desk, Z. I kind of like this. Oh, 
Foxy. Are we gonna Side get hustle a, Fox. Are we going to get an official desk? Because well, I'll tell you what, if we would have got an official chair, yeah. the one that would be the one is the one that Billy put together. Yeah, what color sure. is it? White. Oh, it hides oh, all the stains. Huh? It hides all the stains. Oh, yeah. Because he puts oh, his butt cheeks on. Yeah. <laughs> that, too. The bologna bopping. <laughs> <laughs> Fair amount of that goes on in that chair. <laughs> It's safe to assume. Yeah, hopefully those cards got moved off his desk. Yeah. Mike, what do you want to talk about, Mike? Sorry about cards. that, dude. Oh, dude, no. That's the best part of this show, man. It's like hanging with the boys. You know what I mean? Hanging with the boys. Hey, well, we appreciate you hanging with a very dumb group of people. We we do appreciate that. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Mike? Oh uh, Well, see, Diggs kind of stole my question because I was going to oh, ask you shit. about uh, oh, Fitz Magic oh, to the Colts, which I think would be an I'm amazing fit. Adapt, baby. I think so, too, Mike. Thanks for calling. Sorry, Mike. You know, some people come after me for not answering questions that people uh, that call in and have. And I do believe that I don't appreciate enough how hard it is to get on the show. Okay? Because mm -hmm. I literally view the callers as if they're sitting just in the room. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, listen, you're in the room now. All right? In this particular room, it does feel like at any given moment, Anybody can get it. So sometimes a caller gets in there, but we do appreciate the callers. I'd like to let that be. Just like this chair company. I appreciate the chair. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But fucking enough. Please. Enough's enough. You've been trying to get six more lines for 18 months to help out the callers. Which, by the way, I do believe when we move into Jesus' old house, mm -hmm. the church, I do believe it's coming with like really? 12 lines Here or something. Here we go. Like go. More oh, phones oh, oh, oh. in the house of the Lord. Yeah. But how many desks? House. <laughs> X house. What's that? But how many desks? <laughs> oh, too many, dude. Also, if you're an architect <laughs> and you would like to send... Yeah, uh, listen, here. enough with the chairs. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go with some architects. We have this new office that we purchased. We had to go, I had to go into a city council meeting to get a zoning variance passed. And zoning means that a building is allocated to do a certain thing, residential. Uh, if it's a church, I believe it's like a philanthropic something. You get it. And then if it's a commercial business or whatever, and then there's different levels of that whole thing. So they, I had to go to a city council uh, meeting to get a variance on a zoning that I can purchase uh, the church and they can change the zoning only for me. If I'm to sell it, though, has to go back into a city council yeah. meeting, has yeah. to get okayed by everybody, if that makes sense or whatever. But now, since that all passed, and by the way, when I when I decided to buy said place, I did not know all that was going to happen. I, I, I thought oppose. This, I thought it was, by the way, I oppose. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smothers does not like that we're moving in. I think he will <laughs> like us as neighbors, though, as we go forward. Oh, yes, yeah. We are a pretty quiet group. Actually, we don't want anybody. We have a we, gaming chair for him, too. Uh, we have chairs for him. <laughs> yeah. We have desks for him. <laughs> He's going to build it. We have grill. all this, okay? And, and as it goes on, I think it'll be good. But I didn't know all this was going to happen. But now, since we, we did get the the zoning variance passed. Yeah. We are officially the owners of this property. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. So now, now we have to like figure out how to build it. what to do with it. Yeah. You know, like this it, is like, like uh, this is one of those things where, for instance, I announced I was doing a stand-up comedy show. First time I was going to get on a stage really with a set. It sold out. And then I was like, okay, so now I have to, have to do it. <laughs> now I have to do it. And I have to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do up there. This particular thing we buy, this massive property, okay? Now we have to figure out how to set it up and take advantage of the entire place. Very cool building, round building. We need the studio, by the way. Yeah. Want the studio to be able to open up for a potential live audience because Ooh. we have enough space for that. Would also like a full basketball court in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Need a green screen room, need a weight room, mm -hmm. okay? Need the kitchen area needs to be turned into a cafe a little yeah. bit. <laughs> we need to create maybe the greatest office of all time because we spend a lot of time in this office. Yes, you do. We appreciate appreciate the opportunity to do what we do and if we got this zoning variance and i'm probably going to be in this place for a while five ten years or something like that we might as well make it as cool as possible with that being said like tetris yeah you see the things fall and then you got to shape them and put them in there yep. and most people pretty good at tetris I, I ain't got it when it comes to looking yeah. at buildings I, I looked at that space the blueprints the official blueprints and I have no fucking idea how we're supposed to decorate that place or set that place up at all. At all. I have no idea. And that's going to take a while, I think, to figure out at this point. That's yeah. why you pay people to do it. Yeah. You know? There's professionals. From the YouTube chat, someone said, uh, why don't we call Andrew Luck? He's an architect. I was people thinking that. that. Oh, shit. Well, it's already built, though, right? We need more of a decorator. 
No, no, no. We need an arc. No, we need an arc because there's going to have to build a fair amount of walls. You're going to have to add walls because oh. right, right now it's just one big dome. It almost yeah. looks like the old igloo in Pittsburgh where the Penguins used to play at. Really? That's literally what it looks like. And right on the yeah. top, by the way, massive cross. Yeah. Ooh. We're talking big time display of what's going. And I don't know what to do with that. Okay, that's going to have to be something that we kind of talk through going forward because mm-hmm. it is very noticeable from the street. If we just get somebody up there and just starts, ah, ah, like, what do we do? Okay, that looks terrible. We got to figure out how to do the whole cross on top of yeah. the thing, the taking of that. Is the Savior on the cross? Well, no. not anymore, you see, because he, at some point. He packed his bags and left. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, just throwing Tebow's face up there. Just keep that thing oh. up there. <laughs> And we leave it as protection. Could you imagine how mad Smothers would be if we put Tim uh-huh. Tebow up there on that thing? <laughs> Who's the quarterback of all time? Let's go to Andrew in Tampa. Andrew, what's going on down there in Champa Bay? Man, I'm going to tell you what, it's hard not to have an eight-pack of beer in the back of your car. Let's just say that for starters. Well, yeah. Um, don't, don't, hell don't yeah, drive. man. Uh, I was on the road, I say, uh, appreciate everything you guys have done, man. Uh, last couple of months have been kind of shitty personally. Uh, tune into your guys' show for a while now, and uh, for three hours a day, man, I'll tell you what, you definitely make up for the rest of the 21 hours, so thank you guys very much for that. Andrew, um, we, ap- we appreciate the opportunity, Andrew. We're lucky to do it. Thanks for rocking with us. Uh, and hey, let's keep this thing going. Hey, let's keep this thing going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are you about, doing? Brother? Keep it moving, baby. It's how you that doing? Simple. That's how we're living it by. Um, Bingo. Hi. How you guys feel about Joe Barry? That schmutz. How, like, come on, man. Joe Barry? <laughs> That's yeah. D coordinator for the Packers. I agree. I said it yesterday. I mean, you know, they're helping Rodgers out. Let's bring in the guy who was the D coordinator of the 0 16 Lions. You look at his track record it's as a D good. coordinator. I think the high, at the highest his defense has been ranked is like 28th. You look at the wrong <laughs> way, though. <laughs> 28th. Yeah. It, I think it was, oh, like, it was like, there's 32 teams in the NFL. Yeah, I believe he was like 28, 29, 30, 32. I don't think he's been great in the past. But, hey, guess what? You know, if he's going to be a leader of men, that's what we need. There's it, only room to improve, though. It certainly does not look like they have knocked it out of the park with this one, but we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> Got the Adam Gase of defense. Where'd they hire him from? Uh, he was the Rams associate head coach. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Cup of coffee with McVay. Here we go. Get a gig. What's going on, Diggs? Uh, his ranks, uh, as far as yards given up for a defense, were 32nd, 32nd, 28th, and 28th. Yeah. Also, we didn't talk about how the Packers got turned. <laughs> yes, not so I was right around. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. God. They got turned down by Wisconsin's defense coordinator who yeah. said, nah, I'll stay here at Wisconsin. The University of Wisconsin mm-hmm. <laughs> for the Green Bay Packers, which, by the way, I believe is a religion in Wisconsin, right? Mm-hmm. He's... Not great, right? Not Wisconsin. Good. Oh, they got their quarterback hurt or COVID for four weeks or whatever. Yeah. So they didn't really have a chance. Wisconsin's normally good. He gets offered the gig and he says no. Oh Lord. Is it a bad time to be a Green Bay Packer? Are they are they just going to the bottom of the barrel? Are they just reaching down the bottom of the barrel? Whoever we can get in here, let's get them in here because we got Aaron Rodgers. We're gonna win games regardless. What the fuck is going on in Green Bay, Ty? It's hard to be a fan of this team. Well, I as mean, I'm wearing a yeah. Chargers <laughs> in Indianapolis. I mean, it's Evans. no it's no surprise. They do this bullshit all the time. The defense has stunk for ten years. I mean, what what do you want? You know, yeah, maybe this guy will knock it out of the park. <laughs> Newsflash, he probably won't. It certainly appears that he stinks at his job and has every time he's been given an opportunity. But, hey, who knows? Maybe we'll get, you know, hey, a couple pieces. Good uh, guy. Yeah, I mean, otherwise it's the same deal. Get, the, the offense got to score 50 points a game next year. Like they do every fucking year. Hey, we're going to say it, though. Probably a good guy. Probably a good guy. Yeah. Probably a nice guy. I'm sure he's a nice guy. He very clearly stinks at his job. Let's go to Cameron. <laughs> Cameron in Virginia. Cameron, what's going on? It might be. What? Oh, Pat, long time listener. Second Can't time caller, going. man. It's my fucking birthday today. Happy birthday, Cameron. Right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, man. What do you want to talk about? A big fan of this show. I watch the show all the time. Like, I got my own radio station, uh, show here on, on, at, in college. I'm a big fan of you. But what I want to talk about is. For the next, like, show? three to four years, are the Steelers going to suck? Like, I'm very terrified. Like, they don't have a quarterback and at all. Ben needs to get out of there. Whoa. Are they going to suck for a while? 
Cameron, Virginia. We appreciate you. I wonder what school he goes to. Could have got a plug in there for your show, by the way. That'll probably come. Or maybe not. I mean, I, I rarely do it there. The think, and thanks for calling and listening. The thought of the Steelers going all in around Ben Roethlisberger, just like Tampa Bay went all in around Tom Brady or something like that, is something that Steelers fans should think about here because the future, what, Mason Rudolph? Nope. No, no way. Darnold, potentially, I guess, if you guys are going to make a big trade. Dewey. Dewey. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dewey. Dwayne Haskins. Dewey. Yeah. Possibly. Mm. Hey, possibly. But they're not wasting any money bringing in Dwayne Haskins in. They're still going to go with Ben, right? Like, that's the thought is here. We're going to go with Ben. Ben's going to be our guy. We're bringing in a new offense, which is interesting at this age. But Tom Brady did this just a year ago. We'll try to go ahead and win one for Ben as opposed to push Ben out. Is that the mindset? Ben is most likely going to be the quarterback moving forward, at least for next season. They are meeting this week to make sure that can happen with the contract because you can't pay him what he's making, supposed to make next year. So as long as they can get the contract figured out, Ben will be back, and yes, Ben is the best option for next year because there is no one else. Let's go. One last call here before we get to a break, which we have missed, I guess, dearly here. Phil in Philly. What's going on, Philly? Hey, Pat, what's up? Hey, just hanging out. Good to hear from you again, Philly. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. You probably missed it. You probably missed this yesterday, but did you see see the guy, the – the CEO of DraftKings asking for a hundred thousand retweets for a hundred dollars yesterday. What? <laughs> <laughs> Is that real? It just happened. Philly from Philly. What a human. What a fucking human Philly from Philly is. Um, yeah, very interesting. We did see this. Okay, so mm-hmm. uh, DraftKings CEO. Here it is. Yeah. So we had it in the chamber, Philly from Philly. Just want to. We were potentially going to talk about it because we did see it. Um, but if it came up, it came up, you know, kind of an interesting. So Jason Robbins, who's the CEO of DraftKings. Okay. I did not know who Jason Robbins was before said tweet. Nope. And to be honest, this is quite an introduction to Jason Robbins. Okay. Everybody knows we gamble with FanDuel, but we very much understand that there are plenty of powerhouses that are going to be in the sportsbook game. We think FanDuel is the most fun. They help us out with boosts. They have the great tech app, convenient, most bets, everything like that. But we do have, I have a lot of respect for the other sportsbooks as well, because this is only going to grow, you would assume, (laughs) Mm -hmm. than shrinking like that. So you got to do what you got to do. Jason Robbins, CEO of DraftKings, had quite a... Quite a moment on the internet there. He puts out a tweet. If I get 100,000 retweets, okay? So I think maybe he added an extra zero or something like that. As somebody who has been, I've been on Twitter a long time now, okay? I I love Twitter. It's my favorite thing at all. Maybe he meant 10,000 retweets or whatever here. And maybe it was just, uh, you know, this. If I get 100,000 retweets of this, I'll select one random person who retweeted it for a free hundred bucks credit on DraftKings, okay? I don't know if Jason Robbins meant to slap Twitter right in the mouth, but that's kind of what he did right there. You got people, uh, like, I think Jason Robbins, if he meant to put 100,000 in there, even 10,000, even Mm 1,000 retweets for $100, you have somebody who has, I I think, no respect for the people of Twitter. Mm -hmm. You got people giving away hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that can't get 5,000 retweets. The fact that Jason Robbins is just like, oh, yeah, give away 100 bucks site credit, 100,000 retweets. Like, that is an enormous miscalculation on how Twitter works. So much so that a $100 site credit, uh, 100,000 retweets became 2,000 retweets, he says. In fact, I'll pick a winner (laughs) for every 2,000 retweets. Example, he says, example, e.g., if we hit 6,000, I'll pick three winners. Okay, you get it? Ooh. So every 2,000 retweets, I'll pick a $100 winner. We'll count all retweets up to kickoff tonight. Okay, this is Super Bowl day, hot time on the internet. And by the way, it, it didn't, he said, keep it going. Still need a little over 1,500 more. Okay, so you're looking for 2,000, need 1,500 more. Okay, so less than 400 people or whatever. I think it's at 660 some, 669 retweets right now or whatever. I just think that somebody that doesn't fully understand what Twitter is and how it operates and and thinks that they just they do or whatever. And this is not Jason Robbins' fault. Okay, this is an entire 
uh, maybe group of humans that are in some positions of power in a lot of different places that, you know, they, they're being forced now into dabbling on the Internet. And uh, there's a lot of people that have been on the Internet a long time, a long, long time. Yeah. And the people that have been on the Internet for a long time that profit off the Internet, I think those particular people that don't understand the Internet need to start having a lot more respect for those motherfuckers. OK, there's a lot of OGs on the Internet that have made a lot of money that are a lot smarter than a lot of these old motherfuckers that are getting into the internet world. And it is fantastic. And I'm not saying me at all, by the way. I am not putting, I have had the pleasure and luxury of learning from people that have already gone through the uh, quest west for the gold uh, back in the day. There's already people that have gone through the internet business that I could watch. I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm talking about the people that get the internet that are basically gonna be in charge of all businesses going forward. Mm -hmm. And then you got that other group that thinks they get it and they're trying to learn it and they have no fucking idea. 100,000 retweets for a $100 site credit is just the biggest slap in the mouth to the internet and he had no idea. He had no idea. Drops it down to 2,000, drops it down. At that point, bud, you've already lost. You might as well just hung it up yep. and just moved on for a new contest with a better thing. That's the way the internet operates. And it's, it's kind of fascinating to watch the business side of this whole thing unfold with the internet and how everybody now wants to be on the internet. Well, you should have responded too, like, ha just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I got hacked. Yeah. I got hacked. Yeah. 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 I got exactly. hacked. <laughs> Double down, triple down. I do like the Philly from Philly, though, wanted to stir the pot there a little bit. Only 1,500 more. And by the way, DraftKings guy isn't the only guy that has done this. No. There's a lot of people that have attempted things that are as egregious, but just in different uh, avenues or whatever. It is fucking hard to get 100,000. It is rare. It is very, very. It's That is hallowed ground up yeah, there. Yes. I, I mean, it is. That is insane. I don't even think he could have offered up $100,000 in site credit to get 100,000 retweets. And I think because then you're relying strictly on people that are in states that can use DraftKings yeah. to retweet that <laughs> and nobody else. 100,000 retweets is mass. It might have had to have been a million dollars. Yeah. To get anybody to move on that. Because as soon as somebody sees it, ah, fuck that. All right. We got $100 site credit, 100,000 retweets. What a go here. You know, yeah, yeah, I'll just fucking, I'll go ahead and push your entire narrative for a hundred bucks site credit, possibly <laughs> one out of 100,000 people. Like what a wild, wild thing to be like, nailed it. This will work. How quickly do you think he was like, oh, oh my fuck, God, oh, I've fuck. made a massive mistake. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh I assumed he, he's just get, he was getting kicked in the shins and taking it on the teeth in the comments too. By the way, and we said, I said this earlier, but I would like, he's not the only one, right? I mean, no. this is, there's a lot of businesses that are having this happen at mm -hmm. different levels. You know what I mean? This is, and we happen to, because we are in the business a little bit, we get a chance to kind of witness it. And it's like, Oh, you're a bunch of stooges. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you guys don't even know you're losing right now. You have no idea. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Give a hundred dollars away, get a hundred thousand retweets. This fucking internet's easy. It's the day of the game, too. It's like, dude, <laughs> dude maybe do it last Sunday. And what see if, if I get a hundred thousand in a week? <laughs> like you're trying to get a hundred thousand retweets in six hours? Up until kickoff. <laughs> yeah. The but, comment section on this tweet is fucking hysterical. Oh, I could oh, fathom the hysterical. internet was relentless with that guy. I oh assume. my god, ruthless. I bet. Did the stock move at all? I don't know much about the stock market, but I do know, for instance, if Elon does something awesome, uh, Tesla goes up, right? Yep, That's yep, what happens. Yep. If Portnoy does something awesome, Penn goes up, right? That's how this whole thing. If their CEO of DraftKings puts out, I need 100,000 retweets for $100, does the stock go down? Because that would be a fair market then. And if, yeah. we're, if we're not in a fair market, we need to start taking advantage of numbers only going up, it seems like, for a certain group of people. By the way, Elon Musk, 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. Hmm. Oh my God. He's our resident alien. If he's doing things, we got to think about it. Got to think about it. Dead. I don't know. He's, huh? still, he's still doing the same with that. He's in both. Uh, okay. What, Doge? Okay. No, I think what happened with the Doge thing was I think he was dabbling in Doge to see if he could control markets like he could. And as soon as he said, yeah, he's like, okay, now I'll go to the one that has, you know, a little bit more profit upside yeah. as opposed to the six, seven cents. But Doge is still going to the moon. I mean, no, <laughs> hey. Just because Elon has moved his efforts to Bit, uh, Bitcoin, mm -hmm. that does not mean that the Doge community, the Doge hounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> one, has, one has a lot more upside than the other. 
Which one? Doge. I mean, if you put $100 in Doge, it's much different than putting $100 in Bitcoin. Well, because where Bitcoin's currently sitting at? Correct. And many would say Doge is at its highest as well, though. No. Yeah, that's no. literally what everybody is. No. Elon would say different. <laughs> Let's get to a break. The internet is an awesome place right now. I mean, it is yeah. a fantastic place right now. You got things popping off in the uh, economics world. Mm -hmm. You got uh, quarterbacks moving out yep. of town. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got shit popping off everywhere. You got a hundred thousand retweets for a hundred bucks somewhere. Yeah. You should have just committed to it and spent like a million bucks on fake retweets. Just a bunch of fake accounts retweeting. He probably didn't even know. Didn't know. Unaware of them. Yeah. Probably, good there was probably the next day, maybe as the game was kicking off, somebody in the company was like, you know, we could have, it would have cost us a little bit, but we, we could have got those. Could have got that thing up there. <laughs> now, it will eventually come out that we did that. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be tough to swallow, but we'll get past this current fire if we would like to do so. On the positive side, hey, got to keep that hundred bucks. That's right. That's good yeah. for him. That's right. Hey, it's hard. The internet is not an easy place. Mm -mm. You got to be very committed to the internet, which is why I respect the internet, because you have to earn it on the internet. Mm -hmm. That is something that everybody bashes the internet, but on the internet, you have to earn it. It's not like, uh, hey, you'll be handed this. No handouts. You, ha you have to earn it every day, because every day is basically a year on the internet. Mm -hmm. Success is rented. Whoa. Not owned. Uh-uh. And Good. payments due every single day. That's right. JJ yeah. Watt. Let's get to a break. <laughs> Answer some calls on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show. You have got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was, like, watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I've ever been a part of was... Uh... You know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant, which I'm in right now. And, uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> and I looked, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> And I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, yeah. It's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell a straight <laughs> ass cheeks when they come in there. Like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple uh you know, uh, dope fiends that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, hey, man, check it out. So you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help you help us, we help you. You feel me? And, you know, we put together a little, uh, well, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win-win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your hey, former you know, teammates. Hey, hey. Yeah, hey, everybody wants you helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a <laughs> line of questioning. The line of questioning. His name was Willie. Owned up. Willie, Willie. Willie owned up to. Matter of fact, he just he just left out. He's saying sweeping up. He like, hey, what's up? Oh boy, I've been looking for you. You saying? Okay. Yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the uh, restaurant to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs>
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Shout out to the conversation we were just having, by the way, before we went into break for the small regional show thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, true. Yep. This is Marty Vix, okay? So don't ever get that. I don't want to, you know, broad brush paint here, but Babani, Mm -hmm. he had pyro last night on Monday Night Raw. Really? His entrance. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. This might be Don Omar's brother. Who, this guy? Yeah. Who's Don Don Omar? Yeah. Is that a Bruno Mars' brother? <laughs> it could be, yeah. Donald. <laughs> you Don. might know him from the Fast and Furious uh, movies. Okay. Got it. Marty Vicks crushes it, though. Yeah, yeah. This song's called Manakee. What What's the hell that are you talking about? <laughs> Don Omar is in the Fast and Furious movies. I don't... I've. By the way, I tried to watch it. Which one? Fast and Furious. Oh, yeah. The first one. Yep. Okay. You didn't like it. First scene. Yeah. Too much. I'm out. Come on. Really? What do you mean? Can't do it. First Paul Yellowstone and now Fast and you Furious. You can't knock on the Fast scenes? and Furious. Listen, I just feel like as soon as I see the first scene, I'm like, ah, well, I'm out. Granted, it's a little dated now. It I mean, when dated. you found out, we told you they were fucking hijacking trucks with DVD players. <laughs> <laughs> I, you, I did <laughs> not know that was for DVDs. Oh, I yeah. thought that was obviously for drugs. No, no. That was like Bitcoin DVD back players. in the day, though. Yeah. No, they're good guys. They okay, so. Drugs. All right, so that makes a lot more sense that it was DVDs and not drugs. Because I kept thinking, why is everybody so... This is a ridiculous cast of characters here for this, Mm -hmm. for all this drugs I can't buy. It wasn't for drugs, it was for DVDs. Mm -hmm. That did turn my mind around. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. You're right, I completely forgot about that. What was the first scene of The Sinner, if it grabbed you that good, that you just kept watching? Uh, Was it just a sciatica scene? I might have missed it. I might have missed it, to be honest. (laughs) I might have. I might have been somewhere else. Came in post intro. Yeah, yeah. I might have caught some other scene that was like, "Oh, this is kind of pretty good." You're unbelievable, and you call <laughs> us negative. Listen to you. Oh, I can't watch this. This is crap. The billions guy was getting what peed and wax yeah. on him. Mm-hmm. There's no way one. I could get. Yeah. I'm like, all right. I already know you and I are not gonna. This is not what I'm. I'm not here to see this. Yeah. All right. I don't want to. You trip, do your trip, thing, trip. dude. Do whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm cool with it. Not gonna make this is not gonna be in my rotation. Everybody's like, need to see it. It's awesome. Watch it. Blah blah blah. Can't do it. Fucking House of Cards murders a dog in yeah. the first scene or whatever. Yeah. And if I wasn't fresh out of a surgery where I was literally not allowed to leave my bed, yeah. I probably would have left that one. But I loved it. Okay. So I understand I'm a bit hypocritical here, but it's hard for me to commit time that I don't have a lot of to a series that I think is gonna stink immediately upon seeing the first opening scene, like Yellowstone, for instance. Shot a horse in the head, Saved. Yep, then move forward. What's that, Dick? Saved a horse. Ride a cowboy. <laughs> right. Much different vibes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Both of those situations there. Let's get to a phone call here before we get rich? out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good pull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder if <laughs> shit went down when that song went up. How does he get that? By the way, that was my like no first more. country song that oh, yeah. I got into as well. It's that a was, good song. It is. Man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, good music video. You think they ever played that song in Cracker Barrel? Oh, <laughs> no. I hope well, not. I would guess well, if they Big did, and Rich Big and performed <laughs> at a couple Cracker Barrels. Oh, Barrel. don't do but that. Big and Rich did not know. They did not no, do no, that. No, no, Just no, like no, the rest no. of the world did not know. And then as soon as you find out, you go, oh, my. How could I miss that? Holy shit. Can't do it. <sighs> Can't do that it. That hash brown casserole is so good, but it's going to be gone. It stinks. It's dead. Yeah. By the way, should have been dead probably a long time. Yeah. They were probably mm-hmm. sitting there like, we got no shot. And then they just kept going. It's like, Whoa. how have we not found out? that? Yes, the right. internet, by the way, has turned out. over some stones, by the way, about Cracker Barrel. Yeah, yeah. they got them. It is. Can't believe it. 
can't believe this long. Fast and Furious, it. though, there are nine movies. You gotta, you know, reinvest some time. Well, are you yeah. going back to fucking Fast and Furious? <laughs> the reason why we're talking about it. that is because he made a reference about it that I did not know, and then Nick had to call out the bullshit on, which is kind of the upside of the show is we got a lot. What of was different... the bullshit? Exactly. You nope. see, you didn't even know you got called out, and then now you're still you love this movie, huh? Well, I'm just saying, it's there's so, nine man. of them. You got to give them a chance. You can't just quit after one. At least try Fast Five. Yeah. All right, we have to get to a break. AJ Hawk and Mark Schlereth is on the other side. This show is the worst. If you're watching or listening, thank you. There's six minutes from now. We're back. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a man who is an absolute stud, a man who's a Super Bowl champion, a man who has a nickname that when you hear it, you think, oh, that dude's a badass. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shermanator, fullback for the Kansas City Chiefs, Anthony Sherman. Yeah! Yeah! What you chose to do here, Super Bowl week, you're giving away your truck, which looks to be incredibly souped up to raise money and awareness for the human trafficking. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it really wasn't necessarily my idea at first. I had a couple of buddies of mine that decided to figure out a way onto my Twitter account and uh, put, put this up as a prank and then kind of gave me two options. and was like, hey, either you can look one way or you can look the other way. So I just decided that, hey, you know, it is only a truck, so. It really started with Oreo cookies. Who did oh, this I'll to you? Me. How did this work out? And how are Oreo cookies involved in this entire thing? About maybe a month ago, I took cookies down to Fort Scott, Kansas, and dumped about 12,000 Oreo cookies in Adam LaRoche's uh, Raptor in, through the sunroof. This is Adam LaRoche, baseball player. The baseball player, yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that LaRoche, in response to the 12,000 Oreos you dumped into his truck via sunroof. Opened each package and then dumped them into the sunroof. <laughs> and here we are, Super Bowl week. He set up an entire website that is functional right now. It's, I think it's up to 50 some thousand dollars wow. is currently being raised for this. Uh, I'm it's glad like, you told me that because I, he, I, he won't tell me. <laughs> and I came back from practice on Saturday morning with a culprit running over and going, hey, Adam wants me to show you this. And it's this whole long video of him telling me what he did. And he goes, well, by the time you see this video, there's probably 30 million people that have seen this tweet. <laughs> and you don't have many options. I was more caught off guard on how he was able to figure it away into my Twitter. It's not just Adam, mind you, either. Who else? Matt Light is involved. Former Patriots offensive lineman. Yeah, the guy that I used to grow up watching on television every week from being from North Attleboro. Yeah, that guy that I had never met before in my life. But he decided to get on board with Adam. And he's been on all these radio shows and, and talking about how great I am. And it's been a prank from day one, but I'm all on board now. And I hope it raises a ton of money and, and I'm giving my truck away February 19th. How did they get in there, you think? Did Adam have your password, you think? He knows a lot of people. And he's got some high up hackers, I believe. <laughs> Whoa. That, that Whoa. Hacked into my Twitter account. You think that Adam's high up friends legitimately hacked into your phone and did this thing? That's what I believe. Now, it could very well fall into Colquitt. Well, speaking of, funny you say that. Joining us right now, ladies and gentlemen, Dustin Colquitt. Yeah! yeah! There you go. Buddy! <laughs> He said he will not prank Adam LaRoche ever again because he has too many friends too high up that hacked into his phone and did this entire thing alongside the help of Matt Light. Do you have any more information that you can kind of reveal about this well-executed prank? I think who did it, who did the hack, was uh, JNC Firewall, is this company that Adam told me about. Mm. So for the long snapper, uh, J, which is the JNC, James and Colquitt, uh, took up over the prank, got into Anthony Sherman's phone on a series of Monday nights uh, when we were hanging out, got the code, kept <laughs> running it every time they'd be out of practice. We were making sure that we had the correct numbers. He never changed it. It was very consistent, so we got in it. We uh, got into his Twitter account, hit send. The At that point, I had already seen that you you tweeted something out about it, so I'm like, oh, this is a lost cause. This is, this is, this is, I'm just, Not just me, so by the way. Tabo, Tim Tabo. Yeah. Big names were sending this out. They yeah. were like, what a yeah. hero. James Winchester hanging out at Sherm's house, acted like his phone died, so he needed Sherm's phone. 
Sherm through the phone. It was not on. So he said, Sherm, I, I need to call her back. Give me the code. He spit it out and boom. <laughs> <laughs> James Winchester is Danny Ocean. Yeah. And the real hero of this whole thing, the Shermanator, is doing a great thing to raise a lot of money for human trafficking awareness and to end that whole thing. What a hero you are. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you, sir. You wanted that truck forever, huh? I wanted it forever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, tonight, you in the red, you in the blue. I hate you both, and fuck you too. Before I leave here, I'm knocking all you out. Cheers. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You too. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Bang. And I'm out. Give me out. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. I don't know how we would tie me to golf if we were to do that certain thing, but hour three of this particular show is about to begin, and it's going to be good. Woo. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. Joining us right now is a college national champion and a Super Bowl what? champion, Mr. AJ Hawk. Yeah. How you doing, AJ? Doing good. Is uh, Schlereth coming on? Yeah, old Stink will be joining us here in a couple moments here. Whenever we run the opening video package, we have to end video package, then FaceTime third guest due to lack of computers or plugins into the uh, studio thing. I can figure it out. Which will be changing, by the way, whenever we move into the church. Shout out to the architects who have already sent over their plans or ideas yeah. for how they would design the new office. Isn't Miss Hawk an architect? Interior designer, right? Oh, yeah. I'll bring her in for cleanup then. Fix it all up. Ka so you got it? You officially got the building? Yeah, we got it, dude. Got the keys. Wait, stick around. Got the keys. It's, hey, uh, what's, with, uh, what's with the pizza up by the date? National Pizza Day. Oh, it's, yeah, it's National Pizza Day. That is interesting, though, because... Get your mind out of the gutter, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> there will be people. There has been already. Oh, yeah. First thought. Zeet. Can we not clarify a little bit? Zeet. <laughs> it's off. <laughs> Jeez, Even the worse. Internet. Now it's worse. Now it's worse. What do yeah. I do? Took it off towards the end of the show. This is pre-204. <laughs> yeah. This is post-204 Eastern Standard. It's back up. It's back up. By the way, I'm, I'm already getting people saying I got two tweets this morning. Really? No, no. Say what? Oh, good Lord. Way to go, Zeet. I, I would love like to pizza. say it is National Pizza Day. Hell oh, yeah. Yeah. We had pizza earlier. Put some pepperoni on that. Thank and you. chili, by the way. And we had some chili on the side. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, a man <laughs> who has his own line of chili that is fantastic. Oh, yeah, the best. Stinking good. Have some in the office either right now or we just finished it. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl champ, pro bowler, member of the Broncos' 50th anniversary team, Mark Schlatter. Yeah. Yeah, you know, always good to be with you guys, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, great year you had this yeah. year. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. 
I think you committed a lot, obviously, with the COVID protocols. I thought you called great games this year. Every time you came on our show, you delivered. I appreciate hell of a season by you. You know, I'm not sure you can win any more Super Bowls in this world, but I think this year you had the team that could do it. You had a hell of a fucking run here, Mark. Well, I appreciate that. I tell you what, you know, somebody asked me about uh, broadcasting games in the NFL this year, and in all its imperfection, I thought the season was perfect. Um, mm. I can't tell you how, like, just have my parents reach out to me on, on Sundays or after the games on Mondays and say, man, you know how what it means for us to just be able to kind of hang out and watch football and, uh, and make that appointment television. It's such a fabric of what we do in this country, sports in general, but especially the National Football League. And uh, to get through this season, the way they got through this season, to just kind of muscle through it. I mean, I broadcast a game that didn't have any coaches. I broadcast a game that didn't have any quarterbacks. <laughs> and I broadcast a game that didn't have any running backs. And it was still perfect. I loved every second of it. So uh, I was just happy to be a part of it. Hey, speaking of your parents, are, do they uh, give you like constructive criticism on your broadcast <laughs> on how you do? And like, were they like that as when you were playing too? No, my parents don't know shit about football. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they really, they really don't. They, uh, they, they're just fans of their son, you know. So they were just happy to be, you know. They're always like, "Oh, I thought you were great," you know. It doesn't matter what I did. I get four holding calls, and you know, I would have been great. So uh, they don't, they don't care, and they really don't know anything. About it. <laughs> so, yeah, they don't. Well, that's fantastic to hear. Yeah. Uh, congrats on the success. It seems like you kind of had to do it all on your own in football. <laughs> so without them knowing anything, unbelievable what you were able to accomplish at this point. Uh, speaking of accomplishing, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady, obviously. But as an offensive lineman, you have to like the fact that it was the run game that really changed Tampa's year, I think. You know what I mean? The ability, even in this pass-happy football season that we had, the NFL that we live in, which is much different because of the rules if it's not for playoff Lenny if it's not for Ronald Jones that Tampa Bay Bucket in that Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line we're talking about a whole different world aren't we yeah you know it's what's interesting is I think you can go through the entirety of the playoffs and um to me if you dominate the line of scrimmage both offensive line wise and defense and defensive front seven you're gonna win um that's just the way this league is constructed and as much as we try to deconstruct that and make it about something that it's not you show me the teams that are the toughest teams. You show me the teams that physically put a whoop ass on the other team, and I'll show you the team that's going to win. Right. Um, and and I tell you what, throughout the entirety of the playoffs, it was that way. I thought the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did a great job. They're a pretty simple running game. If you ask Bruce Arians, he'll tell you, hey, we'll run 22 duo 15 times, you know, and it's about our back having a choice to go either inside or bounce outside and make that corner get involved, make that corner tackle. And you saw them do that. I bet you I bet you 70% of the passes thrown by Tampa Bay were off of play action stuff. And when you have that kind of when you have that kind of um, just that kind of just precision in your running game and everything that matches off your running game in play action basically basically, you know, meshes well. Uh, it's amazing how successful you can be as an offense and, and obviously they were exceptionally um, exceptionally uh, successful with Tom Brady going 21 to 29 for, you know, three touchdowns and only 200 yards. But um, damn, when you, when you're running it like that, good things are going to happen to you. Hey, what do you think uh, Kansas city's offense could have done? Like what kind of adjustments could they have tried to make? They couldn't, they couldn't block a four man rush. Could they try to run out of it and try to you know get, get him into one high safety? Like what could, what could adjustments yeah. would have worked? Well, I, you know what? We always, we always had that, that feeling when I was in Denver, AJ, it was always, Hey, if they're going to play us in too high, we're just going to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> like if they're going to play it. And, and in the second half, I mean, that's all they did. They were basically saying, Hey, we got the lead on you. We'll trade. You know, we'll we'll allow you to run it. You know, you want to put an eight nine play drive together and, and score a touchdown. And ultimately, to me, you're down twenty one six or whatever it was at halftime. Um, ultimately, you're not out of that game, and you've got to match physicality with physicality. And if they're going to allow you to run it, and they did, they allowed you to run. They invited you to run it, and it was almost football hubris. It was almost like, hey man, we've won the way we've won. Um, throughout the entirety of the last couple of years, and we're not going to take what you're giving us. We're basically going to continue to try to throw it over the top. And I, I tell you, when you watch Tampa's defense, and I've gone back to the coaches' cat tape watching them, um, they were more versatile or more multiple than I thought they would be in coverage. Um, so they, they did a lot of different things during the course of that game. But I think the biggest thing, A.J., and you'd be better at, at explaining this than I would, 
you know, when you start to be able to expand your drop, so a hook drop guy, you know, he's he's eight to twelve yards deep outside the you know outside the hash type of thing, and when you start to expand that and take throws away from a quarterback, what you saw consistently was um, Patrick Mahomes, you know, hitch on that first one and knowing. Gosh, if I throw the flat, you know what? It's going to be a one-yard gain. So let me hitch, pull the ball back, and now all of a sudden that pass rush has gotten there. So I thought the Kansas City Chiefs did a really poor job of supporting their quarterback, a really poor job of supporting a uh, hodgepodge offensive line, and um, ultimately the end result is you got your ass whipped. Do you think Patrick Mahomes, after what, 22 rushes or, or 22 hurries or something like that uh, after the Super Bowl, do you think he'll potentially come out and say – He's not happy with how he's being treated oh, at the yeah. Chiefs with the uh, protection. You know, it is alleged now that Russell Wilson's team has come out and said that they are not thrilled with the way the Seattle Seahawks have protected Russell. Uh, we're all in this together, okay? We're all trying to make money off of Russell, okay? We, we do not appreciate how the Seahawks have protected Russell Wilson, which means that's a direct shot at the offensive line. If Russell Wilson doesn't get traded, I, ho- I don't know how he and the offensive line, you know, hopefully that there's probably some awkward conversations that will take place. And if he does get traded, that would be insane if Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson get traded in the same offseason, even though both seem very least likely of uh, outcomes that are likely. You get it. Yeah. I Listen, in regards to protection, protection is, is interesting because, you know, I mean, I, I've always said this. Just think about the difference between defensive linemen and offensive linemen. I can whip your ass 65 plays in a row. I give up one second at the end of the game. You had a great game, and I'm shit. Like, that's like <laughs> that's why we're all so paranoid, right? Man, you got grass stains on the back of your jersey, and I'm the one that is talked about as a bad player. So that that's always bothered me about that position, but, you know, I accepted the fact that that's the way it is. Um, ultimately, when it comes to protection, you know, it's easy to see an offensive line give up six sacks, and everybody said, oh, gosh, they, you know, the quarterback's under duress. They were horrible, this, that, and the other. Uh, that, to me, is coaching. And, and mm. the beauty of protection, it really comes down to how well you coach protection. And what I mean by that is I don't care who you are. I mean, think about this. Now. Th- think about the way the league works. Okay, uh, We've all seen it, right? We've seen a corner transition to safety. We've seen a safety transition to outside linebacker. We've seen an outside linebacker transition to inside linebacker. Inside linebacker transition to rush the end. Rush the end transition to uh, uh, defensive tackle. Defensive tackle tra- transition to offensive lineman. O-line, the, the, next, the transition for O-line is fan. You go from <laughs> O-lineman to fan. There is no transition. You don't go to all of a sudden to play defense. That that does not happen. So that's the transition aspect of of what you do as an offensive lineman. So the, the bottom line is we're the worst athletes on the football field. <laughs> that's, that's the way it works. And, you know, prote- so protection comes down to coaching. How well do you coach? So if I drop back 35 times in a game and you don't protect me, you don't allow me to take the passive out of pass protection – I'm going to get my ass kicked. But all of a sudden you say, hey, man, we're going to throw, you know, a couple of smoke screens. We're going to have five three-step drops. And now we're going to run a five-step play action, you know, that's that's off of zero hitches. So you can upkick that. And all of a sudden now I've taken that 35 plays and I've, I've diminished it down to 12 times where I have to hold up. Now all of a sudden I have a chance to have success. Coaching in this league sometimes sucks because guys hey. just say, hey, we want to throw it on every down. And we're going to throw, you hold know, on. five steps with Stink. two hitches. Stink, Pete Carroll actually came out and said that, though. Pete Carroll came out and said that there was philosophical differences between he and Shoddy, and Shoddy was the let Russ cook thing. So I wonder if Russ's team potentially was like, oh, so Pete Carroll has philosophical differences with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson then has philosophical differences with how they protected it, but doesn't it seem like Pete Carroll wants to almost start doing that more with the offense so there isn't as much expectation on him dropping back into pass in the offensive line? having to hold on well i've talked to pete carroll on several different occasions during doing games and saying you know we want to get back to 90s football we want to run it we want to control the line of scrimmage we want to throw play action we want to protect russell wilson because he's such an asset you know one of the things i said in the first broadcast of the season i did atlanta seattle and one of the things i said in the first broadcast was forget about let russ cook you know like let russ simmer 
hey, you can get a great meal in a crock pot. You let it simmer all day long, right? And, you, and there's no chance, no chance of burning that shit, right? I mean, that that to me is what you got to be able to do. Let let him simmer a little bit and make sure at the end of the year we don't have some epic, you know, offensive fall off for crying out loud. Hey, have you ever been a part of a game like when I watched the Super Bowl? I think Pat said a similar thing. Like. I felt like, all right, the Chiefs are going to turn it on eventually. Like, the things can't continue this way. Like, what do you think? Like, what snaps a team out of it? Like, an offense like that is it one big play. And, and did you think the Chiefs were going to snap out of it? Yeah. You know, I kept waiting for them to make a big play. Um, and, and like I said, man, I just thought Tampa was so on point with stretching the defense, uh, getting into passing lanes, understanding, you know, by formation and by motion what the Chiefs were running. Uh, I thought Todd Bowles, uh, the defense coordinator, did a phenomenal job. Like, I've always felt like from the rhythm of an offense. So, uh, as an offensive player, it is hard when you're out of rhythm as an offense to throw yourself back into rhythm. Because, to me, there's no, there's just no physicality to it. Like, you're just sitting back taking the beating. And to me, it was always one of those things when we weren't good offensively or we weren't in sync offensively, we were going to line up and just try to thunder punch you in the mouth. Mm. And and essentially, right because you mouth. know this as well as I do, AJ, I can give up or you can give up as a defense a 70-yard bomb over the top and it's it you know, it's it's bad, you hate it, but you know it is what it is. If if you get a drive where we are just pounding you 6 yards of crack and you know it's coming and we know we're running it and you can't stop them that is demoralizing to a defense. And to me, that's when you make a defense start, you know, nosing, eating on every, you know, uh, biting on every single play action. And that's when you get those big one-on-one plays over the top. So I just I just believe you get yourself back into a rhythm by lining up in two tights, by putting a fullback in the game and saying, all right, you want to, you know, we'll, we'll match you physicality for physicality and see what happens. Put the Shermanator in there and go ahead. That's like the um... – so I played soccer growing up, obviously. Uh, yeah. Pretty good, you know. Pretty good, Mark. Pretty good at the game. Uh, but there'd be days where you have like a like bad touch or something, or you're not you're not passing the ball as well. But you can give effort, right? You can give full right. effort. Like you can still give effort even if you're having. I feel like when it comes to offense, where you're just talking about running the ball is much more like, hey, maybe our timing's off today for whatever our reason. Maybe something's not happening. This is like a this is ground and pound. This is effort football, and then maybe that sparks something. I do believe there's something to that in a lot of things. Let's get back to the basics here, and that's kind of what running the ball is. Right. I mean, I think that I think there is obviously there's a lot of truth to that. The other thing is make people get involved. Like to me, make people get involved in in playing football, as opposed to we always used to say the guys inside, you know, the front seven, the offense. Well, that's that's playing in the concrete. Those guys that play receiver and and out there uh, playing quarterback, those guys play in the water. Make them get involved in the concrete a little bit. Ooh. You know, make a corner, make a couple of tackles. See if you can scramble his brains and then go deep on his butt. You know? <laughs> those those are the things that we always used to talk about. So. Um, I just I believe in that style of football, and I think that style of football still in this day and age of football still wins. It's cyclical. I feel like AJ, go ahead. Oh, I'm just curious about John uh, John Elway. Do you know like what's his new title? What's he going to be doing differently in Denver? Um, I I you know he is I think essentially is a consultant. I I just think he's stepping away from the day to day grind that is you know trying to be a general manager and studying the draft and doing all those things. So he's involved in big decisions, but uh, I think that he has uh, just stepped away from the day-to-day grind, and George Payton has taken over that uh, that aspect. And and frankly, you know, it's time. I mean, it, it just hasn't. Um, this roster is not good enough. It has not. It has not worked out, uh, especially in the last four or five years um, with with the Denver Broncos. So you know, I think it's I think it's one of those things. You step away and say, "Hey, man, I need a fresh set of eyes." It's like a play caller that relinquishes play calling duties in the middle of a game and said, man, I need a fret. My, what I'm calling is not working. Give me a fresh set of eyes. And I've been in that situation. I was in a game in Seattle where Mike Shanahan turned over the clipboard to Gary Kubiak and go, what I'm calling is not working. You take over. <laughs> That's a humbling moment there. Obviously yeah. they made it sound like he got a promotion though, too, through the whole thing, which is kind of nice. I mean, John Elway won a Super Bowl though. 
as an executive, I think he had a hell yeah. of a run. Enjoy his life now, hopefully. Go, yeah. go mm-hmm. enjoy life a little bit, John Elway. Sure. I mean, he's the Duke. He deserves that, right? I mean, he is the Duke of Denver. So, for <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He has car dealerships over there still. Can you go get a car from John Elway? Uh, well, me, no, because, you know, I I, 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 I probably i am too honest on the radio here locally. In Denver. <laughs> oh. you, now, you could get a deal. Me, not so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Stink, you just mentioned uh, scrambled brains, but Brett Favre is actually coming out with a nasal spray to cure CTE. Uh, is that something you're buying or no? How come you didn't help with that project either? What the hell? Well, I mean, I you know, I am one of those guys that believes uh, there's so much faulty research in, in oh. all that. I mean, some of the, some of the smartest and, and greatest men I know played a long time in the National Football League that I have nothing but the utmost respect for. And, and you know, when you're researching something and you don't take into account uh, opiate addictions and alcohol and, and drug addiction and all the other things that go into um, that depression, um, if you put your like one of the things I've always said, it was easy for me to walk away from football because my identity was not being a football player. My identity was being a husband and being a father and being a you know a disciple of Christ. And so I, I looked at those things and like, OK, new, new adventure to me. It, it, I don't care what you do for a living. If you tie in who you are with what you do, when that gets taken away from you, you're going to have you're going to have struggles because it's identity crisis. We're all going to get pink sit, slipped or outsourced or fired or whatever the case may be. And and I never identified as a football player, man. I'm like, I was, I, you know, I played football and I tried to be as good as I could at it. But, it, you know, I was far more I was I, I far more identified with being a little league coach than I did being a football player. Well, I hope that team was good. You know, I hope you guys are throwing middle finger fastballs. Oh, we whipped out there. ass and took names. Now, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking and about. A, and I had, and I'm a, I'm a dick, but I had a sign to hit a kid. Like, we, there's no question. I will throw at a kid. Yeah. Okay. You got to do what you got to do. You got to win a game. You got to move on. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Hey, hey, you got to do what you got to do. Hey, quick question though, because listening to you talk about that. It sounded like that was a, um, you know, a, a passionate subject of yours. Did you almost, because you're offensive lineman for a long time, back in the football era that gets discussed a lot, do you almost take it as like a personal shot almost when people were like, well, football, CT, concussions, brain dead, like that type of, like it almost felt like that. And I've never thought about that from a OG football player's mindset about all basically the narrative around the conversation. Now, I, I think – Brain trauma is a real thing. I think studies, okay, I appreciate that. But I've never thought about it from the standpoint of a player that's like, hey, we're not all – can we talk about this in a different way, you know? Right. Well, I just I just think that there's a lot of research that has been done that comes from um, the narrative of everybody has got – you know, everybody is in trouble. And, you know, I, I think there's enough inside the human brain – and. You know, I've spoke to a lot of different doctors about this. In, inside the human brain, there's enough plasticity and enough connectivity mm. um, to circumvent some of the issues that you do. D- do you injure yourself? Yes. Are we uh, are we recuperative? Absolutely. Mm. And and so that I just I just believe that you know if you're healthy, if you're exercising, if you don't abuse alcohol, if you don't abuse drugs. Um, you know, if your identity isn't in a football play, in being a football player and you don't fall into depression and those things, then I think you have enough, like I said, plasticity and connectivity to overcome some of those things. And I don't think it's ever gets researched like that. I think it, it's it's automatically, you know, you play football. Once you're done playing football, CTE and the trauma of, of, of playing football, you turn into a monster and murder your family. That That's not how it works for 99.9% of us. So I, I just I, I just am offended by the the lack of fair and balanced research, in my opinion, of the way CTE is studied. Well, and that affects, by the way, not only your life, your family's life, whenever they're talking. Like, I watched that movie, and one of my best friends, A.Q. Shipley, right, he is... Yeah. He's depicted in that movie, basically, yeah. it, it, like his position that he was. He was a wedge for a while on the kickoff return. He was a mm-hmm. fullback whenever he was just playing in Arizona. At one point, he's a center. The amount in and, and I told him, I was like, hey, man, I love you. I just want to let you know. That. He was <laughs> like, what are you doing right now? I was like, ah, I just watched concussion. He was like, yeah, I'm not going to watch it, he said, or whatever. And then but that's a real thing that I assume 
family members of NFL players after learning and hearing that they're like, okay, especially the older guys. And you obviously look young and take care of yourself, but it is like talked about as that era of football almost. And before you too, well, but that whole conversation piece, you know? Well, I just think there's a lot more that goes into it that hasn't been looked at. So that that's all I'm saying. It, it bothers me. And like I said, some of the greatest men I know, um, you know, some of the best fathers and husbands I've ever been around played professional football. And so, you know, I don't I don't want to discredit uh, the work they've done and, and what they've been able to do, you know, in their lives. And, and they've overcome it or, or overcome that. And they have, you know, they played for a lot of years. So I just want to be like I said, I just don't think there's a lot of fair and balanced uh, reporting or research that goes into that. So that's all I'm saying. Um, and, you know, I love those guys. And AQ is uh you know, AQ is one of the great guys. He's he's sharp as a tack, and he's built like a keg with legs. You know, <laughs> yeah. just a little round keg. Hey, Super Bowl champion! Hey. Oh yeah, hey. Super you. Bowl hey, champion! Talk about hey, talk about a great signing, right? Oh. Yeah, BA, you want me to come play for you? Yeah, I'll hang out, roll around a little bit. Yeah, I'm in. Oh. <laughs> Good work. Drew Stanton as well. Drew Stanton got mm-hmm. hired, I think, during the playoffs. Yeah. Because he knew the entire offense and everything like that. There was there was a lot of people, you know, that I knew that were like, uh, how can I get down to Tampa right now with what they got going on? And by the way, that's not going to stop, Mark. That's going to continue with Tampa Bay for however long Tom wants to continue to do this thing. That there is no there is no question. And I will I've said it a million times, I'll say it again. The most amazing thing about Tom Brady is, um, to me, is that you're not sated by success. I think your human nature is, like, I, I've always said this. I've never learned anything about myself in the good times um, because I was too busy patting myself on the back. And the bad times is where I learned how tough I could be and, and what I could overcome and all those things. But the <laughs> fact that that guy has won seven championships, been to ten Super Bowls, and he is still as driven as he is. I mean, did you love it when he got in? Uh, I don't know what was said with him and Matthew, but – the fact that oh, I yeah. think you know he went after Matthew. I just I love he's forty three. He's just, yeah he's on a beeline to get in his face. I mean that guy is that guy is something. He is special. Well, so are you, Stink. We appreciate you this season. You were awesome. I hope we continue to talk with you through the off season. Anytime, my friend AJ uh, Pat. Take care of yourselves, man. Always good. And man, I didn't even want to bring up the Shank Pat. That was bad <laughs> for the brand. The Shank was bad for the brand. You know, hey, real quick. Stink, okay? Yeah. Suck up 52-yarder, Butker, 50-some yarder, Pinion pinned him inside the 10 late whenever he had to to bury the game for Tampa. The only thing you want to bring up, huh? The only yeah. thing you want yeah. to talk about. Hey, it's like playing offensive line. <laughs> <laughs> One bad kick and you suck. Hey, that's real. <laughs> and you can't do that in that moment, obviously. No. That, that kid, Your yeah. teammates. Hey, that's a big moment with your team. Like, for instance... As a punter, you only get a certain amount of situations that are big, right? For me, right. I only had – I had one in the Super Bowl backed up before half, just like that, punting to Reggie Bush. Wasn't a great punt. Wasn't a shank, though. Then there was one against Houston. We were up two, I believe, less than a minute left. We were on the three. We got a penalty. We're on the one-and-a-half-yard line. Have to punt that because field goal wins the game for them, right? So I hit an absolute bomb. There's only a couple of those in right. your own end zone in the Super Bowl is one of those moments where it's like, hey, got to make a play here. You know, oh, and that's it's got to it's got to feel like being third and 12 on the one and knowing that if it, it like knowing that I hold on every play anyhow and if I actually get <laughs> caught holding in the end zone it's a two point safety like <laughs> that you want to talk about butt pucker. That is one of the cuz I'm a- grabbing you regardless. I mean, that's just the way I play. So, yeah, that it's got to feel a lot that that's got to be kind of the same right there. Well, that's that's those moments where it's like, all right, need to make a play here. And yeah. uh, Tommy's going to have to live with that. I think he'll get around, hopefully. Or not, there'll be somebody else maybe, uh, but there'll never be another stink. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Schlereth. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, 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 you stink. How about that? You know, just there right there at the end. Mm-hmm. Good jab. How about that punter, dude? How about the shanking? <laughs> now, now, like I said on Twitter, AJ, a lot of people were realizing the importance of the punting position. And on the flip side, Punting position was taking quite a PR kick to the sack while it was all happening. So I didn't really know how to feel about it. AJ, great to see you, pal. How are you? I'm doing well, but it was it was such a big part of the game. I think, yeah, people may they can point to that and you know, it's like you're you're killing punters and kickers, but also at the same time, don't you think they're also it's opening their eyes to like, wow, we really need to play well here on this unit. Oh, 
So on this one play that I've never paid attention to, that it's kind of a calculated turnover or whatever, oh, there's a lot of pretty important shit that's potentially going to happen here. For instance, a block punt, which could happen on every single punt, by the way. Every single one's happening within two seconds. All, all you need is one person to slip or whatever. It's like 80% of the time you lose the game if you get a block punt mm -hmm. or whatever. Then like a uh, uh, field position, you, it, it's going to tell you basically who won the game. And it's just such... One little eight-second, nine-second play that can all go to fucking hell if you let it. Punt return, devastating, momentum-wise, team-wise, everything like that. And until you really like think about it in that fashion, whenever somebody potentially shanks one in a Super Bowl, you really don't realize, you know, why it's normally the first meeting of the day in the first practice period every single time. Yeah, Jim Tressel says punt, the most important play in football. Every time he introduced it, like in our special teams, I mean, and he would run those meetings for punt, too. By the way, Pat McAfee, most exciting play in football, punt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what he said. I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, it is exciting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. oh, he's going to drop it. No. <laughs> oh, fair catch. You know what I mean? There's, there's normally a lot of, uh, you know, normally routine right it seems to be all routine but there are so many tight assholes running around on that field that could potentially blow a game and they don't even know what team they're on because they just made the team maybe a day or two ago i mean it is insanity and uh yeah i mean tommy tonson put a spotlight on that and he's gonna get up he, he's gonna get through it oh okay? yeah tommy's gonna get through it he's gonna work on his holding he's gonna work on his punting you think he'll be with the chiefs i, I don't know I don't know. I mean, that ball he dropped and then picked up, he hit a bomb. 56, yeah. yeah. Low hang, probably could have got brought back pretty good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I dropped a snap one time. Oh, yeah, that's right. That juke guy. Mm -hmm. Punted it inside of 20. Yeah, yeah. How about that? <laughs> Had to repunt it, though, because there was guys down the field oh, because yeah. of the juking and running. Mm -hmm. Can't do that in the NFL. Can in college. That's why in college you see the rollout punt as opposed to in the NFL. You don't see it because nobody can go down the line. Had to do a repunt. Entire team was very tired because uh -huh. they just had to cover the punt that was bombed or whatever. Brian Brahman ran right through somebody and uh, wrapped his entire body around my knee like it was a, uh, <laughs> like it was a cast or whatever on that next one. Still got a punt off. Nice. But almost broke my leg. <laughs> so, the rule should be, I mean, if you dribble it off the ground, they should be allowed to go downfield. Let's add it. Oh, like, because Aussie Rules football, yeah. you've yeah. got to do a uh, dribble every certain yeah. amount of steps. Yeah. We should add that to the game. That'd if you drop cool. a snap and you can still get it off, should be able to let that thing sure. ride. Tommy Townsend wouldn't have the shank. I wouldn't have an almost broken leg. Hmm. Numerous other people that have to re-kick wouldn't have the thing. I, if the league care. is who they are and say they're worried about player safety, think are about you? it. Are think you? about it, Rod. Are you? Raj. But don't you think uh, don't you think no. players would they would practice dropping the snap and then picking it up yeah. so everyone could release? Yeah. Hey, now what? Now it's what more exciting? Actually, well, you know what? Way more exciting. Hopefully, hopefully Dwayne Johnson is is watching this because the XFL can <laughs> absolutely. Oh, he's the hardest worker in the room, dude. Yeah, he's got the song. Listens to everything. He's got his ear ear to the streets, dude. In the football world. Oh. By the way. How nice is this hoodie? You think Dwayne Johnson's yeah, going to make that. hoodies this mm. night? Nice? Nah. Yeah. Hopefully. I hope so with how hard he's working. I don't know with this hoodie, though. This thing is really nice. Mm -hmm. Am I a Chargers fan? Maybe. It looks good. Maybe. If how about the Chargers, AJ? GM on the show. Guy wears for the brand on Hard Knocks. Got me into the NFL. Head coach comes on the show for yep. like 40 minutes. Herbert comes on the show. I mean, now they're sending me hoodies. Mm -hmm. Is this a recruiting process? So it is working. It is working. Someone there is smart. They got some smart people working in the front office, PR, marketing, whoever it is. Because, yeah, why wouldn't they want to show their people, like, on your platform? You know it's going to be a fun interview. I think so, too. And, they, by the way, they have good – now, granted, the Rams kind of got in there early, had success early. Mm -hmm. But L.A., I do believe, is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately town, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. L.A. is the internet, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but they got Stafford now, so it's even more so. Oh. What have you done for me oh. lately? Yeah, but Herbert, hey. Herbert, Absolutely. rookie of the year. Hey. Her Herbert is a guy, the Pepsi Zero Sugar yeah. rookie of the yeah. year. Uh -huh. He's a guy you could rally. Now Stafford's going to sling it out. Exactly. Yeah. In that That's, division. There's going to be highlights. Mm -hmm. McVay's running the sideline in his khakis. Yeah. Stafford picking him up, pointing to the sky. Thank <laughs> <Hey>, you! <laughs> <laughs> you know? 
You're right. It's going to be yeah. tough, but they, they're playing chess close to Sicilian right now. We That's got right. Justin Herbert. Yeah. We got a team. We'll send hoodies out. We'll start doing our thing. We got a Bosa. <laughs> Give me Herbert. What's that? Give me Herbert. Over staff? Yeah. Wow. Well, okay, now that is an interesting question. It's not even be- close. Because I, I, I'm not going to get into it because I've, I've cemented my feet in uh, the just, Stafford uh, yeah. camp pretty heavily, but Herbert seems like he's going to be the uh, dude, a real dude out there. Well, what if they were the same age? Are, I think not. it's hard to stay. Well, can't. That's can't do that. Point. Can't, can't yeah. do that. Can't Situations do that. are situational, Come on. AJ. Okay, so you're saying like, uh, I, what, Stafford's 32? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Herbert's 22? Okay. Same amount of playoff wins. So are you saying like, hey, we want to – that's a shot, Diggs. I heard it. <laughs> so is that – you're saying like, hey, do you want somebody to win this year or do you want your franchise QB? Like, what do you want? Well, it depends on – how's the rest of my team look, AJ? I mean, if we're going to go down this fucking road, what are we going to do? Are we just going to do this whole thing? Sorry I started it. I mean, <laughs> Herbert in a McVay offense. Holy Ooh. shit. I, I bet you I bet you McVay gave a call down to the Chargers. Saying, yeah. Hey, let's not even move houses. Let's just swap. Yep. Uh, what do you need? You can take our D coordinator. Allegedly, allegedly, the Lions said, all right, you want Matthew Stafford? We want Aaron Donald. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine them trying to fucking ruin yeah. Aaron Donald's career. What are they trying to do up there? Yeah. There's no reason for that. I love that move. Oh, yeah. That's oh, a yeah. great move. Fucking give and now the Lions too. have set the market. They got so much for Matthew Stafford. None of these order, other quarterbacks can go anywhere. The, Might be right. the, the Philadelphia Eagles going, hey, we got the next Matthew Stafford. We're going to need two ones, a future third. <laughs> There's no way that they can be living in reality over there. There's no way. And by the way, I got some Eagles fans that come after me every time I say it. It's not about Carson Wentz's ability. Even though that has been called into <clears> question <throat> oh, yeah. in the last year with how everything has panned out. And will he be fixed? I let's hey, let's hope so. The contract that's coming alongside of him mm-hmm. is so large. That's the Goff Stafford thing. Stafford's contract was nothing compared to Goff's and unloading Goff's contract nobody thought was possible. Somehow McVay and Les Snead down there in Mexico on vacation make it happen and just give away the, everything they got alongside the contract, which is what Carson Wentz already has. He already has the in tow, you know, the sidecar, the um, wagon attached to said Carson horse. Everything is a big one with a lot of fucking money that you yeah. have to bring in and eat away from the rest of your roster. Well, you have to ask, though. Like, they got to ask. They got to say, hey, this is what it's going to take if you want Carson Wentz. They know they're not going to get it. But, hey, they got to hopefully fall somewhere in between that. Yeah, but they're also – well, I don't know. I don't know. How do you sell a first-round draft pick for a guy that you benched for half the season? You benched him yourself. You said he stunk. And, by the way, you played – Nate Sudfield. Sudfield. (laughs) I almost called him Suffolk. (laughs) <laughs> I forgot. We might be working for Suffolk Financial. Good couple <laughs> months here. Good county. That is a county in Virginia, it's right? Good county. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Suffolk County. Couldn't you say that was the old regime, though? They're like, yeah. hey, what do you, you guys didn't, you guys benched them. You're like, no, that was Peterson. That's not us. We, we fired for that. Doug. No, actually, <laughs> funny you say that. We wanted him to bench him like first week. <laughs> <laughs> so half the season's wrong, actually. We wanted the whole season with Jalen Hurts, but now it's a whole. I mean, Doug Peterson allegedly wanted Jalen. They don't, then they do this. What what's going on? How do these people get these situations? That's uh, that's the thing. Situation. Unfortunately, uh, DeForest Buckner did confirm that Carson will be a Colt next yeah, year. Yep. Congratulations! Yeah. Hey, listen, quick, quick. And with the way that locker room sounds, I'm pumped for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's going to adapt well. Frank's going to fix him. Colts are going to be really good. Look out, AFC. Especially if Russell Wilson potentially goes down there to Miami. Look Ooh. out, AFC. What if it's a two year fix? They go seven and nine next year. Frank gets shit canned. You're stuck with Carson and no one can fix him. Oh my God. And his contract. We have to get to a break 38 <laughs> minutes into hour three here. That's not how it's going to go. Nice. Hey. Mm. I got faith in Chris Ballard. Hell yeah. Seven and nine is fine. Jump in. The water's warm. Hey, you're going to be there a long time, aren't uh-huh. you? Oh, <laughs> That's right. No. Well, seven and 10, excuse me. 17 game season next year. Oh, yeah. Everybody forgets. Seven, ten, seven. So much worse. <laughs> We're gonna answer some calls on the other side, AJ. You you excited to talk to the people? I am. I'm excited about your uh, 
how you have turned on your Carson Wentz situation. You, you're all for him. You're all in, right? That Such is a not, positive, good guy. Excuse me. Now that I've heard Russell Wilson is potentially on the market, mm. I mean, let's not say I'm all the way in on the Carson Wentz train, but if Chris Ballard says, let's go get him, and he also gets alongside Carson Wentz, like maybe a, another one or something like that, okay. like Goff going to Detroit, you know, to pick up that contract because it's obviously a contract dump mm -hmm. in a move forward. Okay, situations are situational. Yes, but boy, are. when Stafford was available, oh, give me Matthew. Man. If Herbert would have been available, Ooh. Oh, give me Herbert. Now that Russell Wilson's allegedly available because his team just shit on his other team, give me Russell Wilson. <laughs> but if Carson Wentz is the only one, let's go ahead and do it. Let's yeah. go ahead and do it with Carson Wentz. Hey, we can talk about it after the break. What if a team was deciding between Tua and Carson Wentz? That's a thing, That's something you might have to think about. No, I almost Tua. just said Tua very loudly, yeah, I and I am not. I'm not sure that's the right answer. Yeah, I, don't I don't know, know if that, that is. is. That is. See, but that's not yeah, good for Carson. Contract, Listen to the conversation though. we're having. Yeah. The contract too, if you want to put that into it. Ugh. Yeah, but we don't even know if there's anything in that one. Yeah, true. The Tua quarterback situation. Chris will figure it out. Chris Ballard's much smarter than I am. If he does it, I have faith in it. But boy, it feels like the Eagles are lying about everything. Who knows who's made any offers? Somebody on the internet who covers the Bears said the Bears made no offer, yep. and they were allegedly one of the top. Everybody's lying. Why are they lying? It's our job to sort it out. Oh, yeah. We'll take your calls. One eight 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 Mad Dog. So <laughs> on the other side, the lines are full. As soon as we hang up on somebody, give it a call. We can't wait to chat with you and end this beautiful Tuesday, February 9th, two thousand and twenty-one, National Pizza Day. Let's yeah. hour three here on. Serious XM. Loves uh Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you though. Like I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. That, that if you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful and I think that's why at times you know certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any, uh, any player who's played for a long time, the the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy, because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And 
your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Deep from the hills of Humboldt County, a few cries can still be heard. Hell yeah. Not just for the absolute throttling that Tom Brady put on the Chiefs, but also for the end of football season. No time is better to make the switch to the premium nicotine and tobacco-free dip alternative with CBD and the boys at Canada CBD welcome you to join them in their quest for packing fatties of the good stuff and being a better man hey. wipe those tears of joy or anger away after the big game head to CanadaCBD.com and use the promo code lip boomers and you'll get 20 percent off your favorite flavor of chaw this week nice mm. what a sentence <laughs> felt pretty good that one came out mm -hmm. you know what i mean aj you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Inspiring. Thank you. Know that being the greatest doesn't just happen. It takes training, perseverance, and poise. Keeping your cannabinoid receptors full all the time is where legends are made, and we commend positive off-season activities. Yep, need it. Head to CanadaCBD.com and use the McAfee Mafia's personal code LITBOOMERS oh. and for 20% off, grab as many tins as you like. The lemon tree strain flavor is almost out, so make sure to grab a couple while they last. The CBD in Canadips is water-soluble and has unrivaled bioavailability, making for a great delivery system in the mouth, and hanging dip just feels cool, and that's okay. It is okay. As for the Canadips boys in Humboldt, we are sad to season the, see the NFL season go. Oh, this is yeah. a statement from <laughs> okay. Canada right, CBD. Nice enough. Thank you. We are sad to see the NFL season go, but no sport better than baseball season upcoming to hang some honkers with the boys, and we can hardly wait to pull out our trusty tins at softball this season. Uh -huh. Head to CanadaCBD.com and slam that Lip Boomers promo code for 20% off, and thanks to the best fan base in sports from the Canada Lips people. Hell yeah. Thank you, Canada, 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 Canada. Canada Lips is an incredible tobacco alternative. There are pouches that have CBD in them. None of the bad shit. Now, granted, I don't. That is not a scientific study that I said that. Okay, <laughs> no. I'm not 100% sure. But they don't have tobacco or nicotine mm -hmm. or I anything else that could potentially, you know, take you out. And it's um, it's a great alternative. Ain't that right? Yeah, there? it's good stuff. You know, tastes like real chaw. And it's oh, also. Yeah, yeah you can. As many times you need. Shots Candips. That's C-A-N-N-A-D-I-P-S, CBD.com. Promo code lip rumors. Uh, during a break, during a break, something had happened, and we do have to address it immediately. Um, Diggs has dropped us right into a Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles fan base tizzy. Brandon Lee Gotten, uh, who has a ver verified check mark next to him, at Brandon Gotten. He is a Philadelphia Eagles reporter who has 60,000 mm -hmm. um, followers Whoa. on Twitter. So we put out a tweet of a clip of our show that says, I appreciate it, but enough. Stop sending us gaming chairs. <laughs> Hashtag Pat McAfee Show Live. In that conversation at some point, some Diggs said, Carson the Indy, <laughs> done deal. Okay, and he just said it because what we were talking about with the Forrest Buckner and everything like that and mm -hmm. the entire thing. And then he tweets in in response to that, producer, COVID Cowboys, who he's referring to. Mm -hmm. COVID Cowboy interjects here <laughs> to say something about Carson Wentz being a done deal, but the show just goes on to talk about gaming chairs <laughs> for a couple minutes. <laughs> Brandon Gotten, please know 
that our show, we have to talk for three hours about sports every single day. Okay, just like you have to cover sports. If Carson Wentz ended up at the Indianapolis Colts, we would we would change the conversation away from the gaming chairs to talk about that. I would like to say that. We would direct the conversation away. But to be honest, the gaming chairs are a fucking problem in they this are. office. They are. Okay, so we had to have that conversation. And also, the producer that you're referring to is uh, a man named the COVID Cowboy, okay? Mm -hmm. He has recently been born. He's an immunicorn at this point. Mm -hmm. it, whenever he says Carson Wentz <laughs> done deal, I'm not, I'm not gonna speak for him. I'll let him speak for himself here. I'm not sure he meant that as a certainty at the time because he would have been wrong yet again mm -hmm. if that was the case. No, as I've been doing here for the last three to four weeks because you are such a huge fan of Carson, the idea of Carson coming to the Colts, I do like to remind you whenever it gets brought up, like. DeForest Buckner says that he is a man of God like Carson is. He loves a duck hunt like Carson does, mm -hmm. and he is best friends with Frank Reich like Carson is. I just like to remind you, Carson to the Colts is a done deal. Thank you. And by the way, Brandon Gotten, I don't like that he did it either. Okay, <laughs> so I, I and I there's a lot of Eagles fans that are commenting underneath about how you know how stupid we are basically to talk about these gaming chairs. I want to let you know it is incredibly inconvenient what these gaming chairs have been doing. Worthy of conversation. We appreciate the free chairs, but we're not a fucking warehouse for these goddamn chairs at this point. It feels like that. Send some desks. AJ Oh, now we need desks. You have you heard about this, AJ? No, I would like to, I don't care about the Carson Wentz situation. I want to know more about these gaming chairs. You need a chair? I need send me one. I we would have Okay. You would have seen it. If you would have came out here for the Super Bowl like you were planning yeah, on doing yeah, with yeah, your family. Like you said you would. Scumbag. We didn't have chairs for her whole family. Just line them up. You have a giant space. Line them up like on the on the wall. It's taking up half the space. Who's going to do all that? I, I mean, the UPS guy, every uh, single day he's one of our friends, this guy. We Big love Mike. this guy, Big Mike. Not he's a good dude. I think he is mad at us for the yeah. – he has to take these things off the back of this goddamn truck, okay? And these trucks are massive. Put it on a roller thing. It's negative 50 degrees yeah, out yeah. here. And then, by the way, he's got to unload 10 more. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is – we know you have other places to go. We did not order this, sir. So we, we appreciate the free chairs. And this 100% comes because Zito and Bailey are working side deals for their own little gaming connections. It's all and we understand that. But to the gaming people, I know you're going to get DMs from Zito, and I know you're going to get DMs from Bailey. Never. I would like to make an official announcement. If you're going to say one or two is fine, don't yeah. need 15 of them. Don't need 15. Yeah. And a desk. <laughs> I mean, if Brandon Lee wants a gaming chair, we can send one right <laughs> over <Yeah>. for him. <laughs> We're giving a lot of gaming chairs away, by the way. Oh, Look yeah. for a lot of gaming chairs to be given away. Yeah. Speaking of, we'll give away uh, two gaming chairs to uh, somebody in the comment section. If you tweet right now, hashtag PMS Gaming Show. <laughs> yes. Hashtag PMS Gaming Show. Uh, you automatically be entered into winning one of five gaming chairs we will Ooh, give away today. Okay. Hashtag PMS Big Gaming Show. Hashtag PMS Big Gaming Show. 95 more to go. We have all the chairs, AJ. All of them, dude. So you just don't open them up? They're in the box still? I, literally, if we had an assembly line of <laughs> people that did the IKEA work of putting yeah. these things together, yeah. we still would not be completed if that was our full-time job. Yeah. There is so many of these chairs here. We appreciate Thank you for the gift. It was very Thank nice. Thank you, guys. It's Thank hard you. to get to the front door. Kind of. Well, just real it wasn't really them. a gift, though. They were trying to yeah. Yeah, I mean, weasel themselves. UPS somewhere. drivers. Well, yeah, but that's because you were trying to weasel. Yeah, send a desk there. there. Come on. <laughs> like, stop the chairs. Send the desks. All right. Let's get some phone calls, AJ, shall we? We got about a couple minutes left here. Let's go to uh, Evan and Buff. They're tweeting. They're in the comments. Yeah. No, you got to tweet it. Yeah. It, <laughs> got to tweet it. You got to tweet it. It's yeah, in it's the comment late. section. Right it's too late. It is. <laughs> it's spam a, the comment section at this point. Everything is blocked. You got to tweet that. No, it's it's over. It's, they're gonna keep doing All that. All right, let's go to Evan in Buffalo. Evan, what's going on, pal? Hey, what's going on, Pat and boys? How are you? Um, not too bad. The internet is now starting to basically associate this show directly with Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts, and I do not love that this is how this the internet's handling it. But this is another day on the internet, by the way. Mm -hmm. This is how it goes. You can't ask for a hundred thousand retweets and. You can't help it but potentially be the face of a trade if you are talking about it every single day. So this is, sometimes you're going to get God out here and it feels like this is one of those situations. 
Well, no, I'm sorry for that, Pat. But hey, uh, Saturday at the NFL Honors Award, do you think the reason why they only let Aaron freaking Rodgers talk for one minute and gave Russell Wilson like 10 minutes was because he still did not get one vote for MVP? (laughs) That's potentially the case, Evan. That is potentially the case. The interesting thing is Aaron wins the third MVP, most valuable player of the entire league, in a rather large time in our world. And he's told you have one minute, by the way. We don't want to hear you fucking talk, pal. We heard you on that show all year. Pipe it down. All right? (laughs) And then everybody else, though, just gets a full. That's unbelievable to me. I would have loved to have heard what he would have said if he had an entire time it like just kind of got into it with the whole obviously with a theater full of people and everything it would have been awesome but I, shout out to him for letting us be a part of it even though we did not deserve mm-hmm. it and i'll i'm excited for his fourth mvp speech uh Diggs, we got about 40 seconds you got something uh, russell wilson is saying more now he said i love playing for seattle loved it for years you just never want to get hit i've been sacked almost 400 times we've got to get better i've got to get better i'm frustrated with getting hit too much Okay, and that comes obviously here on Tuesday, February 9th. He is fed up. Quit okay, this was, dude. This was the day he decided he no longer wants to be hit. Woke up this morning and said, I ain't taking this shit no more. Do what you got to do, Russell. I'm excited to see if he gets, you know, a little bit more control over that team or not. Chris Mad Dog Russo <laughs> with Mad Dog Unleashed <laughs> will be on the other side of this six-minute break that's coming from AJ, myself, all the boys. Another terrible show will be back tomorrow. A good one, though. Mad Dog Unleashed is <laughs> next. Got it in. Got it in. Pretty cool. The LA Chargers are in uh, the chat today. Los Angeles Chargers were in there? Huh. Yeah, they say all right. Good. They say they look real good in that sweater. They stand handsome, here, actually. Here Handsome. Yeah, you look extremely handsome today. I'm just trying to win you over. Hey, give us Keenan Allen. Come on. He did. Keenan Allen's been on the show. Bring him back. Bring him Bosa. Derwin James. (laughs) Are we doing booking? (laughs) Chris Harris Jr. Go ahead and get him in here as well. Probably better than... uh... Oh. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) (laughs) Pat, you look extremely handsome today. All right. Yeah, look at me. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Only 32 of those teams, you know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> AJ, I will take, you know, I I can be swayed. I said that when I was calling college football games. Cincinnati invited me out to their training camp and gave me a bunch of swag. It's like, yeah, I'm definitely going to be biased oh, yeah. calling this game. I, I don't know how you don't want me to be. Yeah, everybody's for sale, right? Like, there's a price for everyone. Oh, okay. See, now you just, Good God. now you basically said, like, I'm a, I'm a sellout. That's basically no, what yeah. you just said. I, everyone is a sellout for the right price. Well, they say you don't sell out; you actually buy in. You know, and that's an interesting way to kind of look at both yeah. of those things. There, is that but, Gary V. Huh? Is that Gary V. Right hook mode? Oh, my bad. Please don't do that. Like I, I don't know what it means, but it just—it's annoying. Five times New York Times bestseller, dude. Yeah. Come on. Why do you hold your why? Why do you hold it like that and look so? Cuts. It's his thing, bro. You have to. Cuts why? Out. Why the? Why the? The click back in the day start doing this, you know, and then everybody because they're wolf, you know, wolf. Why does Ohio State do OH? You know, IO. Why do? Why do all massive organizations that have massive legacies have a signal or yeah. a, um, a a a tradition? Roll birds. It's not history or a tradition. I oh, guess. okay. What five time. Yeah. Dude. Five time. Five time. Five time. Five time. Five time. New York Times bestseller. Not one. Five no. time. I wasn't sure what that meant. That's all I was asking. What well, five things said in the face? Slap, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's watching Chappelle, by the way, right? No. No, no. no Don't no. watch it. What do you mean? I think I sold the DVDs, to be honest with you. You're not allowed to watch it, AJ? Yeah. Why? Because he asked for it to be taken down? Yeah, and if you watch it, you're basically supporting the fact that they're stealing yeah. content from him, which is pretty fucked up. Anti Chappelle. Well, where, can, where can you watch it now? You used to be able to watch it on HBO Max. You know where you could probably watch it if I had to guess? YouTube? Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Oh, jeez. That's right. <laughs> That, we got that situation going on. You got a slice of pizza by the date. Like, oh, 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 it's it's actually oh, pizza it's day. day. We'll celebrate the Italians. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe the most Italians on a live Son show a yeah. in the history of Good live God. shows at what's this that? point. Connor, what's the hashtag for National Pizza Day? Hashtag NPD, dude. Okay. All right. I see how you're playing it. Playing what? 
Nothing. It's National Pizza Day, dude. What are you talking about? I don't think it's NPD. That'd be kind of tough. <laughs> Why? I mean, you think people just assume, oh, NPD? Oh, yeah, it's got to be National Pizza Day, right? Yes. Okay, dude. Or Speaking of whatever the hashtag is, on National Pizza Day, which it is, by the way, hashtag PMS Big Gaming Show currently trending. Yeah! Let's go. Yeah. Keep that thing going. We'll give away more chairs. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we'll give away more chairs. You keep that thing going. We just got a Cracker Barrel, by the way. We did? Yes. Good. Bear, I mean, that place. Bear That's it. unbelievable. Horrible. AJ, thoughts? Is that real? Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you say? Is that, is that real? real? If it's not, they sure make a compelling argument. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real hate over there, dude. Oh, yeah. Long time. Wild. I won't go there. Yeah, I think that's kind of the thing nobody's going to. Okay, just making sure. I Way to take a stand, rod. though, Zito. <laughs> I think me. Zito did enjoy their food potentially oh, the most. Dude. He, was, he loves it. He was... You could see his taste buds be devastated, yeah. but every other country raiders. fried steak, seven sides, the hash brown casserole, those biscuits. <laughs> oh my gosh! Let's go to Jacob in New York. What's the recipe? <laughs> Jacob, hey, what's going on? Pizza. Happy National Pizza Day to you and the boys. Nice. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Happy National Pizza Day to you as well, Jacob. I just wanted to talk about Deshaun Watson and the Jets and the possibilities. You think with all this stuff going on? the uh, organization. Oh, yeah. Great question, Jacob. You a Jets fan? I am a big-time Jets fan. How did that happen? So, like, when you were growing up, you had a chance to either be a Giants fan or a Jets fan, or, or is your whole family Jets fans, or is your neighborhood? Family, How's it work? family Jet fans. What's whole that? Whole family or Jet fans. Whole family or Jet fans. Do you have a neighbor that's, like, a Giants fan, and has it been tough to watch them just enjoy life a lot more, it seems like? Not as of late, I uh, guess. Actually, 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 all the neighbors are Jet fans, too. It's a Jets neighborhood over yeah, there. Okay. Bob yeah, Salah, so, you guys so, pumped? We, we are very pumped. Okay. We are very pumped. A lot of years of pain. I mean, a lot. Fireman Ed quit. Damn. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Fireman Ed just quit. That okay, well, thing. He's back. Did you ever play there against the Jets over there? Pretty good fan base. Oh, yeah. I played against them. I mean, they were... When I was younger in the league, when they had Sanchez, they were rolling for a little while with, with uh, Rex at the helm, and obviously Mango was there forever, but they were good. Yeah, I played there. I enjoyed it. But does this uh, – the guy on the phone, like, what if a Giants fan wants to move in? Do you guys – do you pull, like, a Step Brothers and, you know, Will Ferrell's mowing the grass with the Nazi armband? All right. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> that movie does not get – Shrekin' G. Dick. That, <laughs> that movie does not get – enough credit for how funny it is and i think it's because that sherlock holmes movie bombed so hard it's kind of hard to talk about that pairing but boy they did great work for a little bit yeah talladega nights oh i mean they did great work for a while and then it all died i don't know what happened who was will ferrell wasn't in sherlock holmes was he oh yeah oh yeah it was bad he was 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 always a modern character he was sherlock holmes yeah he was it was a bad show it was it was one of those movies that you watch and you go okay all right so something went wrong here. You know, like something somewhere went wrong. D- downsizing, oh. another movie you watch, you go, okay, all right, something something went wrong these. here in the process of creating movie, editing movie, releasing movie. Something happened in here, mm-hmm. and you don't know what it is. There's been a couple of those movies as an avid film critic that I think has kind of happened. Those are, I, I don't, what was the second movie? I'd never heard of that. I saw it five times. Downsizing? Yeah. <laughs> no idea. So what's the name of it, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, with Matt Damon. Matt Damon, he gets shrinked into that new world. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought we were talking Will Ferrell, John C. Riley movies. I mean, geez. Well, that's what I'm talking about. To, you, Where's so, your head you just not today? even listening? So Maybe you get that nasal the... spray, pal. Yeah. Maybe you so get we're... fucking Brett Favre's nasal <laughs> yeah. spray. Yeah. Maybe I do, but so we're, we're just we're just jumping around to movies that we feel like didn't live up to the hype. No, just things happened in the editing bay that you did. Something happened to the movie, is what I'm saying. And there's only a few in my day that I because I don't watch a lot of movies, but downsizing is one of them. Yeah. That her, Holmes one that Will Ferrell yeah. did. Mm-hmm. That's another one. I was like, okay, something ha- something must have happened here. This is not the the movie that was supposed to be released. Gili. Oh, uh, that? that was a good movie. Uh, that was Affleck and J Lo. Yeah, I it was believe. good. See, I haven't seen it, but I have heard Affleck does have a couple of those on the board. 
You said Hubie Halloween stunk. Whoa. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa. No, no. What is your what? problem? No. Come on. What is huh. your fucking problem? <laughs> he doesn't Why do you time. have to come in here and burn this thing down? Adam, Sa Adam Sandler, you're the man. He's the man. I agree. Hubie Halloween was tough. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so good. No way. It was. Nuh-uh. It was it's a classic. Good. Listen, I once stood on your side in this yeah. battle against a lot of people, against Adam Sandler. Remember, you and I were in the trenches in mm. Sandy. You remember? Yes. You and I were in there. Still am. I was, uh, by the way, I'm still in that one. Yeah. Okay? That Hubie Halloween was tough. That was a tough one. So you're leaving the trench? No. It sounds like it. No, nah, you can lose a battle. Okay, you can lose a battle. That Sounds one is like a, a lost battle. But I'm okay in winning the war alongside Adam Sandler and Happy Madison. Come on. You, His man. thermostat? Thank you. Yeah. No problem, Gump. His thermostat? You have, hey, Pat, though, you, you haven't seen so many good movies and shows, but you feel like you keep rattling off terrible movies that you have seen. <laughs> what, what good movies and show have I not seen, Pat? I just feel like any, like... Relevant oh, or yeah, current done, show man. or movie that Breaking anyone has bad. seen, you're like, can't do it, oh, Ford, yeah. can't do it, shot a horse, <laughs> first scene, can't do it. Like, you just you instantly write them off. How about this? The Sinner. It was trending number three on Great Netflix show. yesterday. Great show. Yeah. Very good. Does I watched count, season though? three. I went straight to season three. Yeah, exactly. I, I watched the new counts. season. Yeah, it did. You gotta start season one because one of the first Listen, scene, they someone are, gets shot the seasons, in the head. In his defense, the seasons are not Connected, yeah, they're not really. connected oh, at all. Oh, okay. oh, oh, oh. Dad from Casper's in there. I mean, <laughs> let's go, dude. Right. You watch that good. show? I've, I, I saw it when, uh, what, Timberlake's wife was in the first season. Yeah. I mean, yeah. little respect. This poor guy, yeah. this season I'm watching, this poor guy. I yeah, mean, it's good. good. I'm know, like three episodes in. Bad guy. Uh, the newest season? Yeah. He is in season Me two, too. though. The, too. A, a guy, the, um, the, uh, the teacher? Yeah, good actor. He's got some weird fucking eyes, though. I, I mean, as soon as I see him, I'm like, oh, that guy's a fucking lunatic. And then they start going through the show, and it's like, oh, this is a good casting, I guess. That's a Sandler move. Get a guy with crazy eyes. Okay. <laughs> like, what? All right. It is. I mean, look, he's a trailblazer. I'll say this. Sandler could have created the center. Probably would have made it better, by the way. For sure. If Hubie was, was in it. But I enjoyed it. Yellowstone, I'm going to dive back into that goddamn uh, battle, okay, out there in the woods. It's yeah, hard. Good. I guess really good. watched he really watched Hubie Halloween. Yeah. Well I had to watch it twice actually. A couple of those movies that I don't like I have to watch back to see, you know. Like that stupid boat one? No, don't do that. Oh, come on. Stupid. Whoa, boat Cuba one. Gooding Jr.? No, Sandler. Oh, murder mystery. Yeah. That, that was a was top good. five. Yeah, you know, I watched one. that. That, was that good. wasn't bad. That was yeah. Aniston yeah. killed. All, what do you that one wasn't bad. Relax. <laughs> Hubie Halloween might have been a miss. But when you're Adam Sandler, you it. step into that batter's box with a very heavy bat and you swing at every pitch. And guess what you do? You hit more home runs than fucking anybody in Netflix's yeah. history. Yeah, I mean fucking Sandler was hit. And a lot of homers in the early 90s, you and know, early is. 2000s. He's been striking out a no. lot. Oh, uncut still, gems. No. still first bout Hall of Famer. No, uncut, gems, gems. uncut Gems was not his movie. So that is uh, something yeah. he was hired he as an actor. I mean. And I'm only saying that strictly because when Uncut Gems did well, us in the trenches for Adam Sandler, that was, a, I was like, I was about to start dancing almost like, hey, see who, uh, Oh, yeah. Now, granted, I watched that movie, and I did not like that movie. Well, <laughs> no, well, we got it was a loud a version. Yeah, it was we got a, a loud story. version of it. Because, but Adam Sandler's acting in that movie, Very I good. think a lot of people just got a chance to finally see him, KG, who have maybe eh? shunned him away since the 90s. I'm like, no, oh, that's my guy. That's oh, yeah. my guy. Mm -hmm. And everybody said he didn't write the fucking movie. Everybody, it's not his words. It's not his whole thing. Blah, blah, blah. That's their defense in that whole thing, by the way. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. Adam Sandler, he, he, was, he was upset he didn't get an Academy Award nomination. He deserved it. Yeah. But not just for Uncut Gems, by the way. I mean, there is numerous movies, I think, that he has put out where I go, fucking award-winning here, huh? Don't you we think? Halloween. Okay, that, that one is... The callbacks in that movie? Unmatched. It was... That movie was literally created for you and me. Okay? <laughs> Big Adam Sandler fans. And I just watched it, and I thought, too much here, okay? Too no. much. And normally, Adam doesn't do that, by the way. He was empty in the chamber. I... I Assume his next one's his best one. Ooh, he has a movie called Hustle coming out soon. Oh, oh man. It's going to be so good. Wait till he's hooping. He's going to be fucking. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yep. What? Talking about Uncle Drew. Uncle Adam's going to be breaking <laughs> ankles. In this movie, he's a washed up basketball scout in China. 
and uh, he's trying to get back into the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> this you, is going to be awesome. Looks wow. like the longest yard, but Chinese basketball version. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he's a Paul Cruz. <laughs> yeah. Who FaceTimed? Kenny the Jet Smith FaceTimed him. They did like a... Uh, Oh, they, I'm busy. They did a FaceTime challenge, yeah, where you just FaceTime somebody out of nowhere and, hey, hey, I'm busy. Can I call you right back? I guess that was a challenge or whatever. And Kenny the Jet called a lot. He unloaded. He, I mean, he had every yeah. – it was incredible. I mean, this is why this guy stood us up five times or whatever. His, <laughs> yeah. his role at Dexaphone is huge. He FaceTimed Adam Sandler in there. Sandler's got this massive beard, he answers. And Kenny goes, uh, hey, can I call you back? I'm busy right now. And Sailor just starts dying laughing and goes, I'm not. You called me. <laughs> and then he, he, like, shoots to the TV. He's on. He's watching the NBA. It's like I feel like Sandler is always. I'm watching yeah. the Knicks. I feel like it's always funny. How about him and Burt Kreischer that moment uh, they had? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I must have missed that one. No, it was just a video. What the hell, dude? No, seriously. I, I didn't see that. Whoa. What was that all about? I mean, what? Was I didn't that see about? it. I'm just. I, I didn't know what you guys were talking about. There was no <laughs> reason to do it. You what what moment back. did they have? God. You stink. Oh, Queen Latifah's in this movie. Never know when to stop, dude. Oh, she's the. Um, she's the equalizer. equalizer. The Such equalizer. a good show, dude. That show is the pilot incredible. Was, I know, pilot was good. You guys. That show blows. Whoa! <laughs> Come on, let's not mess Holy around shit. here. If we're gonna dog Hubie Halloween, yeah. <laughs> I'll sort out the equalizer. Dude, the show stinks. Unbelievable. Give it a chance. Yeah, I will. I'll give it a minute, and I'll turn it off. <laughs> just, just the passion burning for Hubie Halloween Yeah. at this moment. It's unbelievable. Look at my thermostat. It's like, un- think about how many things were in that thermostat. I know, I get it. All right, I get it. Let's go to Richard in New Jersey. <laughs> Richard, what's going on, dude? Equalizer did not deserve that. <laughs> Hello? But it stinks. What's going what's on, going Richard? On, How you doing, pal? I'm good. Hey, I just learned, like, you know, you got to shoot your shot and everything. So I'm just going to do that right now. Uh, Pat, I love the show. love to be part of it. You know, I think I bring some technology insight and, like, my East Coast stoogeness, as the talking twins would put it. You know, I bring a unique perspective, and I love to be part of it. And I also want to do get in my question. Which is about the streaker, if I'm not sure if you heard, who made over a quarter million dollars by betting fifty thousand dollars on himself to streak the field. Successfully streak the field I had that. Thank you, Richard. You're hired, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? You're fired. You're hired. You're hired. <laughs> oh, I thought you said you're fired. I thought. Hired. He was asking he wants a, he wants a gig, man. Pat, send him your address. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Richard, we'll think about it, by the way. You know, definitely think about it. Uh, I would like this show to not become a, hey, want to work there thing, which does happen a lot, and I appreciate that. When we're hiring, we will let everybody know, okay? We will let everybody know when we're hiring and everything like that. Now, with the streaker, this was captivating the Internet last night, just like the Andrew Luck fake text messages were a few days ago. It was kind of sprinkled around. I saw it in a lot of different timelines and communities started to talk about it. People started sending it to me. Uh, This is something that is very intriguing because I do believe as soon as this dude got on the field, my only reaction was, hey, did anybody get the prop bet of fan on the field and what was the payout? That was my immediate thoughts upon seeing him run in a mankini uh, that was a thong and his ass was out for a porn website uh, that Zito has visited. Mm -hmm. So his marketing did work work in this whole thing. And George Kittle said, I think that guy bet the prop himself. George Kittle called this and had an inside source Maybe before this guy at the bar that met the actual Streaker the day after, allegedly, Streaker found a bookie on the side of the road or something like that, or a high-end bookie, okay? Uh, Because this is not a regulated thing, obviously, and I don't know if the non-regulated websites are taking a $50,000 bet on a prop bet like this. So it had to have been a bookie, I would assume, takes a $50,000 prop bet from a guy 
who was completely okay with going bare ass on the – this seems like there's a chance that this is maybe a story being concocted to make it look more awesome. I assume the guy did get paid, but if he got somebody to take a $50,000 prop bet on something that was very obviously going to be beat by you doing it yourself, good on him for making all that money, and this guy might be the best finesser in the history of finessing people out of anything, if that's the case. Do you think the – is there any kind of laws or whatever where the guy, if he placed a bet and he did it himself, he can't be paid out? So the laws would be he's he's gambling illegally because this is an illegal bet. So okay, that, that's the – that would be the first one. That would be the first issue. Uh, the insider trading thing goes in uh, a different thing, but it's an illegal bet to begin with. So that's what they would go after. This one's going to be the IRS – you know, with the 374000 allegedly won on the bet, and how does well, he, he hide never, the money? He would never want that out there then. If he actually did this, he would never want this public. Oh, yeah. Te agreed completely. But also, it makes him sound awesome. So maybe he was drunk at a bar yeah. and bullshitting with this guy that he's never met before. He was like, yeah, man, $50,000 bet on it, $374,000. <laughs> Jump on it. Oh, my God. Did you really? Yeah, absolutely. But I think he got paid. I just find it difficult in the gambling world to find somebody that's going to take a $50,000 bet on that type of prop staring in the eyes of a human that, well, this person would definitely go do that if they had the opportunity to do so. Yeah, I don't know. What was there? There's a guy. Was it for that Vitaly dude? I've seen the Vitaly kid on the Internet over the years. He used to streak everything. Yeah, so people are saying that he hired this guy to go mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. So if, if my Internet connects are accurate... People are saying that that guy, and by internet connects, I, I mean Billy Tubes, who went down the rabbit hole yeah. as soon as this whole thing happened and had a full answer and a review on the website that he was marketing mm -hmm. immediately upon this whole thing happening. He got paid by Vlad TV or whatever, right? That's who yeah. Vitaly is, is Vlad TV? I believe so. That's who everybody's thinking he got paid by, and then now it's off and running. Yeah, I like the fact that he had a diversion. You know, we'll send one stooge out there to kind of take all the bigger stooges away. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come in the back door, moon the team. Okay, this is a thong. Mm -hmm. Then see a little bit larger unathletic security guard make a cut, not even know that there is big, fat security guard coming yeah. from this side. Yeah. Skirt by him a little bit. Oh, yeah. no. Then about to get de from the side. I mean, there was... There was a guy headhunting from the side. When he slid, there was a guy that went flying over top of him, yeah. head down, mm -hmm. not heads up football. He <laughs> slid across the turf as another guy came flying in, after a flag. And that old buddy comes head back. Head. Yeah, it was – I mean, there's no way he thought it would go as smoothly as it did, I'd assume. But when it comes to streaks on a field, this is one of the better ones that I've seen. It worked out better than most, and that might be because there isn't a full stadium. But the diversion just – you know, get the cheese out there for the security who have yeah. been hyped up, who haven't yeah. seen a crowd in so long. Yeah, I, I, I wish a motherfucker would. And then <laughs> yeah. Diversion comes, oh, we got one. They come flying down there, and then all of a sudden, pink uh, thong bikini guy is running out this way. Like, you stooges, we Whoa. got this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And he's already out of jail and drunk. Mm -hmm. yeah, Good he for won. him. Congrats to him. So do you think they'll make the punishment much worse now for streakers moving forward? You know, I think it's part of the game. I do. I, I honestly do. And, and obviously there's the safety for it all. But, for instance, when a squirrel gets out on a field, let's go. You know, like that yeah. is some of the most exciting yeah. time when a squirrel is running down or a cat. Obviously mm -hmm. the cat was there at Meadowlands. I was a part of a squirrel, I think, at Meadowlands as well. And it was <laughs> – he scored a touchdown. And he, like, parked it to it like the five. Oh, and then as soon as he got in, the place went crazy. I mean, it yeah. was – I've had a couple streakers come on the field. It's always a nice little boost. Uh, and obviously nobody has handled one better than Mr. Schlegel. Obviously, mm -hmm. Anthony Schlegel handled it. But I don't, I don't know. I, I guess if it gets to a point where – which it probably will now with how successful this one has gone, where it's becoming well, – somebody will abuse, abuse this, and then it will have to be – completely written off of everything i'd assume i would think too like you know how like nick saban they said he started recruiting different body styles like over the last 10 years or whatever to try to adapt to the game and push the ball down the field don't you think you would do that with your security members at least the ones right in the field that are in charge of trying to make sure something like this doesn't happen where they can have the speed and the quickness and the agility to get them down before it gets like out in the middle of the field 
Real question. Those yellow coats, are they making any money or are they just signing up to have the power there? They're the worst. The worst. Oh, I know. Everywhere. Just the arrogance that comes upon putting yeah. that security jacket on is unbelievable. Now, Save I know they got a tough life. job. And Richard Jewell saved a lot of lives. Yes, That's right. He was different. Okay, he was different. He wanted to go on. But I understand there's some great yellow coats out there. Yeah. But, boy, it seems like every single interaction I've ever had with one, it's like, relax. Yeah, go ahead and <laughs> load that on him. A lot of relaxes. I'll but, tell you who yeah. doesn't deserve a die in this streaker. He didn't even flash any dong or get his cheeks out there. True. His cheeks did his get out. His cheeks were out. Yeah, he thonged up. You want to see a hole? I'm not trying to. I don't want to my see hole. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you, Nick. You're getting 300, 400 grand. Show some cheeks. I mean, he did. Being out there all cheeked up. You he want a hole? You Wait, want that, a hole? The porn website paid him 300, 400 grand. No, no, the bet. The, the bet was that uh, thing's definitely uh, fake. Though. Yeah, we. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> Where have you been? No, I mean I have, but Nick's talking. It just said Carson like, Wentz done deal. <laughs> <laughs> have you been battling with philly over there no okay if you have been please keep us updated i'd like to hear how that's going yeah let's go to pepe in mexico pepe what's good man Orale, cabrones. how you doing keep it moving first time caller long time listener now nah, shout out haters Come shout out haters hey. Hey. shout out haters hey. Hey, brother, just to tell you, congratulations. What a ride this year has been. Thank you, you were driving you this too. RV through the roof just like Cito did. When times were darker, mm -hmm. you added an hour to the show with AJ on the high speeches. When sports stopped, you created content, you streamed, you had the MVP, and you created the super show. So it was electric. Oh, thank, thank you, Pat. Pepe. Hey, by the way, Pepe, big thanks to you. Always electric when you call in. You helped us through the entire year, Pepe. Thank you, Pepe. Thank, thank you, Pepe. Pepe. Thank you, Pepe. Thank you, boys. Hey, man, the show, you don't give enough credit. It has been a mental vacation that you created. Nah, Pepe, it's just sticks, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, Pepe, though. Oh, yeah. Played him in ping pong the other day. He's much shorter than we could imagine, but he is a better athlete than you think, too. How tall did you think Pepe was? I did not know, but whenever I played against him in the Oculus, I was very intrigued upon seeing where his little Oculus head was mm -hmm. in comparison to the ping pong table. For instance, Foxy gets in there, and he says he's eight, foot, uh, eight feet tall on the goddamn thing. Uh, Just like you, in, AJ, yeah. that is quite an advantage. Pepe was like, no, I want this to be real. And he is, his head is hovering right above the thing whenever he's playing. <laughs> oh. He's short, but he is great. He's quick. He's quick out there. He's, he's a good player. Yeah, I need to play Gump. Gump, you need to send me like a friend request, I think. Yeah, you can't unless you're online. I've, I've tried, AJ. By the way, Gumpy's never on. I've I'm been on the last on. two nights. He's talking oh, about really? this thing. He, oh. Every time I've been on there, nobody's online, by the way. I'm sharpening my axe after knocking somebody out. Everybody's been taken to the boxing game, so I think they've been in the ring kind of getting their cardio in. I just want to let you know, when you guys come back to 11, okay? Okay. Know that I've been sharpening over here. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm in 11 every night, my friend. Every night. Yeah, I'd play, but I'm just taking like 45 minute overhand BP, basically. You know? That's yeah. Like, I don't want to get it. I don't want to get in there yet until I'm ready. I do need to do maybe do a little bit more BP practice. Yeah. I've been working on the backhand so much, so I don't want the forehand to get weak. You need both sides of the X. Exactly. Yeah. Mine's a little dull right now. You got to find the right spot to stand behind the table too. Yeah. Depth that helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Same with uh, throw the fight. That's what I learned with the uppercut. You back up a little, you'll oh, get up there. Oh, you landed the uppercut. This guy yeah. and his uppercut. I've been talking about it for months. Yeah. You didn't land an uppercut. Step you back. landed an uppercut. Yeah, I did. Really? Come yeah. on. You just got to step back like pretty far to the. I side. have been using more room in the boxing ring, mm -hmm. and I've been working on like uh, when Mike Tyson puts videos out, he'll do like one, and then he'll do like a, a yeah. and then do oh, that yeah. thing. So I've been watching Mike Tyson at his older age workout videos, and I've been trying to implement them in my fights against uh, Artificial Intelligence Stooge from wherever the hell Artificial Intelligence Stooge is from. I think I'm getting in there, AJ. I think I'm doing okay. You been fighting still? No, I have not. My kids had a, a snow day today, uh, another one. So I told them 
that they each need to get in at least three fights on the Oculus to get a little <laughs> energy, like, you know, to expend some energy. <laughs> it's a good idea. And I, by the yeah. way, I, I feel naturally as if, if I had to, not that I'm at the stage of my life where I would ever potentially have to get into a fight with anybody, but man, I feel like I'm throwing some heavy hands at this point with precision too. Like I, I now granted, I don't know how accurate it is going to be in real life if that was ever to happen again, and hopefully never, obviously. But boy, if there is a time where it comes, I feel like I have some precision on this overhand right that's coming. Now, the thing in real life is I would have to deal with also getting punched in my face, mm -hmm. which oh, is yeah. much different than the Oculus Arena, obviously, AJ. Well, if it's a real fight, don't you think when you wind up to throw that big overhand right, the dude's just going to tackle you if he has any kind of smarts? Real fight, though. I'm tackling person, though. Yeah. Okay, then get, get on top of him, ground and pound with that, uh, that overhand right. Yeah. And by the way, I'm built like low man wins, too. And unless some, you know, Patrick Ricard or A.J. Hawk comes, <laughs> I could probably tackle just about anybody at this stage. A spider, even, you know. Now there is a big son of a bitch in the throw of the fight. His name's Spider. He is a problem. You get in, you're looking up at this guy yeah. whenever you're fighting him. And he's he's the hardest guy to fight, I think. Oh, yeah. Got a weak jaw, though. If you can get an overhand right on him, he will go down. His endurance is bad, too. He's big. First round is tough. After that, you can get him. We're all going through fight camp over here. You should get in there, AJ. Brutal. I do want to get in there more, but I'm telling you, like, I get winded. I I throw hard, and I'm trying to move the whole time. It's, it is a good little cardio. How come? Workout. How come when I ask you if you're playing, you say no, and then you immediately <laughs> talk about how hard it is in there? Because when I have, played, are you I losing? On for you're, it's okay if you're losing oh, fights in there, AJ. Everybody uh -oh. loses. Yeah. Uh -oh. I lost a couple fights. Are you not that great at it? You'll get better. I don't think I've I've lost any fights, but I've knocked I've knocked the dudes down like nine times in a fight, and they still keep getting up. Well, that's <laughs> impossible. So you you are just spewing shit right now, Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nine times played, would like, be possible in a five-round fight, four-round fight, not in a three-round fight. No. Right. Now that I know boxing. Yeah, I'm just saying, some of these shots they're eating, like they That'd wouldn't be, be getting round. up as many yeah. times. They're eating your shot. That's a slap in your face, though. Mm. Like, they can't actually hit you in real life, but them not falling is like them slapping you right yeah. back in the face. You know what I mean? Maybe. Maybe I need to need to sharpen my axe, right, before I take you on. Just know, boys, I'm still in there. Ow, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm out. I'm out a week. <laughs> I'm out maybe a week. Uh, two more phone calls here. Cameron in Montana, what's going on? Oh, Montana. Hey, Pat, what's up? Just hanging out. How's Montana out there, bub? Oh, I'm visiting. We got a rodeo to plan down here. So. Ooh. A rodeo? Heck, yeah. You're, you're planning it? You're like the organizational cowboy? So um, I compete in it every year. It's the Great okay. Northwest of Moxie um, yes. down there in Hamilton. And um, it's an oh, it's so it's an old Moxie. It's a little different than a rodeo, but just as exciting for that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I'm in charge of sponsorships and that kind of stuff. For that. Uh, we would like to sponsor it, obviously. Mm -hmm. Also... <laughs> Uh, we would like to see our cowboy perform yeah. in said rodeo. What are the events? What are you performing? Um, so they're kind of hard to explain, but just to say, COVID cowboy would eat shit. Whoa! Yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we are potentially thinking about sponsoring your thing here. Let's Jeez. not attack us, yeah. okay? Tell me, do real good. We we need our COVID cowboy to participate in said rodeo. They ain't that right, things. You you've been watching the shows yeah. and you're you're ready to ready to hop on there and maybe. Do you guys do uh, calf tackling yeah. or whatever that's called? Do you do calf tackling? Do you do miniature? No, so like I said, it's a little different. So dig, look up barrel racing for that yeah. kind of stuff. It's going to be kind of like that kind of stuff. Okay, so I know barrel so racing. Now. Yeah. Four, yeah, well, it's different. It's So it's pattern, it's pattern speed racing. So we're going about 20 to 30 on a horse, and then you're turning around all these obstacles. That's it. Wait, do you have Bronk riding? Hold on, Cameron, I appreciate that. Uh, this, is, this is Kevin Costner's son when he's rounding up the cattles in the hill there in the uh, first episode, mm -hmm. by the way. Oh, yeah. he, these are the best horse riders. These are, yeah. these are the, uh, this is that, uh, the horse soldiers going into battle mm -hmm. alongside mm -hmm. the other. Uh, you guys are talented horse, sold, or horse riders is what you're saying. Thank you. I would appreciate that, and I would agree with that. 
Okay, yeah. so these are. But yes, we will you're, a right fucking, you're a you're a fraud and a phony. This guy. He would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a show cowboy. Not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're saying you're too much of a little wimp to hop on a horse, dude? Oh! 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 Uh, so yes. Put on your little Ariat hat and come be with the real cowboys and try to keep your balance on these obstacles. Hey, why don't you, oh. why don't you I try to go saddle a goddamn horse out there, COVID cowboy? Holy. Yeah, what do you do first? Do you the cinch or the breast collar first? Oh! You ain't got no belt buckle! You ain't got no belt buckle! You ain't got no belt buckle. Oh, oh, damn. oh my God. Devastating blow wow. to the cow COVID cowboy here. A lot of people with a spine or any self-respect would take that as an insult. I do not. <laughs> this, is a, <laughs> this is a spineless cowboy, which in of itself sounds to be a bit hypocritical, but that does not matter because this is show spineless cowboy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Figuratively spineless cowboy. If I were to get on a horse, I would literally be a spineless cowboy. <laughs> Hey, horses are dangerous. They are. They are not a dog. <laughs> no. are, those things will fuck you up, dude. Yeah. yeah. Took out Superman. A little, bit, a little bit bigger than most dogs I've seen, too. What's that, Bob? I said horse is a little bit bigger than most dogs I've been around. Okay. I mean, just act like you haven't seen a great day in once before. Come on. <laughs> I have. Come on. I, I have. I didn't think. Oh, man, look at that horse over there. Boy, you have yeah. not looked at a Great Dane and said that looks exactly like a smaller horse? I mean, okay. Oh, you yeah. have. See, he just yeah. got you. Yeah. See, that's what I thought. Horses are scary, man. I, I've ridden horses, but they scare me. I'm, I didn't grow up doing that. but it's. Uh, I guess they they're really nice. You. They said they're really nice, caring, cool, can learn things, obviously. They're doing all that. But, man, I've just heard horror stories of people getting on top of them. And guess what? Not being able to walk off. I mean, it is a dangerous operation up there whenever you're strapped to a beast yeah. like a uh, whatever horse the cowboys yeah. run. Devin. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, well, beautiful creatures until you run out of sugar cubes and they decide they want to kick you in the fucking mouth <laughs> and end you. Oh, yeah. I do believe that is the yeah. story. Sugar oh, cubes. No sugar cubes. Today, Big huh? lick. Yeah. What I'm going to knock your fucking teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> you know my ancestor horses used to be able to run free now you got me here all fucking fenced in barbed wire whatever no Sailed sugar up. cubes are you Sailed. kidding me i didn't have a fucking apple or like a beet or something <laughs> tell me how your teeth taste <laughs> <laughs> imagine there's a spiteful horse that legitimately walked in Saw no sugar cube or whatever. Got to the corner of the barn, like kind of hid. And then as soon as they walked in the door, just pow! <laughs> that would be fucking awesome. There's, there's dogs, by the way. We had a dog growing up. Her name was Duchess. She was a golden, uh, sorry, a German shepherd. Which you just got German shepherd, right? Correct. They're very intelligent dogs, obviously. That's why they do it. Something happened at the house where I think it was Jay didn't let her out or something. Jay. So she pissed Jay. on his shoes or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it was real late at night and I didn't want to wake everybody up. So oh, uh, she went to the back door. I didn't let her out. Uh, Ten minutes later, I walked out the front door and there was shit in my shoe. She shit in her. In her so like, <laughs> she was a spiteful dog. <laughs> it's okay, a good dog. If a horse had that type of reaction, that would be unbelievably. Yeah. Out of control and unfathomable. What? When was uh, John Cena was? A, no, he's a bull. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Ferdinand. Ferdinand. Great, Ferdinand. He was great a good movie. Bull. Great movie. Hey, there's a good movie. Ferdinand. Is that? It's an animated movie, right? Yeah, it's a good one. You, you've seen that one? Yeah, the sheriff's in it. Why do you say it like that? Well, not only sheriff. John Cena's in it. John Cena only makes bangers. Probably the Fair. only Fast and Furious I watch, by the way. Oh, God. Good one. His hair Which looks one is so he good. The the new one, saga. dude. It's going to be unreal F9. He, his arms look like they're the size of the cars he's driving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, he's yeah. posing in this photo, and his arms are covering up his chest. This is his entire thing. And he's sitting right behind, uh, what's his Vin face? Vin Diesel. Yeah. Vin Diesel, who Draw I know up. from Find Me Guilty, where he represented himself in a mafia a trial movie Vin Diesel very good he had hair in it find me guilty great movie you're welcome I'm giving out all these wow but John Cena only makes bangers in the fade that he currently has oh. is the haircut mm. that he needs to have forever 
I, I saw that. I, he did a, was it a Mountain Dew commercial he had for the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah, on hallucinogens. Mm-hmm. They were tripping balls driving through there. It was for Mountain Dew, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that, what it, is that what the commercial was? I just remember him at the end drinking. I think it was mushrooms in a new Mountain Dew. Is that what that commercial was saying? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Sign me up. Hey, they remade I, Fear and Loathing, right? That's what it felt like. Yeah. That's what it was, yeah. By the way, John Cena tripping balls is a hilarious thought. And that was a good commercial idea. Bro, you know right. what I mean? Because we're still talking about it here. None really others. No. Uh, the um, Drake was Shaggy. The Shaggy one was really good. What was it, me? Cheetos. Oh, uh, yeah. I did oh, enjoy yeah. Mila and Coocher. Okay. You didn't oh. like Drake? Drake from State Farm? I get it. Yeah. Not my State Farm guy. You look jacked. What's up with that Big hair? Arms. I was about to say Jake and Drake seem to be on quite a fitness yeah. regimen. Mm-hmm. What's up with what? Drake's hair. Oh, Connor, don't you understand? He's trolling guys like you, dude. Yeah. 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 How's that? that? Foxy, please speak. His next album, I believe it's going to be called Certified Lover Boy because everyone makes fun of him for once was a rapper turning into a singer and he's selling out. So now he's giving in with the hair. Yeah, because you're trolling, dude. You kept yeah. calling him soft. So me? No, not me. Drake's, I, I seen Drake in the lab doing throw the fight. Really? Yeah, he got like in box like Yeah, Ali. but we're talking about his music. His music, he used to go ham, and now he yeah. is a single man just having probably sex with every human on earth. Yeah. Well, he's got that jet. I mean, Jesus Christ, yeah. that thing's $250 million. What's that called, Air Drake or something yeah. like that? He's got, he's, got seven, he's got a Jim Mercy 737. Yep. Yeah. He does. Drake is living a great life, but early there, whenever he was coming up, same, same exact time I was coming into the NFL and making money for the first time, he was making much more money than me at the time and now, but <laughs> I mean, good for him. But it felt like, you know, he used to go. He used to be able to go. And then he just completely pivoted and said, I'm going to sell out arenas, and I'm going to be the only dude probably in the entire arena. Oh, and yeah. that's, that's a good business decision, but – I think your Drake take is maybe the worst one I've ever heard. Oh, Drake is still that. putting out bangers, uh, and he had to postpone Certified Lover Boy because he tore his ACL. He's rehabbing. You he can't ACL. listen. I'm not talking about him. I love him outside the booth. Okay, I I was at the the no big deal the ESPYS. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, I was at the ESPYS when he hosted. I thought yeah. it was amazing. Are I thought it was hilarious. Him? Okay. I'm a Drake fan. I like when he claimed that they won, he won the NBA title. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Okay, Drake's like, hey, we won, you know, for the city. He was so happy. He did a press conference a after the Raptors won the NBA champ. I mean, I, I am a Drake fan, but he's making music that isn't for me at this point. And that's okay business wise. But Mitt, what are you? <laughs> yeah. What is coming out of your what you think because he works out and he's hilarious that I have to like his music at this point? What does that even mean, Mitt? What's an ACL? got to do with him singing too he's not playing backer for the packers he's (laughs) rapping in a booth great question he's grinding connor singing he's still still grinding that's the 50 cent did it with a broken jaw wired shut that That was kanye but i do understand what you were talking about through the wire should i try Uh, it was after he got shot shot. in the mask yeah Yeah, but I, the the Not through the, the wire is the yeah. Kanye West yeah. album. Oh no, for sure. Yeah, but Fifty Cent was also wired shut. Well, I believe he was also damn near dead. I think he was at that. <laughs> Poor Mitt's not old enough to know how Drake yeah, used got... to be, so that's why he still respects hmm. his music now. Uh, you go through Tom Brady's IG story, trophies playing yeah. back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's some bangers back in the day with Drake. Many men. What? Anyone have a picture of his hair that you could pop up? Yeah, you got it. Oh, the heart. Oh, I didn't even notice it. You haven't seen it? Oh, yeah. It was in the commercial. Drake from State Farm. I mean, I saw the commercial. Yeah, I didn't notice. He has a heart shaved into his hair. Yeah. Were you boozed up? <laughs> Probably all boozed up. No, Connor. I, I watch the Super Bowl for the commercials, Connor. I don't watch for the football game. Oh, nice, dude. There you go. Graphic one for you. Commercials kind of stunk like uh, this year, oh, no. but... Game kind of oh, that's too. not the right one, Z. <laughs> what? Z, that's, <laughs> that's the first one I fucked up. That is, that's that's not, a good one, That though. is a good one, but that is not Drake from State Farm. <laughs> oh, that's not me. Although that might have been the beginning of the... Oh, yeah. The lover boy stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think we got to go a few years back. No, I'm talking about the haircut currently. Oh, yeah, yeah, That might have been the beginning of, you know, when he saw it, he said, let's go ahead. Also graphic one. I apologize. Oh, there we go. That, that was, was on me. It. It's that right. was you, on me. You, you didn't is. put Jay Will on. It. There it is. <laughs> okay. Jeez, Jake from State Farm looks absolutely jacked in that turtleneck. Hey, he's selling Nissans as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Picking them up and too. Temperatures. It is a tight turtleneck, though, huh? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Extra small. Good for Jake, man, huh? Good for Jake. That dude's 
Jake from State Farm with it, with kids for some reason is a big hit. Like my my kids and their friends, they talk about him. Like, oh, you think did Uncle Aaron get to talk to Jake from State Farm? Like, yeah, Jake from State Farm is a much bigger deal than these guys. How about Flo from Progressive back in the day? Oh man, she had a run there for a She's long. Still, time. still running. She's staying. They're still Jeez. going. Stays. Oh yeah, take her out behind the shed. We're done with Flo. Come yeah. on, dude. We've, we've She's been good. done with Flo. What? She stinks, dude. Bro, it's time Flo, for something dude? new. Why? What is it, 20 years now? We get it. Okay, all right. What happened, though? Nick, you wanted the streaker guy to, to go to the 50 and spread his cheeks. Like, you said it wasn't enough. That <laughs> yeah, you got to earn that money, dude. Just run around in a leotard. Get paid. Why is Orlovsky calling me in the middle of the show, by the way? Answer it. Probably has to take on Drake. Hey, what should we say on NFL Live about Josh Allen and the Bills next year? I'm going to tell him right now we're live. Is he on TV right now? Not till four, four I think. He yeah. called me an hour ago. <clears throat> Oh, what's it? I missed Why? it. He'll be live in 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Nice. What's he doing? Going through film? It's the time, yeah. It'll be four. I do believe he probably watches more film than most in Absolutely. the TV world. Might be asking about the punt. Yeah. I bet he does. Maybe he's going to do something on the the, pun, the punting from the Super Bowl. Why is everybody? Well, not uh, just because he's probably breaking down film. This is a pivotal play in this game. Let's Let's get into it. Hey, rest in peace, Marty Schottenheimer. Didn't want to do it, but yeah. hopefully we don't have to do it ever again. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Legend. Absolute legend. I agree. Let's go to Wayne in Minnesota. What's going on, Wayne? Big Wayne. Hey, Pat. How's it going? Not too shabby. We're 40 minutes into extra time here, and everybody's bladder has to be cooking at this point. Let's do another 40. She missed it. Okay, I got a couple things real quick. The okay. first one, do you think Belichick is going to be coaching with a chip on his shoulder now that Tom won the Super Bowl? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, we're talking about a spiteful coach Bill Belichick with a chip on his shoulder to prove the haters wrong. Uh, I got a, a segment, a weekly segment idea for you. You, you get a, some AstroTurf in your new place. Mm -hmm. And you bring in a former player every week and have Connor do Oklahoma's. I like that idea, actually. Yeah, not bad. Too. As long as the number two is MCDC. <laughs> you willing to lose your leg? Yeah, you'll be done. You just, us getting like the NFL legends community, you know? Oh, uh, Herschel Walker. Uh -huh. And just being like, hey, we want to have legends Thursday. Oh, you want them to do like an interview or something? No, no, no. We want to glory days this thing. Kind of yeah. have them come by the office, put on the pads. We'll have a locker room and everything. And then they're going to do one-on-ones with a guy named Connor. We'll, we'll have an all-time <laughs> quarterback. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Could you imagine all those old heads just one last time getting a chance to strap up and if they didn't get CTE yet, go for it one last time? As long as Stink's blocking for me, I'll be fine. <laughs> Mark Schleyer took that a little personally, and I didn't even think about that from his particular standpoint. Yeah, he did. He obviously feels pretty – he has strong opinions on – Everything going on. I guess there's so much information out there on both sides. Like, what do you, who knows what's happening? All right. It's time to get out of here. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. Was, uh, was Lombardi surprised by the Super Bowl at all? Michael Lombardi? Yeah, on the show yesterday. I was curious to hear his take. I didn't, I didn't get to listen. He yet. bet on the Chiefs. Yeah, 30 20. But he was hoping for Tom. So that was kind of his big takeaway. And the, the protection of Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. and everything like that. So he, I think he was surprised, obviously, because he bet the opposite way. But, you know, he had a, he gave a lot of credit to Todd Bowles. He said Todd Bowles MVP. That's who should have been the MVP is Todd Bowles. That was a massive, great game plan. I'd say, I'd say it was a good game plan that they executed perfectly. Yeah. What they needed to do to win. We had Ronald Jones on today. Did you hear that interview? Well, Joe? I didn't get to see it. How was he? It was all right. It was one of those, uh, it was a good convo. The, the, when they're coming on to plug something, you know, it's always an interesting, you never know how it's going to go. You know, it's like obviously here for a reason. Yeah, but you can still, you can usually still have fun with them and still just mention it either in the beginning and hey, the end, maybe. Hey, that Derrick Henry one was bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was on for what, six hours all morning. What's yeah. that? I need to go back and watch it. What, what happened? Oh, man, it was just – it was tough. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big Derrick Henry fan after it because he, like, laughed. But you could tell – we literally saw him. We watched him all morning. He was on, yeah. like, six shows all morning. And then he got our show at the end. And he's like, 
All right, Old Spice. <laughs> Let's go ahead. He's, you know, he's about done with it. So you kind of got to get him out of that, but then you get access to some people because they're doing it. So, you know, it's a little give and take of the business and this whole thing. Nobody will ever be as bad as Jerry Rice, though. No. Oh, yeah. Oof. Is that out there somewhere? I need to watch oh, that. Yeah. You guys continue to bring it up. It was bad. What was he selling? Jerry Rice and noodles or something. Jalapeno like cheddar Rice Aroni. <laughs> the best. Well, you tailgate. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it was nice of Jerry to at least, you know, relinquish the goat status for Brady to have on his own. That was nice of him. Hey, Jerry, that was for wide receivers, dude. Okay, Tom doesn't play that position. Appreciate you though. I'm sure Tom <laughs> Brady's thankful. <laughs> Very nice. Jerry was really good at football, man. He was very good at football. He used to catch bricks. Yeah. I think he did ballet too, right? I don't know. Did he? That was Lynn Swan. He's mm -hmm. good at tailgating too. Mm -hmm. Lynn Swan? Jerry. Jerry, I don't know how he played so good whenever he was that good at tailgating as well. MVP at tailgating, some yeah. would say. Yeah, not the GOAT yet, but he will get there. But while he was playing football, he was the MVP of tailgating as well. Yeah. It's tough to do. You like tailgating? <laughs> so he said to me as soon as I intro him. As soon as I intro him. Jerry, blah, 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 blah. Hey, Pat, you like tailgating? All right, here uh, we go. I believe you, you asked about wide receivers too, and he was like, oh, enough about that. Yeah, Let's I talk about know. tailgating. I don't know, man, but Rice Aroni's good. <laughs> it was. It was something. What if you would have said no? What if he would have asked you that and you'd be like, no, not at all? I do believe I said, all oh, right. I think it's, I, I don't remember exactly how it went, but I think I just, all right, let's get right to it here. Let's go ahead and sell some. Because rice around is delicious, by the way. Flavored rice, you ever have it? <laughs> Not bad. We did talk about Edelman taking his daughter to uh, prom. We talked about that, though. We did. I mean, it gave us a good conversation. I'm just talking about ones that are notably like, okay, this is a forced conversation here. Yeah. Ronald Jones did not feel like that. Mm -mm. No. He loves Michelob. Seven of them. Gonna house them. Awesome. <laughs> Look out. Does not bong beers. Mm -mm. We learned that today. Ronald Jones does not bong beers. Do you think, though, also the Michelob people could have anticipated you may ask him that? Like, hey, if they ask you if you bong, like, multiple beers at a time, just make sure you say no. <laughs> <laughs> he looked up at one point when I asked the question. I thought there was potentially a person right on the other <laughs> side, but they would be, like, 20 seconds delayed, I think, from what was actually happening because he had ear things in. So they're hearing something that happened maybe 30 seconds ago, and they might have had a couple – they were probably on the Zoom call, though. Oh, yeah. And they're just, and they have headphones on. Well, he's very responsible. He said he's only going to drink seven. Shit, you could drink 140 Michelob in oh, prison. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be just yeah. fine, really. Yeah. Drinking water. Bro, some journalist is going to say that we are promoting drinking 140 <laughs> Michelob Ultras. <laughs> We do not, by the way. No, no. no. Oh. Someone buys them for me. I'll try it this weekend. <laughs> Drink that many. Make sure you have a couple liquid deaths to go along with it. Yeah, There's there we go. There. Smart. Ty, is Ty an Ooh. IPA guy? No. I mean, if it's available. I'm not going to turn it down. IPAs? But yeah. Serial killers like them. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> Tekaziski loved IPAs. Yeah. Bill is a big craft beer guy. <laughs> mint, mint, too, actually. Yeah, I mean, is. granted, he'd inject booze into his veins if he could, but he has one every Friday. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I'm just, I wonder why, what made Mitt grab the mic to try to defend your Drake take? <laughs> I don't know. I was pretty pumped to hear it. I, I think because people were coming after me for my weekend take, you know, and it was mostly his generation. I feel like he potentially felt like he let down a group of people with the weekend. So he was thinking to himself, if there's any other opportunities for that type of situation, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come in. And I think that's how this whole thing happened. If I had to guess, I'm not hundred percent sure he can mm -hmm. answer more clearly to that than us. Um, I do want to have the, I want to see the receipts for that. Uh, the weekend glued to a pipe. Show. the weekend stinks. No way. There was $7 million spent. <laughs> yeah. The fireworks maybe though. No. Mm -hmm. Mitt, what were you saying? He said the weekend stinks. Oh, so does the Drake fan base hate the weekend's fan base? Oh, uh, I'm not sure about that. I have just been a giant Drake fan since uh, since Take Care, Tony, and uh, I just think that Drake is misconstrued by you, thinking that he doesn't that he's uh, soft now, and I think it's a big uh, big play. Hmm. Thank you, Mitt. Well, Remember when he was that was a callback Jesus. to Dig saying that yeah. he did not understand old Drake. Mitt was like, excuse me, 
I've been around. Yeah. Okay. My brain wasn't completely formed when that was happening. I was True. a child at the time. He was 10. But I've been around is what he said to you, Diggs. I like that he kept receipts there. Jesus. Also, it sounds like. Together? Huh? His brain still isn't formed. You hear that sentence come together? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Holy shit. Also it was like sounds watching like... you try to catch the words as they were floating through the air. <laughs> well, that's Mitt's life. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, he's done that at a very high level for a long time now at this point. Well, what would Mitt be doing if he didn't work here, AJ? Head coach of the Lions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I still hope he does that. I want to be the OC someday. <laughs> All right. That's the Probably show. I bet he'd be like the, the CEO of some big international bank. <laughs> yeah. Potentially be CEO of DraftKings. Welcome to Good Burger. Breaking Enigma. 100,000 retweets for a $100 site <laughs> That was awesome. That was wild. We talked about that today. Didn't yeah. know if we are going to cover it or not, <laughs> but had to just because it happened on the internet. It's yeah. something that happened mm -hmm. on the internet. We got to talk about it, AJ. Mm -hmm. I know. You got you to sift out. what's. I'm, I want to see, uh, I'm curious, in the coming days, if that whole streaker situation, if any of that's going to turn out true. You bet. Who cares? I mean, there's, there's a strong. <laughs> who said who cares? That was Ty, because there's a strong feeling that there's no way they could have found. I mean, if he finds a bookie that's taking a $50,000 prop bet on just that, I mean, that is at plus 750, by the way, because yeah. you're doing odds. You're not doing the same odds as regular books whenever you're taking that big of a bet. Things will be changing in this whole thing. Don't you think if a bookie took that bet and then realized that guy was the one that did it, he'd be like, okay, we're just gonna, let's kill this guy. Oh, you just tried to rob him. Yeah. 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 Like, okay, sounds good. Let's go find this guy and shoot him in the back of the head. Yeah. But guy at bar, fresh out of jail, everybody knows you're the streaker. Great story to tell. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I guess. By the way, it's National Pizza Day. Oh, that's what that, that slice is. Okay. I thought it was something else. What did you think it was? Huh? What's that? Hey, Jay. I didn't know it was National Pizza Day. You did know. Hashtag NPD. Yeah, right? yeah. NPD. Yeah, we told you. Oh. Uh -uh. Really? It's not the hashtag. Well, what's the hashtag then? I don't know. I was asking you, Kyle. Oh, you, you seem to know everything about things. pizza all of a sudden. Hmm. Yeah. Are you pretending to look at me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. There's actually a bird right here. I'm staring right in the eye. It's like I'm talking <laughs> to a hawk. It's a fucking eagle. It's good. Hey, you were good on, uh, was it Monday on Get Up? Thank you. I saw it. Good job. They have us on five wides. It's hard not to. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard not to do the. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> I have to piss so bad. <laughs> Boxy's getting a little antsy back there. The yeah. boys are pretty, pretty calm out here. Yeah. Uh, I've is... learned that last break is the most important time to pee, so I always do. I got catheter, and I still have them. to go. You don't. Oh yeah. You don't. Oh yeah. You don't have it. You don't have a tube in your penis right now for a catheter. Oh, oh yeah. Smacks his knee. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> the inside of his knee. You should have. <laughs> Roy Hibbert put out a tweet one time. Oh, yeah. About yeah. never putting Icy Hot on his knees because it got to oh, his. Yeah. his oh. I was like, Roy. Him and Trey Sauce. <laughs> I think that is one on one problem, but. That popped know. back up in my timeline somehow, like, a, and it looked like really old Twitter, too, or whoever screenshotted it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here, huh? <laughs> what did we give away though? today? We gave away Bunch of gaming chairs. Chairs, chairs, yeah. five gaming chairs. Right? We're uh, trending number three right now. Hashtag PMS Gaming Show. We'll give away uh, five to ten gaming chairs today. Thank God. If you're tweeting. You'll be doing us a favor. We might ask you to pay for shipping, though, because they're like 200 pounds each. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go freight. They almost oh, kill your delivery. Number guy. two now. Come number on. two? Yep. Oh. If that gets to number one here in the next two minutes, we'll give away 10 of them. We're not going to. What's number one? Uh, there's something else going on. I don't know. What's going on? I think on? it's an impeachment it? trial. Oh, there's yeah. an impeachment trial going <laughs> I guess so. Oh, yeah. They're still trying to do that. <laughs> Forgot about that. You know, it's very interesting. Politics has completely left my timeline. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm completely out of it. But if gaming chairs taking some out, that'd be pretty nice. See you in a few years. Yeah, see you. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, we'll see you on the next time around. <laughs> well, Joe Donnelly's running. But, too. at some time in the next few years, make sure you uh, 
register to vote. <laughs> Shout out, Duck. Shout out you. Oh, yeah. That gets number one, which it seems is going to be difficult. <laughs> we'll give away 10 chairs. If not, we'll give away. You know what? If this, if this gets 3 million retweets, Ooh, yeah. okay, we will give we away go. two more gaming chairs. Wow. Yeah. 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 We will. All right. Sure. All right. Example, if we get to a million and a half, we'll give away one. One. Okay. E.G. Okay. Fair. That's before next season's Super Bowl kicks off. No, no, no. Uh, that's that's in the next hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy. Didn't even throw a hashtag BTS on it. You know? Behind the scenes? No, the fucking boy band BTS owns oh. all the 100,000 retweets. Oh, yeah. Every yeah, yeah. single one. They are the retweeting kings. That, oh, yeah, they are. Because they make such good music. Yep. Of course. Yeah. Naturally. They hold a record. It's a shame Wilson. they're breaking up, I think, aren't they? Or are they still going? I thought they did I think they already. broke up. Yeah, that, yeah, those are final. I mean, it's an actual yeah, but I hope they get back together. They, they will. We all hope BTS gets back, back together. We, all, we hope they stay together forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an Ain't idea. right, AJ? That's right. How old are those guys? Oh, you know, I don't really young. know about any of that. You never know. The amount of skill and talent amongst uh -huh. them all is just so grand that uh -huh. you can't really put an age or a number on anything. Timeless. Yeah, youngest is 23. Oldest is 28. There's like seven of them. That's crazy. So they got another 30 years doing what they're doing, which is good news for all of us. Yep. At least. Yeah. All right. That's the show. We'll see you tomorrow. Shout out BTS, by the way. And shout out, shout out Mitt for his lock on the parlay. Yeah, Mitt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mitt. Thank you, Mitt. Thank you, Mitt. And Hammer Don, which will be out tomorrow, I believe, 3.30. Mm -hmm. Have an incredible day. We'll be back tomorrow with another below average show. Big thanks to you, AJ. Big thanks to you guys. All right. See you.